Um, do you think that it's fair, the criticism of the prosecution, that they overcomplicated this case beyond just the simple mistakes, like having him try on a, a glove that, that apparently didn't fit or he pretended it didn't fit? Yeah, I mean, so many mistakes were made by the prosecution. Um, and I fault uh, Chris Darden and Marsha Clark, the two uh, principal prosecutors. I, They thought that this case could be easily proven, but they failed in many ways in their proof. I think they only have themselves to blame, but there were other factors here. Uh, Judge Lancito completely lost control of the case. This is a case that should have taken no more than six weeks to try. And it actually took nine months. You said 11, that includes some of the pretrial hearings, but in earnest, from opening statements to verdict, it took nine months. That was absurd. And again, Lance Ito lost control. He allowed the defense to introduce utterly irrelevant, wild theories. And you have to remember that I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I know it quite well. At the time that... Uh, of the criminal trial in 1995, Los Angeles was this cauldron of racial unrest, distrust of police officers. And when the elected DA, Gil Garcetti, sent the case away from where the crime occurred in Santa Monica to downtown Los Angeles, I shook my head and said, that is a huge mistake. I tried cases in downtown Los Angeles. Jurors there hate cops. And this was a cop case. They distrusted science and DNA, which was new at the time. And I think if this criminal case had been tried in Santa Monica, the verdict would have been completely different. Uh, obviously, the racial divide, uh, still to this day, not quite as deeply if you look at polls, but still it's there. Um, there were celebrations among some African-Americans when he, when he got off. And there were just, it was just jaw-dropping disbelief among probably most white Americans. Um, just the the shock on one hand and the celebration on the other was just so stark. Yeah, and the polling data showed that. Uh, the vast majority of African Americans um, polled after uh, the verdict agreed with it. Uh, the vast majority of white people did not. And, and you know, that has changed over the years. Uh, a majority of African-Americans uh, polled not long ago uh, now agree that O.J. Simpson got away with two murders. You know, the wisdom of time has has changed their opinions and their attitudes. But, you know, th this was a case in which I think in the end justice was not done. I've covered hundreds of trials in my 40-year career as a journalist. And I've never seen such overwhelming evidence of guilt. And yet the jury would not accept it. It was a classic case of jury nullification. I mean, there, the blood of O.J. Simpson was, was dripping away from the bodies to the back of the home where his Ford Bronco was parked. The blood of the victims were on the outside of his Ford Bronco and smeared and splattered on the inside of his vehicle. Their blood was found on his socks in his bedroom at his home. Their blood was found on a glove at the back uh, of his property, and the matching glove had been dropped at the scene of the crime. I mean, this is incontrovertible, irrefutable evidence and yet, you know, Barry Sheck, uh, and he's a fine lawyer, I thought he was using smoke and mirrors to try to deceive the jury. And, you know, Greg, for all we were told, all that blood was planted by people that were just out to get a successful black man. Yeah, I mean, that was the other crazy part of it. It was utterly ludicrous that uh, the defense argued that the glove at the back of Simpson's property was planted by police, that the blood inside the vehicle, uh, the Ford Bronco, was planted by police, that the blood on the gate at Simpson's home was planted by police, that the blood on the socks was planted 
by police. Completely absurd. No right-minded person would ever believe it. And yet Johnny Cochran was so persuasive. And one of the pivotal moments in the trial came when Chris Darden, goaded by the famed defense attorney F. Lee Bailey, was a part of the dream team. Yeah, Bailey taunted Darden into having Simpson try on the glove. And I mean, it was one of the dumbest decisions I've ever seen a lawyer make. And sure enough, you know, the the gloves are handed to O.J. Simpson and he, you know, he struggles to try to put them on and sort of pretends that they don't fit. And in some ways they didn't fit. Why? Because they'd been soaked in blood and then they'd been frozen and unfrozen. So they'd shrunk. Right. So, you know, that, of course, led to the famous line in closing arguments by Johnny Cocker. And it was a brilliant line from a defense standpoint. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And the jurors grabbed onto that. And that was their excuse. There are plenty of people now who are young enough to not remember just that year of uh, that year of OJ. And then before that just how famous he was. He was one of the most recognized people in the world and just and admired and beloved. He was such a famous guy. And his story, his life story, was really quite remarkable. Before the trial began, I uh, traveled to San Francisco, where I'd lived for a decade, and I went to his neighborhood. He grew up with his best friend, Al Cowlings, in the projects, uh, an, an area of San Francisco that, you know, very run down, very crime ridden. It was a tough life and to survive. I mean, you had to fight your way through it. And yet he had this wonderful personality that was so engaging and it, it translated into television. You know, he was he joined Monday Night Football after his career. And as you and I talked about, he was a pitch man for Hertz and other products because he was so immensely popular and he transcended uh, issues of race. He famously said, um, I'm not black, I'm OJ. And, and, you know, there was an element of truth to that. You know, everybody liked him. Everybody loved him. And yet he had these demons. OJ Simpson, dead at the age of 76, give or take. Um, he lived about 41 years longer than his ex-wife, about 51 years longer than, uh, than Ron Goldman. Thanks, Greg. My pleasure. Wake up with Cable and Company. Mornings, 6 till 10. Talk Radio, 1210. Buying a home warranty is one of the best investments you can make for your home. Are you worried about your air conditioning or your refrigerator breaking down? How about your heat, your plumbing, or any other major appliance? Fortunately, many people count on Select Home Warranty to provide them with a peace of mind, taking the hassle and cost out of home system and appliance repairs. Plans start at a dollar per day. Call now at 800-231-5953 or shwvalue.com and save $200. In the event your appliance breaks down, don't worry. Select Home Warranty offers same-day service for repairs or replacement. Select Home Warranty is peace of mind you can trust. Repairs and replacements done by highly qualified service technicians. So I want you to call now. Don't wait for one of your major appliances to break down, for your systems to break down. Then it's panic time. 1-800-231-5953. Or do this. Get a free quote online at shwvalue.com and save $200 today. So that's 1-800-231-5953. Call now. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. 
Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. One in five rely on the Catholic Charities Appeal for help. The fact is, nearly one million times per year, our programs provide assistance to people in need. We can't do this vital work without you. Your gift matters. Go to catholiccharitiesappeal.org to donate today. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Calling on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. look at what's happening from the Fox News Rundown. Good morning. It's Friday, April 12th. This is the Fox News Rundown. Congress is set to vote on a bill to reauthorize a major national security program. The story from Fox's Ryan Schmelz. Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act is set for another vote in the House after over a dozen Republicans broke from their party to kill the bill that would reauthorize and reform FISA earlier this week. The program allows for the surveillance of foreign persons and the intelligence community says it's a vital tool for preventing terror threats, but some lawmakers believe it's been used to target Americans. Several of the Republicans who tanked the bill are satisfied with changes that reauthorizes FISA for two years instead of five, with the expectation certain amendments like a warrant requirement will be voted on at some point. On Capitol Hill, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. The Republican House Speaker is set to meet with former President Trump today at Mar-a-Lago. Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Trump are expected to announce a plan to introduce an election integrity bill. The legislation would bar non-citizens from voting, even though non-citizens are already not allowed to vote in federal elections. Speaker Johnson's appearance here comes after former President Trump urged Republicans to vote against a bill Johnson wanted to get through to extend a warrantless surveillance program on suspected terrorists. The former president 
president wants a deeper overhaul of that program that he says was used to spy on his campaign. This also comes as Johnson fends off a threat by Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene to call for a vote to push the speaker out over his support for additional Ukraine funding. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. Are you putting off filing your taxes? Well, you're not alone. It's only a few days until tax day, and for some, they wait until the last minute to file. Russell Fazio of Ohio State University says people are faced with a process called valence waiting bias. It describes the tendency of people to tap more into either a positive or negative mindset when faced with new or tedious responsibilities. Researchers found those who leaned more into their negative thoughts when deciding to file their taxes early wound up procrastinating, even if there was a benefit of receiving a tax refund. But having a negative waiting bias is not always a bad thing. Researchers say these types of people are usually more realistic about how they will perform. I'm Anna Eliopoulos, Fox News. I'm Sue Gusman on the Fox News Rundown. This is the Fox News Rundown. Free speech lives here. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Company weekday mornings, 6 till 10. You can't play Naked Twister anymore when you grow up? Naked Twister? Yeah. Oh, nice. Play it right, both people win. Nice work out of Robin. Why don't we have to put that one on the board? <laughs> if our buddy Jim the Floater is listening, get that on the board stat today. I'm going to ask my apartment complex. They do all kinds of community things down in the lobby. Wine testing and Cinco de Mayo things. I'm like, can we do a, an apartment Naked Twister night? Oh, that might, yeah. Then there you go. Man. Bring your own booze. You don't we... keep score, though, on Naked Twister, do you? I don't know. Is it inclusive? <laughs> Start your day with Kale and Company, weekday mornings 6 till 10, on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Hey Philly, don't miss the Best Buddies Friendship Walk on Sunday, April 28th at the King of Prussia Mall. The Best Buddies Friendship Walk supports people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And with your support, you'll be making the world more welcoming to people with IDD. Join 50,000 participants across the globe to support the Best Buddies programs in schools, workplaces, and communities. Register or donate today at bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org forward slash Philadelphia. At Independence Blue Cross, we take care of the people who take care of you. Everyday heroes like firefighters, police officers, teachers, farmers, and healthcare workers. Doctors and hospitals across the region have IBX, and they know what it means to have reliable access to care. So whether you're saving lives or just trying to live a healthier life, count on IBX, the region's number one health insurer for 85 years. Learn more at IBX.com. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org local. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Look through your children's eyes and you'll see the true magic of a forest. It's a storybook world for them. You look and see a tree. They see the wrinkled face of a wizard with arms outstretched to the sky. They see treasure in pebbles. They see a windy path that could lead to adventure. When they discover the forest, their imagination is inspired by the smell of pine 
the crunch of leaves beneath their feet, the sound of birds calling out for attention. And they see you, their fearless guide through this fascinating forest world. You are the hero in this book. This is a memory being made. This is what they will laugh about years from now. These are the roots, grounding and nourishing them. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Then look through your children's eyes and discover the magic all around you. That's discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Click this link now to review my bank transfer. I didn't make a bank transfer. Ugh, another phishing message. Are you frustrated by these two? So much of our lives are online today. To make sure my information is protected, I checked out CISA's Secure Our World resources. They've got four simple ways we can stay safe online. First, learn to recognize and report phishing. Next, create a strong, unique password for each online account and use a password manager if you can. Then turn on multi-factor authentication for extra security and you'll receive a code when logging in. And finally, turn on automatic software updates for convenience and safety. Click here to track my delivery. Another phishing message. But now I know how to protect myself from scammers and you can learn too. Go to CISA at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world for more quick, easy tips to be safer online. Free speech lives here with Rich Zioli, afternoons 3 to 7, talk radio 1210, WPHT. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the Fox Business Report. A big day for the banks today. J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo all report first quarter earnings. On Wall Street Thursday, a record close for the Nasdaq, which picked up 272 points for its sixth record close of the year, finishing at just over 16,442. The S&P 500 gained 38, the Dow down a little more than two. That after the Labor Department released its producer price index for the month of March, showing wholesale inflation up 0.2%, less than expected, prices up 2.2% year to year. Fewer Americans applied for unemployment last week. First time filings for the week ending April 6th fell by 11,000. And new data published by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia shows a growing number of people struggling to make their monthly credit card payments. All stages of delinquency rose during the fourth quarter of 2023. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Kevin Uretsky, invested in you. This is the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Shame on you! Shame on you! Democrats in Arizona's legislature say Republicans should be ashamed after blocking a vote to repeal a near-total abortion ban and then adjourn. State Supreme Court Tuesday upheld that ban, passed in 1864 before Arizona was a state. We do not want to repeal the pre row law without first having a conversation about it. Republican Teresa Martinez, there's an agreement to not enforce the ban for 45 days. Former President Trump says he would not sign a federal abortion ban and about the Arizona ruling. It's all about states' rights, that would be straight path. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason, and that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. Vice President Kamala Harris is turning a planned trip to Arizona into an official campaign event to talk about abortion rights. President Biden's campaign is already running ads about it in the state, and the Democratic National Committee is putting up billboards. You heard from the president as well saying, you know, Arizona wants to take us back to the, you know, 20th century, takes us back to a different time, takes us, you know, 19th century. I mean, all over the place. They were saying before Arizona was even a state. Fox News Sunday and Living the Bream podcast host Shannon Bream. You know, they do have a good control of the conversation about this, and it's worked really well for them at the ballot box. And that's a real problem that Republicans face going into the fall. Yeah, because they've been, they spent, many of them spent years saying, to our to our pro-life supporters, we're going to take abortion away. And now that um, or, or at least rights have been severely restricted in a lot of places, they're like, eh, OK, maybe we went a little too far. I mean, like Carrie Lake running for governor two years mm-hmm. ago in Arizona expressed support for that ban. And now she says, no, nah, don't worry, we'll, we'll get it changed. We're going to protect abortion access. 
Well, an interesting thing, too, is in Arizona, you do have Democrats and Republicans stepping up and saying, we're going to work together to try to get something through the legislature because we agree this isn't a great result, what we got from the Arizona Supreme Court. So Republicans are having to step up and say, yeah, some of this stuff is too extreme for us. That's what President Trump has said. We always fought to overturn Roe v. Wade. I gave you that. But that means that this is now a state battle and you're going to have to go state by state and let each figure it out. But I have heard from, you know, pastors pro-life leaders, a number of these organizations just flooding my text and email, you know, saying, we are so disappointed in this guy. We embraced him. We didn't know where he was going to be on abortion. We opposed him at first. Then he became what they termed, quote, the most pro-life president in history. They feel very betrayed and abandoned by him. Now, are those folks going to go in mass and vote for Biden? No, but they might stay home because they're, they're angry right now. They've got a few months to work through those feelings and figure it out. But Trump has said, you know, I gave you what you wanted to go back and fight at the state level. What a lot of those folks are now saying is, listen, there, you look to Europe where, you know, the, the 12 or 15 week ban in most countries is the deal. And they argue that the, you know, United States should think about doing something similar. So for the president to say, I won't sign it if it gets to my desk, meaning the former president, um, those groups are very disappointed. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those issues where you can't please all the people all the time. Never. Um, and his attorney, speaking of Donald Trump, they keep offering up reasons to delay his first criminal trial. Um, they keep getting rejected. So unlike a, a lot of the other cases that keep getting kicked down the road, it looks like this one is going to kick off on Monday. Yeah, absent some last minute legal maneuvering and surprise, jury selection starts on Monday. And remember, of course, this was the first indictment of President Trump a little over a year ago when Alvin Bragg said, yeah, we're going to move forward with this case. And now we're getting into these cases that aren't only civil in nature. You know, we're talking about criminal cases that have actual jail time and stiffer penalties and all kinds of different things at the state and federal level. So this is crunch time. For the, for the Trump legal team and for the former president. Um, listen, it keeps him in the news. He doesn't have a problem staying in the news and he will continue to come out each day despite the gag order um, to say whatever he possibly can up to that limit. And some would argue he's already crossed over it. Um, but he will continue to say, this is proof they're trying to silence me so you can't vote for me. That's why you gotta vote for me. And it's been very successful so far. When he was first indicted in this case, um, people call it a hush money trial just for sort of shorthand, but it's really more about, it's not about the hush money. That's not illegal. It's about business mm -hmm. records and sort of tangentially campaign about finance, right? Yeah. It, it, it's sort of tangentially about campaign finance that he was, um, that what he was doing was essentially illegally, uh, donating to his own campaign. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's complicated, but basically he was trying to keep this from the American people for political reasons. Um, now, it, it's funny that this is, this was the case that at the time people are like, oh, this is the one the, the seal is now broken. Now you can indict him. And this is the one that probably is really the least um, dangerous to him criminally um, is the one that we're going to get first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing that's really tricky for him is that no matter what you think about the case, and, and you know people across the political spectrum, including people who do not like President Trump, think this is a very weak stretch of a case. But juries, you can't predict. Um, and we know that so far juries for former President Trump in New York have not been good uh, for him. Uh, judges have not been good for him there. So it'll be interesting to see how this comes together, whether, um, you know, the novel sort of way that they're trying to shoehorn this law and use it against him, if it will have the intended effect. But I do think of most of the cases it you know, just on the face of it legally, it is one of the weakest, um, but it's got real teeth to it and, and a jury can do unpredictable things. How do you possibly voir dire a jury pool <laughs> with with a with a with a defendant like this? I mean, right. I know there are, there are lots of high profile cases over history where you've had to try to weed people out and get a and get an impartial jury. But man, this is I who doesn't have an opinion about him. Right. I mean, unless you've suddenly awoken from a coma for 30 years, um, you know everything about President Trump. I mean, he's been the president. Um, whether you can be fair or not, this for Dyer is going to be very tricky for the two sides to to pick the jurors to sit on this case. And, and you already see the media talking about who the defense is going to want, who the pro prosecution is going to want. It's more about who you don't want. 
um, who you want to keep from getting seated on this jury. And there are always questions, you know, if you've served in jury duty um, about have you been in law enforcement? Have you somebody in your family in law enforcement? And of course, these folks think President Trump um, has a connection with a lot of people in the law enforcement community. They're going to ask about levels of education. Um, you know, they're they're always going to be looking to see everything they can find out politically about these jurors. If they've, um, you know, taking really strong political stances or donated or worked on behalf of campaigns, um, social media is out there. So man, this is going to be a very tricky exercise in finding people who obviously everybody knows who President Trump is, but do you have a neutral take on him? Most people do not. Is there anything to the idea that the judge should be off the case because of his daughter's consulting work with Democrats? I mean, I guess any bias on the judge's part would really have to be actually demonstrated in court for it to be mm -hmm. grounds for appeal. Um, it may, it may be the same with jurors. If, if somebody just says something positive or negative about, about Donald Trump on Twitter or Facebook, six years ago mm -hmm. can that be grounds to say look they're not um they're not unbiased yeah I, I mean i think that his legal team is going to comb through every possible detail they can find on that but the fact is um you know family members have different opinions and family members uh are involved in different things think about all of the people who have come after justice thomas they want him recused off of all kinds of cases because of the work that jenny thomas has done so people do this from you know the left and the right they want to go in there and say that people can't be unbiased when it comes to their clients so they're going to dig and dig and dig and try to find everything that they can on these folks. What I've always been surprised about the last couple of years, and not it, it, it directly in connection with President Trump, but in other cases that um, people will be seated on a jury, a decision will come out. Afterwards, people start digging around and find things that seem like they would be easily discoverable on people's social media and other places um, that they didn't find before they sat, seated them on the jury trial. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think there's going to be a very deep vetting as quickly as they can on everybody who shows up yeah. for a potential jury duty. Another thing hanging out there is um, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas's impeachment trial in the Senate. Um, once it's sent over to the Senate, they have to take it up. Um, are they just trying to minimize disruption with the timing of it? Well, you know, you've got uh, the majority leader over there, Democrat Chuck Schumer, saying um, essentially this thing is going nowhere. Um, you've got Republicans saying, OK, if there's nothing to it, then let us hear the evidence and see it. Uh, uh, you know, don't dismiss it outright procedurally so we never get to it. Obviously, it's good for them politically to talk about it, too. It's also really difficult for Democrats who think are in tough Senate races, um, like Tester and others, to have to go out there and defend uh, Alejandro Mayorkas when you've got the border in the shape that it's in. So I'm sure that Senate Democrats would like it to just go away very quickly. It looks like procedurally that's what Schumer expects to do, and it probably should land there, we think, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, finally, let me, th let me throw one more at you. Uh, some Democrats in Congress this, this week have felt the need to come out and um, and push back against the idea that Sonia Sotomayor should resign from the Supreme Court as a justice and let President Biden appoint somebody younger in mm -hmm. case Trump wins and we get another Ruth Bader Ginsburg thing where right. w where she dies and somebody from the other party gets to appoint a successor. Now, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was 87 years old and Sonia Sotomayor is 69. She's got diabetes, but there's no public mm -hmm. indication that she's not doing anything but 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 fine or thinking about leaving mm -hmm. where, where do the rumblings come from well you know this always starts i think in academia and the far left and people who uh, you know write op-eds and they're very worried about it you got to remember too um although i've seen her recently and she seems to be as you know good a shape she's always been she's definitely physically and mentally uh on the bench fully engaged it seems like her usual self to me um but she has been out there talking about i'm tired it's frustrating there are cases that you know in my stomach and my heart it's so hard to sit through these and lose these and it's not the job in some sense that i thought it was going to be and because of the emergency docket there is really no break they used to have the summer to teach and to read and to you know do these travel assignments and that kind of thing and it's really not that anymore because the court really is 365 with all of these emergency doc docket you know happenings so she's definitely been out there complaining a little bit i think it's fair to say um about the job so that gives people on the left who would like to see her seat not be in jeopardy a little bit of ammo to go out there and say okay we're gonna write we're gonna push we're gonna talk about this um because she herself has said you know the job is overwhelming i can imagine um but 
zero indication she wants to go anywhere or that she has any physical problems beyond just managing her diabetes. Shannon Bream, host of Fox News Sunday, host of the Living the Bream podcast. Shannon, thank you. Chris, thank you. Dumb time. Dumb time. Dumb time. Weekdays, noon till 3. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. When I set out to build our firm, it was built for greatness. It was built for you. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. Today, Morgan & Morgan has more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. If you or anyone in your family has been injured, call America's largest injury law firm. Call Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. $5,000. That's the average amount of money people in the U.S. are now spending on gas in a year. Five grand. That's crazy. If you drive, you have to download Upside, the free app that gives you cash back every time you get gas. That's right. You can earn real cash back with Upside just by buying the gas you're already buying. You can literally start earning cash back today. I use Upside every time I fill up. and I've already made around two, three hundred dollars. You're you're putting gas in your car anyway. Why not get real cash back? If you like free money, download Upside. I'm saving the cash I earn from using Upside to help pay for a vacation later this year. Download the free Upside app now to earn cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code PICKUP to get an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first tank. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, PayPal, or a gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code PICKUP. For a 25 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code PICKUP for a 25 cents per gallon bonus. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Fox News, I'm Sue Guzman. A meeting scheduled today between the House Speaker and the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. House Speaker Mike Johnson hoping an appearance with former President Trump casts him a lifeline. 
Johnson's job could be in jeopardy. The former president and Johnson will tout a bill focused on preventing illegal immigrants from voting. Fox's Chad Pergram. The National Weather Service confirming a tornado touchdown in Wilkes County, North Carolina Thursday night. This woman describing some of the damage she saw while driving. We were trying to head home up Highway 18 and there were trees down. Um, initially we thought that there was a tractor trailer ahead of us that he was having difficulty pulling a mountain and then we just saw all the trees. The National Weather Service confirming a tornado touchdown near St. Augustine, Florida. There was widespread damage but no injuries reported. America's listening to Fox News. is the Fox News Rundown. Now a look at sports. The most magical golf week of the year has arrived as the first round of the Masters got underway on Thursday. Due to weather, the start of the first round was delayed and the round was suspended shortly before 8 p.m. Eastern due to darkness, with the first round resuming for some at 7.50 Eastern on Friday. Bryson DeChambeau finished seven under par after shooting a first round 65, carding eight birdies on the day with his only bogey coming at the par four ninth. Scotty Scheffler, who won the green jacket in 2022, shot a six under 66 bogey free round to end his day one back of DeChambeau. Tiger Woods got through 13 holes and is one under par and will play 23 holes on Friday. That's sports on the Fox News Rundown. I'm Joe Morgan, Fox News. Now an update from Outkick's Hot Mic. The Masters, though, the fact that Tiger Woods is playing has me pumped. What Tiger's been going through with the spinal fusion, the car accident, everything else that in between, and the fact that he continues to show up to events like this, looking to compete, I respect the hell out of that. Here's a guy that has the highest of highs with expectations for his game, and he can barely get around the golf course, and he knows that's hindering his overall ability. There's no question about it. We have this guy on display knowing that he had the win in 2019, who's not just willing to go out on that. He's willing to show up and, and willing to do what I think is not just for the fans, but he's doing it for himself to prove a point. I think because of who he is and the face of the sport he represents and the fact that everybody continues to want to see him despite it not being Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. From Outkick.com, I'm Jonathan Hutton for the Fox News Rundown. Pastor Brad Lacey here, First Baptist Church, Conshohocken. Join us Saturdays for the great message and be blessed. 5 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. I'm Bill, and I'm living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that causes scarring of the lungs and makes it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. So if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife, Bev, and I have walked every step of this journey together. I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. Don't miss the Education Show with Dom Giordano every Sunday morning at 5.30. Find out how you can help your child or grandchild succeed. Sponsored by New Hope Academy. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage. Available at navage.com. It's time for your Fox News commentary. Joe Concha. What's on your mind? Let's put in perspective just how big O.J. Simpson was in this country before the murders of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, and particularly after that happened. The slow speed chase, we all remember that with the white Bronco and the helicopters hovering overhead. June 17, 1994, that drew 95 million viewers. The verdict of the trial one year later, 1995, drew more than 100 million viewers. We're talking Super Bowl-like numbers. Remember, no Fox News or MSNBC at the time. Soap operas were preempted for months due to the televised trial. And those proceedings made all involved the biggest stars in the world, not just OJ, but Marsha Clark, Chris Darden, Johnny Cochran, Robert Kardashian, that name sound familiar? F. Lee Bailey, Judge Ito. These were household names that, if you were an adult at the time, you could still reel them off today like you're talking about the 1998 Yankees. Because 
I'm not sure anyone born at that time realizes this, by the way. But back in 1975, after OJ retired from football and before the term sports marketing was ever a thing, Hertz Rental Car signed OJ to be its spokesperson. The first kind of contract for a major athlete of any kind. And the image of Simpson hurtling through airports is one of the most famous ads of the 20th century. It worked. OJ was to Hertz what Michael Jordan would be for Nike. OJ would go on to do movies like the Naked Gun series. Monday Night Football, ABC signed him to work with Howard Cosell. He was an A-plus lister at celebrity parties, and the man always seemed to be happy. That's what made the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman so shocking. Given his public persona at the time, it would be like, let's put it this way, Peyton Manning or Derek Jeter killing two people today. That kind of reputation, that kind of iconic image, it was almost impossible to believe that O.J. could have actually done this until the facts overwhelmingly showed that he did do it. Either way, Nicole Brown Simpson, Ron Goldman, died that day in June of 1994. They didn't have to, and O.J. absolutely should have been convicted, and he should have died in prison. That Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Following years of discouraging sales trends, people are buying more beer again, at least from one company. Constellation brand says sales of its beers, including Modelo and Corona, jumped 11% last quarter, 9% over the full year. Constellation sales of wine and spirits, though, fell 6% last quarter and 9% for the year, due in part to destocking. In other words, stores were carrying fewer of its products. Beer may be popular, but it's no coffee. The National Coffee Association says more than two-thirds of American adults drank coffee in the past day. That's the highest level in more than 20 years. The share of coffee drinkers preferring ready-to-drink brews, such as canned and bottled, has nearly doubled to 15 percent from a year ago, beating espresso machines to become the third most popular prep method behind drip coffee makers and single-cup brewers. I'm Nancy Lyons, Bloomberg Radio. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Do you know a veteran in need? Nation's Finest, through the VA's Supportive Services for Veteran Families program, helps veterans and their families struggling with rent, employment, and other housing-related costs. Today, Nation's Finest operates more than 30 locations in California, Arizona, and Nevada, helping thousands of veterans every year. Visit nationsfinest.org or call 1-833-468-9676. That's 1-833-468-9676. Get two hot dogs for the price of one on Hatfield Phillies Franks BOGO Night on Tuesday, April 16th at 640 when the Phils host the Rockies. Secure your seats now at phillies.com. Youngsters are sure to smile on Sunday, April 14th when the Phils host the Pirates at 135 for Cavity Busters Kids Opening Day. And kids 14 and under receive a sleeveless hoodie. Order tickets now at phillies.com. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids, no matter where you are. Call now, 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates. Real solutions for real people. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia.
always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Sherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. Free speech lives here. Here. It's Kale and Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. And away we go, live on this Friday, April 12th. It is indeed Kale and Company right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. We are always live on the free Odyssey app and, of course, streaming live for your video viewing pleasure on YouTube as we head until 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210, the phone number on social media at 1210 WPHT. I am at Nick Kale, K-A-Y-A-L. Sean Farish in for Dawn today. Anthony Dorenzo, Phil Omquist, our associate producers. Stalker has the morning off on an action-packed Friday morning. Sean Farish, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing so well. I'm so happy to be here again on a Friday. Last Friday was a blast. I've been hearing about it all week. <laughs> you know, I heard the ratings were tremendous, Nick. I heard oh. they were really good. And that's all because of you. You know you know that because you're a tremendous guy. I have to say that. <laughs> and I'm happy to tell everybody in uh, in the Philadelphia area and watching all over the world on YouTube, I successfully, my wife and I survived the eclipse. Oh. I was told it was going to be. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, but listen, I'm a space geek nerd whole thing. Uh-huh. Uh, if we don't hear about that a thousand times this morning from, from me, I don't know, from my, I can't, I just can't stop talking about it. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And so many people were like, oh, you're going to die if you go out there and watch it. And I was like, no, I'm not. And if I do, at least I'm going to see it. Then I'll go, you know. Be with uh, be with the big guy, you know, not not the ten percent big guy. But yeah, yeah. I, it was the coolest thing ever. We survived. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm excited to have some fun on this Friday. Were you in the the path of totality by chance? I was in the total path. Nobody yeah. could see the path. You know, I have to tell he you is that the path. because what happened? No, I'm not the path. Chris Christie's the path of totality. I have to say that. So Christie's back in the presidential race because he got out and eclipsed the sun. Oh. And, uh, you know, listen, uh, my wife's been telling this joke all week. How does the moon cut its hair? Eclipse it. Listen, it's so oh. fun. I was in the path. We drove from, uh, from Tennessee to Indiana. And there were a lot of people on the road because everyone wanted to be in the path of this thing. Yep. Uh, it was so much fun. I was wearing my glasses. My wife was too, because you can't look at Chris Christie without glasses. <laughs> and it was so much fun. Just so sloppy much fun. Chris Christie. Yes, indeed. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun here for these next four hours. Uh, coming up at 9 o'clock this morning, we'll talk to Jake Crane from the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's site. He's uh, He does sports for the Daily Wire, but he's a conservative. He's a Republican. We'll talk to him about a, uh, a variety of issues coming up in hour number four. We've got a big take on O.J. Simpson, the White House's response to the death of O.J. Simpson. COVID, Fauci, Rand Paul, bird flu, no taxes as a form of reparations. We've got a Planet Fitness update. Dorenzo's got the cut sheet. It will be absolutely loaded. Uh, Shout out to everybody last night for Pints and Politics uh, with Dom and uh, Rand Paul. I was unable to make it last second, but... I heard it was a uh, it was awesome, massive yeah. success. Yeah, I ended up going and filling in for you. So it oh, was it was oh, great. So you did yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I did. Wait, wait, make filling it. in for me. I was supposed to say. Like, well, they one wanted thing. they wanted Dan and I to to do the intro because okay. the only wasn't going to be there. You were going to be there, and we promoted our podcast. Brought Dom out. Right, it was fun. So yeah. how long how long were you on a microphone for? Thirty eight seconds. About like two minutes <laughs> around there, which was cool though. I went to that school. I went to Bucks in Newtown, so it was okay. kind of full circle moment. It was fun. All right, very good. Yeah. So we'll get to uh, all of that this morning. Uh, and we look, if, if this show devolves into uh, four hours of O.J. Simpson, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not against it. I, I, I love talking about this case. I love talking about this story. And um, I think this is just one of those things that it encompasses so many aspects of life. So uh, we will get to that um, this morning. Uh, we're not going to do news this morning, correct? You're not doing news, right? Oh, you are doing news. No, I'm not. I'm, oh, you're, you're not? correct. Okay. Yes. okay. All right, very good. Let's get right to it here. 6.05 on Friday morning. Time for the last Big Take of the week. The Big Take on Kale & Company. All right, the Big Take this morning brought to you by Budget Blinds the Juice Bites the Dust. You know, O.J. Simpson is one of the most notorious and infamous names in the history of the United States of America. 
From winning the Heisman Trophy at USC to being a legendary running back in the NFL to Hollywood star in movies such as Naked Gun to being an NFL commentator for NBC to the last 30 years of his life. From his acquittal in the trial of the century to being found liable in civil court to going to prison for stealing his own memorabilia to his final days in Las Vegas, O.J. Simpson encompassed media, the criminal justice system, police, celebrity status, sports icon, race, all wrapped into one lifetime. And that life ended yesterday at the age of 76. Here was ESPN Sports Center breaking the news yesterday. Listen and watch this. Breaking news here in the Sports Center. Orenthal James Simpson, the former football great who was ultimately accused of and then acquitted of the brutal 1994 murders of his ex-wife and her friend Ron Goldman, has died, according to his family. O.J. Simpson was 76 years old. They posted this on social media on April 10th. Our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and his grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, end quote. That was a statement, again, posted from his family on social media. And there were rumors and reports that Simpson was in hospice care in early 2024, but Simpson dispelled that story in one of his last posts in February. Simpson hadn't posted on Twitter since February around the Super Bowl. And as we all know and remember, in June of 1994, almost 30 years ago, O.J. Simpson was accused of and charged with the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman. As a 10-year-old, I remember the entire case vividly. I recall the famous Bronco chase with Al Cowlings driving the white Ford Bronco in L.A. on the interstate as O.J. was in the back seat with a gun to his head. I remember Bob Costas from NBC Sports cutting into the 1994 NBA Finals between the New York Knicks and the Houston Rockets and going to the news coverage of the highway chase. And we, of course, remember the trial of the century. Judge Lance Ito, Marsha Clark, and Christopher Darden representing the state of California and the Dream Team consisting of Johnny Cochran, Robert Shapiro, F. Lee Bailey, Alan Dershowitz, still alive today, and Robert Kardashian, as well as LAPD officer Mark Furman. And it's been 30 years since that trial. Countless documentaries were produced, books were written, and the nation obsessed over the case. It was tabloid material for years. But in reality, it was one of the most open and shut cases anybody has ever seen. Having read and watched almost anything I could get my hands on, it was so obvious that O.J. Simpson got away with murder. And probably 90% or more of America would agree. But this case wasn't about the facts. It wasn't about the evidence. It wasn't about the rule of law. This case was about racism, police misconduct, fresh off of the Rodney King beatings and riots in L.A., and in my personal opinion, this was a make good for past wrongs. And I've been told and raised on the notion that two wrongs don't make a right. But that's what we had. Johnny Cochran played the race card. Feelings were involved, facts were ignored, and O.J. was found not guilty. And of course, Mark Furman was a racist. The tapes proved that. But O.J. Simpson still did it, and we all know it. And Christopher Darden, assistant district attorney under Marsha Clark, made a major, major no-no. He had O.J. try the glove on. You never do a demonstration in a court, much less ask a question that you don't know the answer to. And he got baited and goaded into making O.J. try that glove on. And we remember the famous phrase, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. It was prosecutorial malpractice. But now the question for some becomes, what is the legacy of O.J. Simpson? For me, it's very simple. He was a killer that got off the hook. Well, ESPN's Jeremy Schapp was asked that question on SportsCenter yesterday as a man who covered a lot of this. Here's what he said. Listen and watch. And I was there in Chicago at the O'Hare Plaza Hotel, which is where he had stayed when this was going on. And there was, I believe it was... Detective Sergeant Bert Looper, who was running the investigation at that point in Chicago. And I remember being with Lester Munson at Sports Illustrated, standing in the fields around the O'Hare Plaza Hotel as the police were searching for the murder weapon. And, and what that moment was like, um, you know, that, that O.J. Simpson, in a moment, 
had gone from being this hero, and he was a hero, to a murder suspect. Uh, it, it, it was um, unlike anything else you know, that I've experienced in my lifetime that America has witnessed really in the last half century. And I think we have to keep in perspective here, yes, he was acquitted. But anyone who has seriously looked at the evidence, anyone who saw Ezra Edelman's, you know, brilliant film for ESPN uh, about O.J. Simpson would have to come to the conclusion that he was a murderer. And and so am I filled with, uh, with sorrow today? I'm not. O.J. Simpson killed those two people. O.J. Simpson got away with murder. O.J. Simpson was an awful human being. Murderer, wife beater, domestic nightmare, verbal abuse, physical abuse, drug and alcohol abuse. And that was 1994. Today, it's 2024, and 30 years has passed, and identity politics has been reignited in this country over the last four years. I want you to think about this. Our nation has made tremendous strides in many areas. But Democrats, post-George Floyd over the last four years, have basically tried to take us back in time to 1994, and even way before that, if we're being honest. They make everything about race, everything about oppression, marginalized groups, gender, sexuality, defunding the police, etc. And that's what the O.J. Simpson case was about. It was race. It was also entertainment. It was crime. It was sports. It was Hollywood. It was an identity politics smorgasbord. Instead of judging O.J. Simpson on the character or lack thereof, He was judged based on cosmetics, optics, and things that were not entirely relevant to the case. And fast forward to 2024, and it's on repeat yet again. The left doesn't want to evaluate you based on your ability, your integrity, your diversity of thought, or your merit. They want to promote you and elevate you or dismiss you and deplatform you based on what ideology you subscribe to, if any, what boxes you check off, and make everything about identity politics. So have we learned anything since the OJ trial? Have we learned anything since the 50s or 60s? If you look at the OJ Simpson trial and today's Democratic Party, you can see that the more things change, the more they stay the same. I believe when OJ Simpson got arrested in Las Vegas and sentenced to 33 years in prison, it was poetic justice. It was also a market correction for his acquittal in criminal court and his failure to pay the majority of his civil court judgment. To this day, he still owes the Goldman family, now that he's passed away, $100 million. And Simpson only served about nine of those 33 years. But as the famed running back and celebrity has passed away, I can say with clear conviction, he was an amazing athlete. He was also an incredible entertainer. But at the end of the day, that man was a total scumbag and the killer of his children's mother. And you can separate the artist from the person. I believe that. You can appreciate or like somebody's music or movies or sports accomplishments and then also realize that that guy, no, he's a fraud. And make no mistake about it, the person was the real O.J. Simpson, not the one we saw on a football field or on our television screens. Good riddance, Juice. You won't be missed. And that's The Big Take. The Big Take on Kale and Company. All right, Big Take this morning brought to you by Budget Blinds. Spring is here, and now is the time to budget. Budget Blinds is your one-stop shop for blind shade shutters, custom drapery, and motorization. Check them out online at budgetblinds.com. We'll come back, and we'll have some OJ discussion. I'm sure Sean has plenty of thoughts. Anthony and Phil, if you've got thoughts on OJ, you can jump in as well. And, of course, the audience, 855-839-1210, on social media at 1210WPHT. And, of course, in the YouTube chat, it's the Kale and Company comment community. Just go to youtube.com slash at 1210 WPHT and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Friday edition, Kale and Company. Sean is in for Dawn and we're back after this on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. See Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Luke's Church off Easton Road in Glenside, Saturday, April 27th. It was fun. 100% every time. It's spectacular. It was hysterical. I saw Conklin last time he was in Glenside. Can't wait to see him again. Hysterical. It was terrific. We had a ball. Oh, I thought it was great. My cheeks are still hurting from laughing so hard. That's Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Luke's Church off Easton Road in Glenside, Saturday, April 27th. For tickets, go to JoeConklin.com. Some people like him, but I'm not one of them. JoeConklin.com! Hey, Philly, Jason Kelsey here. Even though I won't be playing on Sundays anymore, you can still find me at Lincoln Financial Field on Saturday, May 18th for the Eagles Autism Challenge 
Presented by Lincoln Financial Group. This event raises millions of dollars to support autism research and care and gives you the chance to walk, run, or ride your bike beside your favorite Eagles players. Together, we can transform the lives of individuals affected by autism. Register today at EaglesAutismChallenge.org, and I'll see you there. Are you tired of dealing with those old, inefficient windows in your house? Well, maybe it's time to go Guida. How about that drafty, beat-up-looking entry door you've painted over more times than you can count? Well, go Guida. Need added protection from the elements with a new storm door? Go Guida. And what about that sliding patio door or garage door you've been meaning to replace? Go Guida. Whatever your home improvement needs are, I suggest you go Guida with the great people at Guida Door and Window. To help you get your project started, Guida is offering 20% off all windows and doors while allowing you to start your project with no money down and up to three full years to pay it off interest-free. That's right. Receive 20% instant savings with the luxury of paying off your project interest-free for up to 36 months. Restrictions apply. Offers for a limited time. So what are you waiting for? It's time you finally go Guida. Call today to schedule a free in-home estimate at one eight seven seven go guida or visit them at goguida.com. That's go, G-U-I-D-A dot com. Win a 2024 BMW 740i X Drive sedan during the Race to the Finish promotion at Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Now through April 27th, earn entries on slots and table games for your chance at being one of 1,575 lucky winners. Plus, two players will win a 2024 BMW. Drawings every Saturday with grand prize drawings on March 30th and April 27th. $1,575,000 Race to the Finish, only at Borgata. Must be 21 or over. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Planning a wedding? Enhance the experience with a rehearsal dinner or reception at Del Frisco's Double Eagle Steakhouse in Center City, Philadelphia. Experience the Del Frisco's difference for all your wedding festivities. For more information, call 267-817-3867. Headquartered here. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT takes you inside the businesses powering Philly. Crash Proof Retirement is empowering the investing landscape becoming the first firm in history to record and store all financial meetings. This unprecedented initiative validates the guarantees Crash Proof Retirement has delivered to the Philadelphia region for over 15 years. All promises made in recorded financial meetings become legally binding between Crash Proof Retirement and the investing consumer, such as no market risk, no fees, and the potential for double-digit interest returns. This unrivaled documentation silences all those who doubt Crash Proof Retirement's proven commitment to truth and transparency. Learn how recording financial meetings will empower you to make the best decision for your retirement future at CrashProofRetirement.com. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, highlighting the businesses, big and small, headquartered here. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. You may know me from my book, Money Hacks. You may know me from my radio shows. And you may even know me from some of these commercials. But listen, I'm teaching stuff that people need to learn about money. In fact, my favorite topic is money. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and you will learn things about money that you never even knew existed. We will teach you things about real estate, about the stock market, and about how to use your IRAs properly. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Are you tired of hearing about the recession that's coming? Are you prepared for it? Well, listen, at InvestorSchooling.com, we're going to teach you ways to prepare for the recession that you didn't even know existed. We're going to teach you strategies on how to use real estate. We're going to teach you strategies how to use the stock market properly. That's right. You can even make money in the stock market when the stock market goes down. Hey, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for a free class this Thursday night, and you will learn all of these techniques. Go to InvestorSchooling.com right now. RSVP for this Thursday. We'll see you there. Listen to Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money, Sunday mornings at 9 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Learn about investing, tax strategies, and more. Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money, Sunday mornings at 9. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. 
with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Lexus of Cherry Hill, a six-time J.D. Power dealer of excellence for customer service. Why would you buy your Lexus from anyone else? The 2024 Lexus models are here and moving fast, and the 2024 Lexus GX will be arriving soon. Tony LaBelle and his team at Lexus of Cherry Hill are your source for the the Lexus of your dreams. Over 300 new and pre-owned vehicles are in stock and ready to roll. Face it, you deserve this Lexus and you deserve award-winning customer service. Start your journey at LexusofCherryHill.com. Turnersville Jeep.com is your zero down Jeep and Ram headquarters. Come into Turnersville and get up to 20% off select Jeeps and Rams. That equates to over 18,000 in savings on select models. We have over 300 vehicles available for immediate delivery. TurnersvilleJeep.com, located on Route 42 in Turnersville. Drive a little, save a lot at TurnersvilleJeep.com. That's TurnersvilleJeep.com. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. Don't let woke win. Follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Six twenty-two. Welcome back in, Kale and Company. It's a Friday morning. Sean Farish in for Dawn Stensland. Here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, get us on the free Odyssey app, watch us live on YouTube. The number one story of the day yesterday, O.J. Simpson passing away at the age of 76, and we are talking about it this morning, 855-839-1210. Sean Farish, your thoughts on uh, what I believe was the number one story yesterday in the United States of America. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a, I have like a, I guess a controversial take on it. I kind of, and I don't mean to like take away from the hype and the, the discussion because there's definitely a discussion to be had, but mm -hmm. I was never like enveloped by the OJ Simpson thing. I was probably too young when the trial was going on. I'm born in 91. I know the verdict was in 95. And so, yep. uh, you know, I, look, I, I agree with your big take, right? The guy was a scumbag. He obviously wasn't this, uh, you know, uh, morally upstanding human being. I don't look, to, you know, to people, athletes, entertainers, et cetera, like for their morals, but murder's a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, you know, I heard he died yesterday. The memes were hilarious. I'll tell you what, the content, my friend sent me a picture <laughs> of orange juice with an expiration date of April 11th, and I thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. Yeah. And I was looking at it, and I was just like, Oh, I get it. OJ expired on April 11th. Uh -huh. and, you know, I, it, it, here's the thing. What, what you could take out of your big take this morning, right, was that 30 years ago, they tried the same garbage that works now in, you know, uh, uh, in, in public for yep. public perception, which is race. You can't convict him because he's a black guy and you're just trying to put him in jail because of race and et cetera, you know, because of his notoriety. It's the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was 30 years ago that they did it yep. and they still do it now. Look at the story. Was it out of Chicago? The dude fired, you know, a couple shots at police and he was, he was, you know, they're like, oh, well, they fired 96 shots. Isn't that excessive? Well, I would say, yeah, it's excessive for a traffic stop if he didn't shoot first. Like, if you don't want to die in an altercation with police, how about don't fire a gun at them? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing as you saw on Michael Brown. Uh, Freddie Gray, Baltimore. You know, I remember all these cases. If you don't want to die in police custody or you don't want to die as a result of an interaction with police, how about don't try and steal their gun? Don't resist arrest. If you're truly innocent, you'll have your day in court because I think many people in the country believe OJ was guilty. Oh, yeah. He had his day in court and he was acquitted, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think if we've learned nothing from the OJ Simpson trial, it's that identity politics, and it's 30 years later, is still alive 
and very well. And for anybody who wants to preserve the legacy of, let's say, you know, a Dr. Martin Luther King, who says base, you know, uh, uh, I, I had a dream, right? The whole dream. I wrote that speech for him, by the way. <laughs> the I had a dream speech. I had many dreams. They're beautiful dreams, talented <laughs> dreams. You know, judge people based on their uh, character, content of character, not the color of their skin. Like, can we get back to that? Mm -hmm. Maybe honor his legacy instead of, you know, the legacy of race baiters everywhere. That's what I think we should be talking about. Yep. They use the exact same tactics 30 years ago that they're using now to do the same thing to people all around the country. And it's, it's, it's shameful. And that's what I take away from this OJ stuff. I didn't care about the guy. I, he was a Miami dolphin, I believe, right. And that Buffalo bill, Buffalo the two teams bill. In, I think he was also a 49er for a stretch. Yeah. The, the bills and the dolphins are two teams. I can't stand in the AFC East cause I'm a jet fan. So, you know, whatever, <laughs> poor me, but uh, you know, I, I, I when he died yesterday, I was like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't talk about it on my show, but I understand it's a huge thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to give him any time. I, I think it's um one of those things where you, you never forget where you were if you were old enough. I think I'm about six or seven years older than you. I'm 40. So I was born in 84 and this happens in 94. And I think this was honestly the first time I ever recall watching the news i mean we were we were getting ready to watch the nba finals this happens they cut into it and then my mom flips over to cnn i don't know if it was larry king or if it was wolf blitzer but i know larry king was a big thing during the oj trial barbara walters so that was like the first news event that i can ever recall and then there were so many things like along the way because i wanted to go to school the law school and become a lawyer so i was infatuated with either being a prosecutor or a defense attorney Journey. that got sure. me kind of into all of this stuff and then you just kind of go back and you i watched you know the netflix series the 10 parter where i think cuba gooding played played oj is that the one with travolta travolta yeah, played that, that was on fx oh, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was good and then espn did the made in america yeah, oj yeah. Uh, documentary and the that was for you it, <laughs> made in america <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And it, it's just sad that 30 years later that we're still seeing the same thing from all of the usual suspects. You know, I made a little bit of a political twist in the big take with Democrats doing this, but the media does it, you know, every time a you may, and you make some great points. If you don't want interaction with police, follow the law. Don't not break the law, right? It's not hard. You right. know why I've never been shot on a traffic stop? Because I've never shot at a cop before. I've never done it. <laughs> right. That's why I've never died in a traffic stop. I got stopped last year. We thought our cat was sick. I was speeding to pick up medication. The cop pulls me over. Did you know why I pulled you over? I said, honestly, I don't. He goes, you were going like really, really fast in a 40. And I was like, I'm sorry. My cat's sick. I'm trying to get medicine. You know, he did. He came back, didn't give me a ticket. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I was very kind yep. to the guy. He said, slow down. Have a happy new year. Okay, good. He was looking for drunk drivers. You know, it was, uh, and I clearly wasn't. But like, it's not hard. Yeah. Traffic stops, you can survive them easily if you don't act like a fool. Mm -hmm. Just don't act like a fool. That's it. That is correct. And I, I don't know what I find more embarrassing here 30 years later or 29 years later since uh, he was acquitted and found not guilty in 95. The the amount of people out there, and it's a very small percentage. I, I think probably 95% of people believe he did it. There's a select few out there that think he was uh, truly not guilty. I don't know what's more embarrassing if you think he he was not guilty or because I've seen people, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, who is a professor, oh. uh, and, and he's all over social media. You know who he is. He's actually a Philly, oh, yeah. he's Philly born, and he's kind of a, a troll and a race baiter and a race hustler. He says, yeah, he was guilty, but you know what? He deserved to get off it, because I said this was a make good for Rodney King in the big take, which I truly believe it was. I don't know what's more embarrassing, truly believing he you think he didn't do it or, well, he did it, but you know what? The black community deserved one. I'm like, no, no, no. Two wrongs don't make a right. This right guy now. was guilty as all hell. And he's not the victim, by the way. The two people that he slaughtered are the victims and the children that had to grow up without their mom. Yeah, the the whole, uh, you know, the black community got one back. It's like, what is this, like a makeup call? Home plate umpire right. called a low strike. So he like called a, uh, no, you don't, that's not, you don't play. A, that's a game. Mm -hmm. You know, baseball's a game. And umpires, you know, they could do a better job, but, uh, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it, it, that's a game. There is no makeup call in court. Like, it's, if he murdered someone, that's what it is. 
I think you're right, though, the glove thing, you know, like don't. And I think Bongino says this all the time, like when you're in Congress, when you're asking people questions in these in these situations where you know, you're trying to frame a narrative, whether you're trying to you know, prosecute, never, ever ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Yep. And, you know, you can watch the trial. That's that's what happened. And uh, I, look, the whole. The whole OJ thing, I made a mistake. He never played for the Dolphins. We did play for the Bills. Um, my dad's listening. He texted me. He's like, you didn't play for the Dolphins. All yeah. right, listen, I got you. <laughs> Bill, you know, Bills and uh, 49ers. <laughs> Bills and Niners. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, he, he gets a he gets a redo, right? He got the mulligan. It's the Masters. He got the mulligan. He got a redo, all right? You know, and, and then he goes and what did he steal from himself or and then wound up serving eight of the 33? Like the guy couldn't even stay out of prison after he was given a, an amazing gift. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. dude, just go hide. Right. You know, what are you doing? Right. And, and then the worst part of all of it is in that civil judgment for Goldman and the family, you know, they're awarded well over, I think, $130 million. And Simpson, for all these years with lawyers and hiding his assets, and then he moves to Florida, and then he's in Vegas and, you know, not paying off what he owes. And, you know, so, I, I mean, I'm glad the guy's gone. Um, it was an unbelievable thing to follow uh, if you're interested in, you know, law and criminal justice, and then you throw yeah. in all the X factors. I'll tell you what, the other thing that was a disgrace yesterday is the fact that the White House comes out and they express their <laughs> condolences on O.J. Simpson's behalf of his death, but no mention from Corrine Jean-Pierre, a.k.a. The Binder, on the deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. She comes out yesterday at her press briefing and says, quote, our thoughts are with his family during this difficult time, obviously with his family and loved ones, and and I'll say this, quote, I know that they have asked for some privacy, and so we're going to respect that, and I'll just leave it there. Don't know yeah. if that was intentional or not, or if she's just a space cadet, but I think you, can, we, we, you can't talk OJ and being a victim or passing away without bringing up the people that he, in all likelihood, did kill, right? Like it's unless, another you're bad unless you're Corinne Jean-Pierre. Unless you're Corinne Jean-Pierre. Yeah, because, because this, this woman, uh, let me just, okay, this one, there are, I love when I'm called uneducated by Democrats, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you uneducated MAGA. And I'm like, you are the party of Joe Biden. This is a guy who debated, you know, it's debatable, but I think it's pretty clear, pooped in front of the Pope, right? We know about the story. <laughs> yeah. your rolls, we know about, this is about, Sheila Jackson Lee, did we hear those comments earlier in the week the about moon. the moon yep. made of gas? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? And she was like, no, I meant the sun. Oh, so you want to live on the sun? Yeah. Is that is that? So I'm uneducated, but you think we can live on the sun? You know, it's real hot. Why don't you try and do it at night when it's colder on the sun? <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee, please. This is I can't take that. You know, you're like, you can't do this, but you can if you are. Corinne Jean Pierre. It's it's alarming. Mm -hmm. The stupidity, the tone deafness. You know, oh, uh, prices are down. Joe, I just went to the grocery store. I paid 50% more for cheese this week than I did last week. What do you mean prices are down? Even Christy, who hates Trump, is upset because food costs more. Sloppy Let's go. Chris Christy. I, I, I love that drop, by the way. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. Yeah, it, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, of course, this administration, they never seem to get the tone right. They're always very tone deaf, and it's just, they're, they're they're just a PR disaster in many ways, in many Always. regards. But if it was the other way around, and because the, the Biden administration is all about uh, identity politics, if if the killer was white and the victims were black, or if the killer like OJ was white and then it was one black uh, female and one white male, you can guarantee there would be a totally different um, narrative and tone behind that administration yesterday with this story yep. for sure. Yep. And actually going off all that, all let's well, there's so much on the cut sheet. So this is just totally related to what you guys are saying. So okay. this will be cut three, Phil. Um, Stephanie Alam, I don't know if you guys know her. She was speaking uh, out of L.A. with CNN on Jake Tapper's show yesterday. And uh, she gives a little bit of insight on on what you're saying right now and kind of says, quote, unquote, the quiet part out loud. This is cut three, Phil, go. And it's also just worth noting how much is, was impacted by this trial, Jake. Uh, so many things happened. We saw policing changing here in the city. And it's also worth noting because of that unrest, that racial unrest in the 90s, that is why so many people who may not have been invested in O.J. Simpson were just happy to see that someone who was rich and famous and black could get away with the what other people did in the system as well too. 
All right, so of course you got to play that card, right? You, but I, I will say this: um, having watched so many different uh, opinions on the Simpsons story and really his life over these last twenty-five or thirty years, there's a large segment of the African American community that doesn't like O.J. Simpson. Because yeah. they say that O.J. Simpson, who grew up in tough times, in poverty, uh, his mom struggled to pay the bills, that once O.J. made it, right, as a celebrity, as a pro football player, moved to Brentwood, California, gated community, that he kind of turned his back on the neighborhood he grew up on, uh, the friends that he was around, and he kind of big-timed him and shut him out. So he, he I, I don't think, even though there are some that were happy he got away with it, there's a lot in the black community that are like, now he's a sell out and he's a fraud and that they were not fans to begin with as well you see that stephanie uh, uh, elam clip by the way for anybody watching on youtube you could land the plane on that woman's forehead did you see that <laughs> no I that didn't. was like a, no it, it, that was holy i looked at that's all i was staring at was a it was a five head actually it's huge <laughs> does she got a never... squash i didn't even know i mean i got a melon myself so i, no, I, I gotta you, be careful what throws i throw that... Nick, that doesn't compare to what i just saw on that it was like <laughs> wide open spaces man it's unbelievable uh, the the I have a question for Bernie Sanders. Yeah. If Bernie Sanders is around because this is a guy, OJ Simpson, made a lot of money in his life, owed millions, never paid it. Whatever happened to, you know, the rich have to pay their fair share. Where is that? Where's uh, the criticism there? Yeah. Of course not. Right? Of course not. You can't do it. Um, you know, I have a listener also. He's listening in Philly. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, compare it to Scott Peterson, who was convicted on, you know, some cir circumstantial evidence. Yep. I mean, it's different. You know, two-tier justice, justice system. Yeah. You know, so it, it's... It's more of the same, more a lot of, of the same. A lot of those changed. cases, a lot of those cases yeah. come out of California as well. I'm glad you yep. brought up Scott Peterson. That's another one. Wasn't Casey Anthony out of California too? I, Casey Anthony, uh, Scott Peterson, the Menendezes. Um, yeah. Uh, Aaron Hernandez was not, but they, yeah, there's some just, uh, speaking of internet gifts and memes yesterday, there was one where uh, you see Tom Brady, if you recall about 15 years ago, when Brady was sitting in court, I think over Deflate Gate or something, and he, he spins around in his chair and turns his head back. And, and smiles. And he's smiling because yeah, yeah, he sees yeah. somebody coming in that he knows. And all the memes on social media were yesterday were saying, and they were saying, that's Aaron Hernandez smiling and seeing OJ show up to hell. <laughs> I, saw a, uh, I saw a meme. It was terrible. I said, it's a, don't worry, OJ. It's a dry heat. Yeah, it's a know? dry heat. <laughs> yes. I, like, oh, I was like, oh, oh, that's brutal. <laughs> the memes, I got to tell you, the memes were just, Oh, out of yeah. this world yeah. on on OJ it's out of this world the content was 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 tremendous you know yes. it was great all right, let's wrap up the segment here with a call, 855-839-1210. Uh, we have Ed, who is in Del Ran. By the way, Sean, Ed is a big, big, big Joe Biden fan. Ed, good morning. How are you, pal? Oh, please don't make me sick before I eat breakfast. <laughs> okay. So, let, let me tell you something. How the heck can anybody even remotely say they want to vote for Joe Biden? First off, the guy lies every time he says something. He makes up stories all the time. And on top of this, okay, his border policy is a mess. His domestic policy is a mess. His foreign policy is a mess. I'm a big fan. If you want somebody to destroy the country and take it like down like the Titanic, He's your guy. let's vote for Joe Biden. Right. Ed, exactly. Ed, 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 you missed hey. one thing that's a mess, too. Joe Biden's diaper is also a mess, okay? <laughs> Especially when oh, he's in Rome. I, I you got it. <laughs> hey, so let, let's put it this way. I love what Greg Gutfeld said one night. He says, hey, here's the captain of the Titanic. Whose picture did he show? Who's, uh, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know the real reason the Titanic hey, sank, right? Th well, yes, it's of course it's. <laughs> it's because Chris Christie was on the ship. That's oh, why it sank. Oh, okay. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten. All right, we will come back, and there's some new stuff out there with Rand Paul, Fauci in the world of COVID, uh, and also a little snippet of audio of some of the conversation that was had last night at Pints in Politics with our very own Dom Giordano and Rand Paul at the uh, Zlock Performing Arts Center that Anthony Dorenzo was a part of last night. We'll get to that as we continue. Kale and Company, Sean Farish in for Dawn, and we're back after this on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT.
Dom Giordano. In Northeast Philadelphia, you ought to be able to play a high school football game. Well, apparently, they don't believe you can. It's not safe for the parents, the students, the referees, the players, and everybody else. Come on, Father Judge and Lincoln. There's a new mayor. Don't you think you would go to Sherelle Parker and say, here's our problem. What can you do to ensure safety? Is a mayor going to say, that's just the way the world is now? Well, then why the hell isn't Philadelphia just shut down then? It's Dom time. Dom Giordano. Weekdays, noon till 3. On Talk Radio 1210 WPHD and the free Odyssey app. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. And now Martha Stewart for Skechers. When I make a dish or embark on a craft project, I always use the finest, most fabulous ingredients and materials. Which is why, when it comes to footwear, I love Skechers. Because Skechers is the comfort technology company and uses the most luxurious, innovative materials and designs to make wondrously comfortable footwear with all the fits and features like ArchFit and Skechers' world-famous air-cooled memory foam. It's exactly the way I'd make shoes. Find Skechers at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800-254-4574. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-254-4574 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-254-4574 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That that's 800-254-4574. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stopped, opt out. Go to nomoredraftywindows.com for full offer details. Attention all homeowners. Do you know when to replace your windows? Feeling too hot or cold? It's time to replace. Fog between the glass. Time to replace. Spending too much on expensive energy that literally goes out the window? It's definitely time to replace. If you've put off replacing windows in your home because it's too expensive, here's great news. You can now get a free in-home window consultation and free price quote from Renew by Anderson, the company with the most five-star reviews among leading full-service window replacement companies. And right now, you can save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. Just text DOOR to 200-300 for your free consultation on top-quality, affordable windows or patio doors for no dollars down, no payments, and no interest for a year. That's right. You don't pay a dime for an entire year. Plus, save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. But hurry, these big dollar savings end this month. Text DOOR to 200-300 right now. Text the word DOOR to 200-300. Don't wait. Text DOOR to 200-300. Lose 20 to 40 plus pounds guaranteed with NJ Diet. NJ Diet uses DNA and blood work to help you lose weight and keep it off. Tune into their radio show Sundays at 2 or visit NJDiet.com. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? 
I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. Do you feel like you're going through life clouded by doubt? Talk to California Psychics. Our trusted and accurate psychics are available 24-7. And we guarantee, if it's not life-changing, it's free. Download the app or connect with us at CaliforniaPsychics.com. Right now, new customers get 80% off their first reading. Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Hey, Clementine. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. WPHT. Apparently, most people's voluntary unless you had to get them to work. But I'd say 80, 90% of us, if we had a choice. 97% of people over 65 took the vaccine. So really, a lot of people took it because they thought, looks like people are dying in my age group, and they took it. Mm -hmm. But then younger people, it's about 5% of five-year-olds have it. I think it ought to be zero. But the thing is, is I'm more open to it. I would never force anybody on it. But like my in-laws, I thought it was probably uh, the vaccine is less dangerous than the disease. But it depends on the individual. That is Rand Paul last night as he was with Dom Giordano for Pints and Politics here in Bucks County at the Zlock Performing Arts Center. Welcome back in. Kale and Company on this Friday morning. Sean Farish in for Dawn Stensland as we continue. And Sean, we've got more news in the world of COVID uh, and also with Rand Paul and Tony Fauci. I saw this yesterday as we were getting some stuff ready for the show. Rand Paul says that he will investigate Dr. Anthony Fauci's, uh, quote, secret trip to the CIA before COVID-19, the top Republican to prove off-the-books visits to the spy agency that questioned the Wuhan lab leak theory. So this is very interesting because we're seeing more and more about this bird flu story. Uh, this is starting to move around. We're seeing cases pop up in a variety of states. But I, I, I love that. That was a clip, by the way, from last night at Pints and Politics. And that, to me, is a very measured, rational stance that yes. Rand Paul takes, yes. right? Yes. Like he said there, you know, with his uh, his in-laws or whoever he was referring to, that COVID probably was a higher risk than the vaccine for the at-risk community. But, like, yeah. when we think about COVID and we think about how we were forced and mandated to do X, Y, and Z— it should have been on a case-by-case -case basis based on your personal beliefs, choices, and whether or not you were high-risk to begin with, older, heavier, a smoker, so forth and so on. But yet we're still talking about this now four years later. Personal responsibility. I mean, that's, that's always been the case, right? Now, I got to tell you, uh, if I was back, if I had still been in the Northeast where I used to live, I would have been at that event. I love Rand Paul. He is by far my favorite of any of the people in politics agreed right now, yeah. even like I, 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 so I love Trump. He's in, he's uh, entertaining, but you know, so that's presidential, but in, in Congress and the two, two houses of Congress, Rand Paul's my guy, uh, you know, back to 2016, I was a Rand Paul supporter before I was a Trump supporter. Oh, he was wow. my guy. Okay. Right. I mean, that was, I have Liberty defined his father's book. I've got taking a stand. I mean, I love this guy, because you know what's funny? You mentioned a rational, measured take. And a lot of people will say the things that they that Rand Paul just said, you know, uh, last night at Pints in Politics. They'll say it now, but they weren't saying that in 2020. Correct. Rand Paul is one of these guys where you can go back years and his position yep. hasn't changed, right? Yep. And they did this in the 2016 election cycle. They played clips on the debate stage of people changing their stances, but they never played clips of Rand Paul changing his stance because he rarely does. Yep. He mm -hmm. takes a very principled constitutional stance. This is a guy, if I was at Pints in Politics, he'd still be there because I'd still be talking his ear off. <laughs> I love I, I, him, his father. This is a guy right there that he's one of the very few, I think, that you can trust in Washington, D.C. right now that actually has our best interests at heart because he's at, at the very at the very least just interpreting the Constitution as written and applying it to, you know, to society. Let's not for mm -hmm. let's not forget Rand Paul in the middle of covid in the beginning of covid. He got it. He recovered. And then because he had antibodies and immunity, 
he actually volunteered. He's a doctor in the ER in a hospital where he lived, mm -hmm. right? So he was actually on the front lines trying to fight it. And people, oh, he doesn't want to wear the mask. He's super smart. He's a doctor. I well, we thought we were supposed to trust the doctors. Mm -hmm. You trust Dr. Jill Biden, who wears severe thunderstorm warning dresses all over the place. You don't trust <laughs> Rand Paul. Fauci yep. is a disaster. And mm -hmm. one of Trump's biggest mistakes, love the guy to death, was trusting him and listening to him because that guy flip flopped more than like your windshield wipers, mm -hmm. you know, on, on, on your car. Rand Paul, I, I encourage him to go as deep as he wants. This guy is at the front of the uh, of the pack challenging the COVID narrative or just really trying to say common sense. I mean, think about COVID for mm -hmm. a second, 2020. How many people do you know went nuts over the toilet paper? And I was saying this back then, <laughs> if you needed 96 rolls of toilet paper for the 15 day 15 days to slow the spread quote unquote quarantine your problems were much worse than the china virus you had a big problem if you need toilet paper either that or you live with you know stacy abrams i don't know, you know we yeah. have to go there well we stacy I've, I've been told through, through anonymous sources that stacy takes big wipes you know and saying? she's the beast. That's why I call her the beast of the Southeast. That's why you're, I call her. You're exactly right. But that's the thing that was so frustrating about guys like Rand Paul coming out and saying what we all believed, or most of us that listen to this, st this show and this station believed, and the left smeared it as radical, as conspiracy theories, ivermectin, well, yep. all this stuff. Yep. And now that they've come around and they've seen the light, and but they'll never go back and say, okay, we were wrong. Yep. They'll never go not. back and roll the tape of remember Leanna Wen from Baltimore she oh. was she was plastered all over your TV with uh you had Fauci obviously you had the COVID death tracker on CNN you had Sanjay Gupta now he's a doctor but I mean he is not even remotely close to an infectious disease or he's respiratory an activist now yeah, yep. it's yep. unbelievable and Leanna Wen had the audacity to say we should not allow people out of their house if you're not <laughs> vaccinated has she ever not. been held accountable for that absurd comment? Well, what about Rachel Madcow, who said uh, <laughs> with every vaccinated person, the disease stops? Uh, no, it doesn't. I no. mean, how does that make any sense? First of all, no, a, a vaccinated person shouldn't be catching the disease to begin with the virus to begin with, because they're what they're vaccinated. Right. right That's right. why I have. You know, like uh, the tuberculosis, the tetanus. Like, I get vaccinated so I don't catch things. Yep. We were told, and this is the funny thing, this is the progression with the left. We were told the vaccine is safe and effective. Then it was like, well, you know, breakthrough. Remember? Breakthrough cases. Yeah. There were a lot of breakthroughs going on. This is what they continue to do. They did the same thing with uh, with critical race theory. They're going to do the same thing with Planet Fitness. I know we're going to get to that. Yep. They're like, well, no, you know, there's no critical race theory in schools. Then it's like, well, there is critical race theory in schools, but it's only college. Then it's like, no, it's actually everywhere. You were right, but it's a good thing because we're fighting racism. They're going to do the same thing with Planet Fitness. Well, they're, they're always shifting the goalposts, right? They're always, always moving the goalposts. To. Yep. Well, and they to that. To to that point this is why i mean i even said to Rand paul last night i said thank you for being pretty much the only principled politician that i feel like exists mm -hmm. like i i all 100%. of them all of them almost don't even seem to know what the constitution or principles are other than him i don't always agree with Rand paul but i know what i'm getting he's and he and he and he sticks yeah. to the script he doesn't as you were both saying everyone else they flip-flop mm -hmm. when it's convenient just because you know emotions and their base and whatever fundraising whatever they need to do yeah so. there's a few guys that have really stood out over the last couple of years and there's also a lot of others that have been exposed for frauds. But I'm with Sean from the standpoint of Rand Paul. I would throw in Jim Jordan as well. I like Jim Jordan Maybe a lot. Maybe Scott Perry. Scott like Perry, yeah. solid. I, I, but I also get a kick out of Kennedy in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, he's funny. Oh, more, more so just, just for the com comedic value. Yeah. Than <laughs> he is. He said. Uh, he said at one point, I think on Fox News, he said, uh, uh, "President Biden." It, it, the gas is so expensive; it's cheaper to <laughs> it's cheaper to buy cocaine and run everywhere. And it was before there was cocaine in the in the White House. That dude is hysterical. He's a little too hawkish on Ukraine, but he's hysterical. You, you, that, that's a pretty good. Now, have you worked on the Kennedy impression, <laughs> or have, is that okay? I have. I have worked on it. I've tried it. You know, it's basically it's just a Southern accent and then an absurd statement. That's all it is. It's just <laughs> that's like trying to skin a possum backwards hanging off the side of a woodchip. But like it's like you know it's whatever. It's just crazy. You could just come up with something crazy and then say it like John Kennedy. And he's probably said it before. As a matter of fact, you know, I was offended. John Kennedy stole, not stole. He probably didn't see 
see it, but he used the same joke that I used in one of my drive through videos. Yeah. He said that uh, we, tr we, we trust Dr. Pepper more than Dr. Fauci. And I actually said that <laughs> in my video. I went to Arby's, right? And ordered Arby's like, I want a bacon, brisket, and beef dip sandwich. And they ran out of horsey sauce. What a shame. And it was my friend's thing. We got like 9 million views in upstate New York doing that. Horses and I said, we trust Dr. Pepper more than Dr. Fauci. And it was, you know, and then he said it. And everyone's like, oh, that's great. I was like, I wonder where he got that from. Permission to make permission to make a request to Mr. You can make a to, to Mr. Ferris. <laughs> we need to get you to do a bit where you do like this like GOP behind closed doors conversation and you just Ooh. have like a conversation with three or four other people and you you're going from Trump to Kennedy <laughs> to to anybody else that you're capable of pulling off an impression for. I don't know, Vivek Ramaswamy, you go on down. I wish the list. I could do Vivek. That would be so, unbelievable. It would be I like Eddie Murphy. Do, <laughs> but yeah, and it's funny because I used to do I used to do Francesa. It's funny because he's a fat guy. I'm not a fat guy. All right, we're back. Mike's on Francesa on the fan. So I was doing like Mike Francesa and Donald Trump. You know, uh, I got you elected, okay? Uh, I got you elected. No, no, you didn't. I got you, your job. You know, you're doing great. Now your ratings are better. You used to be the sport. And I would just go back and forth. I would send these messages to friends. And they were like, dude, it sounds like two different people. And I was like, it's just me and I'm nuts. You know, that's the end of the day. I'm having a conversation with myself in different voices. It doesn't get more. I need the small room big need than that you know exactly right <laughs> 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in uh so this exclusive if you want to check it out on the daily mail with Rand paul uh he goes on to say the cia officially still says uh that covid19 is quote probably from animals we also have stories rumors and innuendo that fauci was a frequent visitor off the books to the cia he points to the cia and how they disagree with the findings from the department of energy and the fbi that have said that the pandemic likely originated from a leak at a Wuhan lab. And though the initial CIA assessment found that the lab leak theory was likely, senior officials in the agency overruled their findings because, God forbid, you don't fit with the other agencies. So who do you trust more, the CIA or the FBI? I mean, I think if you still believe that this was from a bat and this jumped, I think you're out of your mind. This was, to me, a man-made virus meant to decrease population and cause havoc on the world. I think most people probably agree with that, Sean. China. That's China. all I have to say about that. No, China, <laughs> no, it's it's so funny. People, uh, my favorite thing, and this was how absurd it was, yep. was like, oh, it came from a bat or it came from bat soup. But don't say it came from China because that's racist. And I was like, well, hold on a second. Are you telling me that it, it had to have come from Bat soup, because bat soup was the theory, which I, I coined the term. It's bat soup crazy, you know, you know, because it's if you don't want to curse, you could say that, instead yeah. of, you know, the other one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so they were like, well, it came from bat soup. And I'm going, well, so, wait a minute. So who eats bat soup? They're like Chinese people. I'm yeah. like, wait, whoa, whoa. So now I'm racist if I say it comes from China. But you're saying it came from China because Chinese people eat bats. So you're actually stereotyping something that they do uh -huh. and saying that they're responsible for this whole thing because <laughs> Chinese people eat bats. So who's the real racist? They're like you. I'm like, how does that make any sense? Because they said you know, so. If, That's why. Yeah. <laughs> if you believe it came from a bowl of Campbell's chicken noodle soup, right? I guess they put their little slogan possibilities. You yeah. never know when you're going to unleash a pandemic. If you think it came from bad soup still, yep. you're out of your mind. Oh, it jumped in a wet market. It did not jump in a wet market. There's a John Stewart. I don't like him. Yep. I think it was him, but there was a, he made the best joke. He was like, so you mean to tell me? So if there was a chocolate spill, you guys yep. in Pennsylvania, you know, down the road from the Hershey's chocolate factory, where do you think it came from? Probably the place called the chocolate factory. There's a lab in <laughs> Wuhan, China called the Wuhan Coronavirus Research Lab. And miraculously, a coronavirus started circulating in Wuhan. I don't think it came from some bat. I think it came from that place. Yep. Right? I would I, agree. Like it, and, and made in a lab, made in China. Like all things that are terrible, made in China. Exactly. That's what happened. All right. Coming up next, we'll kick off hour number two with a Planet Fitness update. Uh, Planet Fitness, you guys have a serious problem on your hands. And we're going to have to address this. Nick Kale, Sean Farish, Anthony Dorenzo, Phil Omquist. It's Kale and Company. Dawn's in Italy. Greg's off. And uh, I guess you could say the, uh, the kids are running the asylum today. We're back after this here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD.
The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Hey, this is Norman Chaikin, also known as Norman the Floorman from Norman Carpet. Hey, it's my wife's birthday tomorrow. She's been leaving jewelry catalogs all over the house. So for her birthday, I'm going to buy her a magazine rack. <laughs> Whether you need carpet, LVT, hardwood, tile, or area rugs for your residential or commercial project, we've got you covered. Savings up to 50%, and that ain't chop liver. Visit us in Bryn Mawr, Conchahokan, or call us at 800-220-RUGS for your home or business, and we'll bring the store to your door. At Cherry Ovava, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hill Volvo, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krepnick, president of Cherry Hill Volvo. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org local. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800-514-1020. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-514-1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-514-1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-514-1026. If you put the words retirement savings crisis into Google, you'll get about 81 million references to explore. Jim Cipriati at Retire Ready Financial Group doesn't need Google to know you're worried about retirement. Between inflation, rising taxes, crazy markets, and the uncertainty about Social Security, he understands. That's why he offers a complimentary retirement second opinion. It's a no obligation meeting for you to talk about your concerns about retirement. You want to know if you're going to be okay? Let's find out. Don't trade the stress of work for a new kind of stress in retirement. Call Jim Cipriati today, 610-894-7415. That's 610-894-7415 to schedule your complimentary retirement second opinion or go online, retirereadyfg.com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. 
Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, and PN number 2083768. There is breaking news all day long from around the world, and sometimes all that noise makes it hard to hear about what's happening right here at home. With the free Odyssey app, getting your local news plus breaking news is easy. And even when you're not near a radio, stay connected with what's going on right here by listening live and push alerts. Just download the free Odyssey app and search and follow your local news station, and you're good to go. The local breaking news to get you through your day at your fingertips on the free odyssey app that's a-u-d-a-c-y it's a joe conklin comedy show fundraiser at the church of the incarnation in mantua new jersey we're raising money to send altar server christina mcnasby to the shrine at lords in france she's such an inspiration to everyone in the parish but when i hear a story and, and when i hear about all the surgeries that she went through and my heart really goes out for her. this is why we're going to send her over to lords because we're hoping for a miracle the benefit comedy show for christina mcnasby saturday april 20th get tickets at joeconklin.com joeconklin.com <laughs> Follow Talk Radio 1210 on Instagram and Facebook at 1210 WPHD. Monster, Kale and Company, hour number two underway here on this Friday morning. Hopefully all of you having a great start to your work day or perhaps... A three-day weekend, maybe you were out at Pints and Politics last night and you had too many pints, and you said, eh, Friday work, eh, it's, just, it's optional. That's what Stalker did. <laughs> My car won't start, boss. I'm not going to make it in today. AAA said it's a two-hour wait. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. We're on social media at 1210WPHT. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us on YouTube. Download the podcast, Apple, Spotify. If you can't get us in one way or another, uh, you're not trying. Sean Farish is in for Don Stensland this morning. Stalker's got the morning off. You know, when Stalker makes a public appearance, you, know, you, take, you get a four-day weekend. He's got a lot of, you know, a lot of recovery time after being out with the people. Well, he was drinking bourbon with Rand Paul. I had one, and I was like, oh, my, I got it. That's it. Okay, so so Stalker did imbibe with Rand and Yes, Dom? a little. I mean, we everyone in the back, they were all we were all pouring some. Some yeah. bourbon. I wasn't so. looking at uh, real estate so, and properties last so time last, I've been there. Last week there was a debate on which it would like which um uh, uh bourbon it would be. What what did it wind up being? Uh, we had the the main one was Woodford, but there were a bunch of like really really nice Kentucky bourbons that people gifted nice. Rand yeah. Paul. So yeah, yeah. probably Amazing. probably bourbons that make Woodford look like yep. Bankers yep. Club. Pretty vodka. much, yeah, yeah. Well, we're the producers, so yeah. Here you go. You yeah. get what? I mean, it's good. No, it's Woodford's still good. a good. Yeah, no, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. Thirty eight, thirty nine bucks. That's quality stuff. Yeah. So let's get to uh, this Planet Fitness story, Sean. Um, this is, again, another thing. And I don't want to hear from the left because, you know, what's amazing to me is how the left will totally flip certain things around. Uh, that study that came out from Harvard University a couple of years ago that's been back in the news about how uh, this, this guy, I think this guy actually who did the study was black, and he found that there was no disparity in the way the police treat white people versus black people, mm -hmm. and so many people were outraged by it. And and then you have stories like this where, uh, once again, another man walks into a locker room at Planet Fitness and the left will come out and say, oh, give me a break. It's like five or six stories. The bottom line is it doesn't matter if it's 100 stories, 10 stories or one. Right. This is a completely preventable situation if these companies would just have some courage, some common sense, and some conviction and say, you know what? If you're a dude, you probably have no business being in a women's locker room. Let me give you a couple of these details here, Sean. So a naked man took advantage of Planet Fitness's transgender locker room policy, and according to the female that had to uh, endure this, uh, this guy... Uh, and I'm not even gonna, I'm not even going to call him a trans woman. I'm going to call him a dude. He decided to parade his genitalia in the ladies' locker room and also ask women to shower with him and then rub lotion on his back. And this man was arrested for using the female locker room at a North Carolina Planet Fitness gym and claiming that he's transgender. Christopher Allen Miller, 38 years old, uh, and arrested for a felony charge of indecent exposure. So thankfully he was arrested. But as I just said, Sean, like this is totally preventable if these companies would just stop with the, the virtue signaling. Yeah, all the time. And, and this is what I was saying before, right? So 
Um, we have been saying for a long time that that would be what occurs. And I'm not saying that every person who identifies as transgender, if you want to say that it's a real thing or if it's an issue, you know, I'm not saying every person who does that is doing that. Right. What I'm saying is you're leaving the door open literally for predators to come in and do predator things. You know, like, like if you have a bunch of hens and a fox comes up and you're like, oh, wow, you know, let me let the fox into the hen house because the fox clearly identifies as a hen and is not going to, you're going to lose your hens. Like mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen. You can't, you can't mix the oil and water like that and expect it to like all just get along and be, be fine. Like you have in this situation, this guy obviously took advantage, as you said, of this policy, which is something that we all predicted would happen. And we were called, you know, conspiracy theorists or bigots or intolerant, et cetera. Well, why should we be tolerant of that behavior? Mm -hmm. So now that it has happened and it has continued to happen in a number of situations, not just Planet Fitness, things like this have happened in schools, in Target, in places all around the country where men, are going locker rooms, gyms, public facilities in, 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 in places all around the country. Men are going into women's spaces. So then we hear the left, and this is one of the angles that I like to talk about it. You know, they go through abortion and all this. Oh, it's women's rights. Okay, what about a woman's right to, you know, privacy, safety, decency? We don't care about that. But you care about some made up right about reproductive health, et cetera, et cetera. You have these situations that are happening, and this is what the left will always do. I talked about it a few a few minutes ago. Critical race theory. First, it wasn't happening. Then it was happening, but only in higher education. Then it was good that it's happening. Mm -hmm. So now here comes the left with this situation. First, they told you you're a bigot if you say that men will take advantage, predators will take advantage of these policies and exploit them, right? You're a bigot. Now we've seen it happen on a number of occasions. They're going to come out and say to you, well, those instances are rare. And so it's helping more people than it's actually hurting. So so, you know, kind of just get over it. Yep. That's stage two. Stage three is going to be them saying, well, it's good that it's happening because women need to see dudes junk more often. <laughs> that's where it's going, man. And that's that's how far society has fallen. And and they just they don't care about women. Mm -hmm. They can't even define woman. Right. I mean, ask any liberal what a woman is. They can't give you an answer. Well, I mean, think about it. Uh, when you look at the pyramid and the victimization chart and that whole dichotomy, uh, you, now you have the trans community is at the top. So when we talk about victimization, it's trans, it's LGBTQ+. They have superseded anybody racially. They have superseded females. All As you yep. work your way down the, victim, uh, the victimhood pyramid. And here's the other thing, too. You mentioned hypocrisy of the left. And I don't care if somebody's pro-life or pro-choice or whatever, but don't come at me as a female that's pro-choice saying my body my rights my choice and you're also the one three years ago screaming roll up the sleeve and take the yep. shot you loser you're gonna kill your grandmother well, like wait a minute you just told me my body my choice my right so yep. why are you telling me i have to get a vaccine or a shot in my shoulder that i don't think i need that i have questions about whether or not it'll work as well and, and then you have this story, and this story will be covered by shows like us. It'll be probably on Fox News, things like that. Mm -hmm. But this stuff won't make CNN. This stuff won't make MSNBC. But I'm telling you, Planet Fitness, if I'm their CEO or on their board, I mean, are, are you completely in the dark? Did you not pay attention to the summer of 2023, the way Bud Light was treated, Target, Kohl's? I mean, if you want to obliterate 30% of your market cap and cut into your, you know, your ability to make money, keep allowing things like this, like Christopher Allen Miller to do this in Gastonia, North Carolina. They're on their way to being, I think, having a substantial impact on their bottom line. People are going to go well, here's, elsewhere. Here's the problem, too. I mean, there was a woman who filmed a quote unquote transgender in, in the restroom in uh, planet fitness. They brought it to the gym's attention. Okay. That woman was, uh, her, she had her membership revoked yeah. by the company, right? So they know about it and they don't want that to, well, you're not supposed to use the phone and gym and in the bathroom. And it's, so they revoked this woman's membership for saying, Hey, look, I, you know, maybe your intentions were good, but this is what we're dealing with. They said, no, now you're not allowed in our gym. 
like she'd want to be there anyway after after experiencing that in the restroom. So they knew about it. They mm -hmm. know what's going on, and they choose. They are choosing now to enable the insanity. And a lot of people say, "Oh, you're harsh about the transgender community. You're this or that." I, I look at it this way, okay? You know, if you're born a man, you get to adulthood. You want to make all sorts of changes to your body. You want to believe what you want to believe. I'm not here to tell you you can't do that. Yep. But you got to fall in line with the rest of society, and you have to uh, allow normalcy to prevail. We can't be in the crazy is the new normal, normal is the new crazy, you know, day. And that's where we are. If you if you believe men can't get pregnant, that's normal. You're considered crazy. If you believe that <laughs> Pete Buttigieg actually breastfed his baby, mm -hmm. that's crazy. That's the new normal. Yeah. Like you, you, we, we. This is where we are. This is this is absolute insanity. And we are, we are. They call it gender affirming care. No, it is insanity affirming care. <laughs> this is an ill. It's a mental illness. It's 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 not. I agree. I mean, I'm not trying to be yeah, funny, but no, it, it's just, I, like, I'm, I'm in the same like, camp. I'm in the same small camp. room, big needle. Like you need, we need to, th there are treatments. Yeah. There are. Okay. If you have an anorexic friend, let's say, and they're like, well, I'm, I'm fat. And you look at them and you're like, I don't know. Are you going to continue to affirm this disability and be like, yes, you know what? You rail thin, 110 pound soaking wet person, like stop eating. You need to lose weight. Or are you going to be like, listen, intervention time. We need to actually, you know, let's get you some help. Let's talk through it. Yep. Let's figure it out. Yep. That's what you're dealing with. You're legitimizing the voices of a schizophrenic. Say, oh, no, no, those are real. Those are real. They're all real. Those multiple personalities. Those are real too. Like you, we are, we are legitimizing and, and, and normalizing this hallucination that a man can just at, at any at any given time i'm a woman now i'm going in the ladies room well, what about the real women that are in there right. don't tell me about yep. women's rights if we're not going to defend or, or or at least stand up for a woman's right to safety and privacy it's mm -hmm. it's such a stupid argument oh well, it is and even people in the trans community are that's a huge debate it's a huge debate because many of them are on your side, Sean. Like they say, the people that say they're trans and instantly do nothing and then start doing things like that, they make everyone else look bad. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and, and if you're 18 years old, that's why, in my opinion, I think Republicans have to get off the, if you have two X chromosomes, if you have an XY, like if you're 18 or older, who cares? Like the pushing it to the kids and like just living in this delusional world like you're alluding to, I think that's the bigger problem. Like it let is. people do what they want when they're when, an adult. That's when, yeah, it. When you're an adult, look, if you're 18 and you're able to serve this nation and go and get yep. your head blown yep. off, I think you should be able to chop off your you-know-what. But at 15, no. Nope. At 12, no. Nope. We cited that study last week, the most conducive, uh, the most, uh, I think, thorough study done to date. I think it was over 15,000 individuals. that, uh, And this uh, psychologist came to the conclusion that most people uh, go through this whole uh, you know, mental health crisis. It ends up being a fad and a trend. And these people ultimately kind of, I don't know, mature or grow out of it, which is why I don't think we should have gender affirming care for minors. I don't know how it's these doctors justify it. It's a phase. You it know, is. We, I you agree. Know, we, we, back, go back in high school, you, someone was gay. You're like, no, that's just a phase. You know, and sometimes maybe they are gay. And here's the other problem. You know, you have these kids, they're doing this to kids in the schools. And I, when I came through the high school system, it was, you know, as a, uh, 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 if this person's gay, you know, respect them. They're proud. They're allowed to express themselves. I agree. As long as you don't, you know, express yourself physically on, I don't care, whatever, do what you want to do. I don't, I, I really don't care. You love, right. That, that's between you and your bedroom and the doors closed. You do whatever you want. Right. I, I just, I don't care. Just don't feel me up at a bar. That's, that's how I feel about it. Right. Like if you're not impacting me, I don't really care. But now you've gotten to this point where you have these kids, right. Uh, where if it's a boy who is expressing, you know, whether you think the kid's gay or he's effeminate, whatever, they're not allowed to be gay anymore. That is now a woman trapped in a boy's body. So I've spoken to people in the in the gay community, and they're like, you know, this trans thing is homophobic. And I'll, what do you mean by that? They go, well, because if I'm a gay man or if there's a, a gay, well, a lesbian woman out there, that's no longer a woman. You have to now change your whole appearance and everything about who you are to fit your quote unquote gender identity. So you're not allowed to be gay anymore. Like we're no longer tolerant of gays because it's something deeper, right? So like, what, what are we doing? You know, we, we don't have the quote unquote 
pride anymore if someone's gay you don't have pride it's it you, you have to change your whole body to, to fit something you have to mutilate yourself it's almost like a like a, almost a humiliation ritual like oh you're gay you got to cut that off now well, like it's it's, yeah. it's scary well and there's also a, a segment of the gay and lesbian community that don't like what the trans community is doing because gay and lesbian people fought for years yeah. uh, right. for acceptance and they think the trans community is making a mockery of them uh, i've got this story here in front of me uh, i won't get into it today but if you want to read it it's on fox news the headline is dems violated freedom of speech during transgender bill debate uh conservative groups allege and uh the, the case is basically about the mandatory use of preferred pronouns it's at the center of a battle between progressives in the colorado house and senate and conservative groups suing these liberal lawmakers claiming that the uh compulsory speech violates their first amendment Amendment rights and the two groups that are battling here the group that I'm referring to are gays against groomers and it, it's a very fascinating case if you want to take a look at it and it highlights what you're talking about of you know gay lesbian community versus trans community and how we're looking at the trans community today and that's I think the most crazy part of all of this Sean is if you want to believe the numbers nine percent of America identifies as LGBTQ plus nine percent in a nation of 340 million people and then within that nine percent there's only a sliver of it that identifies as trans yet we're making it seem like this is we're again we're catering to a select vocal minority as if they are the overwhelming majority when they're not even the majority in the lgbtq plus uh arena so to speak it's because americans are now okay with gay marriage and gay couples in general and they don't necessarily care that much so this trans thing they knew would divide not only republicans democrats straight people but they knew it would separate the gay community which mm -hmm. all those things are good for the power structure so yeah and we sit here and talk about it better. all the time and and waste and everyone argues and all these people are fundraising over stupid things like that there you go mm -hmm. that's the way the game works 855-839-1210 cut sheet in just about 24 minutes we'll come back a couple of other stories before we get to the cut sheet uh we've got some new polling numbers in the battleground states and Donald Trump is trending in the right direction yet again. We'll give you those numbers on the other side. It is Kale and Company, and this hour brought to you by Budget Blinds. Spring is here, and now is the time to budget. Budget Blinds, your one-stop shop for blinds, shades, shutters, custom drapery, and motorization. Visit BudgetBlinds.com for a free in-home consultation. The only no-questions-asked warranty in the business. BudgetBlinds.com. Nick, Sean, Anthony, back after this on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Hi, it's Dawn. Want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care? Call my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. I've been a customer for years. Trust me, you're going to love the results. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs. This reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is locally owned and family operated. They have offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full-service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800-FREE-SEED. NaturalLawn.com. 800-FREE-SEED. And choose my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Greener 
grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Tell them Dawn sent you. Did you know the country's best Trump store is right in your area? Conveniently located on Street Road in Ben Salem, the Trump store has a huge selection of everything Trump, ranging from shirts, hats, mugs, flags, and more. With a new 2024 collection, the Trump store is the perfect spot to find a gift for yourself or any other Trump fan in your life. Open seven days a week. Stop by or shop online to see their huge selection. The Trump store, where Trump is still president. Visit in Ben Salem, PA, or visit online at trumpstorepa.com. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. This is Larry Steinhouse with Investor Schooling. Are you ready for retirement? Have you prepared everything you need? Well, at Investor Schooling, we will teach you ways to better prepare for your retirement using real estate and the stock market. But you need to learn how to do it right. And that's what we teach. At Investor Schooling, we sell nothing but education. Come to Investor Schooling and learn how to have a better retirement. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now for this Thursday's class at 7 o'clock. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Are you tired of hearing about the recession that's coming? Are you prepared for it? Well, listen, at InvestorSchooling.com, we're going to teach you ways to prepare for the recession that you didn't even know existed. We're going to teach you strategies on how to use real estate. We're going to teach you strategies how to use the stock market properly. That's right. You can even make money in the stock market when the stock market goes down. Hey, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for a free class this Thursday night, and you will learn all of these techniques. Go to InvestorSchooling.com right now. RSVP for this Thursday. We'll see you there. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman Windows Doors and Siding, how much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. Home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610-431-8898, chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. This is Dr. Marianne Ritchie. Tune in to Your Radio Doctor every Saturday afternoon at 5 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT for the latest healthcare news and information because your health is your wealth. That's Your Radio Doctor, Saturdays at 5. Calling on Town. Hello there. To follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Ron has always been a loser. Welcome back in. Kale and Company, 728, as we roll on live here on the Friday morning. Nick Kale, Sean Farish, Anthony Dorenzo. Stocker's got the morning off. Dawn's in Italy. Our pets' heads are falling off. It's been a good morning so far. 855-839-1210. 
cut sheet coming up in just about 16 minutes. I've also got some polling numbers here for uh, Trump and Biden in the latest Quinnipiac poll for battleground states. We'll hit on that. Uh, also, RFK Jr. says, if elected, he which he won't be, but he will um, in- initiate a January 6th prisoner special council. We'll get to that story coming up in a little bit. And also one uh, famous baseball player. I would argue the greatest closer in the history of Major League Baseball with a presidential endorsement. We'll get to that as well. 855-839-1210. Let's, Sean, let's uh, let's grab a couple of calls here. And uh, let's go down to Nashville. We have Nick in Nashville. I was once referred to as a Nick in Nashville, but that was only for like four (laughs) and a half years. Uh, Nick is in Nashville. He's got some thoughts on Planet Fitness. Nick, you're on Talk Radio 1210. You go ahead, sir. Hey, how you doing? Well, you're doing well. Hey, Sean, uh, shaking my groin over here. Oh, my goodness gracious, one of the McGroins <laughs> on the phone. What's up, my man? Shaking my groin. <laughs> Rocking or rolling, brother. Hey, I just wanted to point out that I think this whole Planet Fitness story, one of the biggest things that's missed with this lady that uh, had her membership re- uh, revoked. She has finally showed the world how to cancel a gym membership from Planet Fitness. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And that's uh, he's a uh, he's one of the the there's a group online called McGroin Nation. It's it's hysterical, Nick. It's great. I met him actually at a Dan Bongino event at Redneck Riviera. Nice. And uh, this this man's awesome. He's a he's a follower of mine. He listens to uh, the show I do on Rumble all the time, and the whole group is very supportive. But he's right. That's the best way to cancel a gym membership. Just go ahead and expose the corruption out there in uh, in Planet Fitness. I cannot believe Shaken McGroin is live on WPHD from Nashville. Let's go. That's amazing. And, and you're and, and Nick, you're referring to the lady in Alaska, right? Because that's where this story re- uh, re- This is where the whole Planet Fitness stuff really took off, I believe, with that specific case. I mean, it, it just the whole thing just so absurd. I mean, it's <laughs> it really how I'm, I'm, where how has society gotten to this point? I mean, it's. <laughs> Yeah, he's no. right. He's right. I went to high school in like 2014, 15, 16. If this happened then, yeah, pff, the, yeah, this would be a huge issue then. Well, so. and, and this is, you know, I where does this get pushed from? I mean, I think the LGBTQ plus lobbyists are very influential. They're spending a lot of money. And again, you know, when you think about just the, it really starts with the Biden administration. If you think about it, it's this obsession with they've built their entire platform on all of these fringe issues right climate change dei gender identity pronouns um you know you want to throw in like they've got no solution for the border and even though they should right. they just don't want to address the border they can't fix the economy uh, two days ago sean inflation back up three and a half percent crime energy the real things that matter to everyday Americans, they're mum on or they're awful at, yet they just want to kind of nibble around the edges with all the fringes. They cater to the 1% is really what they do. They cater to the ones that are loud, too. These people, you know, you see the purple hairs in the street, and it's like, oh, there's a lot of them. It's the same people in every city. You know, they rely on that squeaky wheel, and they continue to give it the oil. Now, my biggest thing, and I've been saying this for a while, when you give the squeaky wheel the oil and the wheel continues to squeak, despite the fact that you keep giving it oil, there's a word for that, broken, yeah. okay? You need a new wheel. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to fix something that can't be fixed. Mm-hmm. It's done. You know, it's uh, you stick a fork in me, Jerry time, right? It's over. Yep. Oh, you're exactly right. Let's grab another call. We've got Sauce. Uh, Sauce is in yes. South Jersey. Planet Fitness reaction. <laughs> Sauce, good morning. How are you? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Sean? What up, Sauce? How are you? Good, man. Hey, um, this whole thing, it's major gaslighting. They they tell you one thing, they try to make you believe it. It's fantasy land. And then when you call them out on it, they explain it away in another direction or try to get your attention elsewhere or try to convince you that it's okay. It, you're wrong. 
No, you saw it. Yeah, well, that's totally that's right. how it goes. It's it's it. That's how it goes. It's shiny object, right? You know, no, it's not this boom, and then something else happens, and and you're a bigot for that too. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It is. I I've also got this story here from the Blaze. Whether and it doesn't matter to me whether we're talking about a locker room at Planet Fitness or a bathroom, and we've got the the Penridge uh, bathroom story going on in Percocet with the Penridge School District here, where they're now going to allow trans individuals to use women's bathrooms but they will also have i guess these gender neutral single use bathrooms where anybody can go into the one uh it's like a broom closet with a toilet it's like <laughs> it's like your traditional home bathroom so to speak well that's in the city all of them are unisex now like yeah. all of them yeah but this uh story from the blaze there's an ex WNBA player uh her name is val whiting 52 year old from new jersey uh she was a two-time national champion at stanford in the early 90s played in the WNBA I think uh, for one of the New York franchises and she's come out and said quote a lot of my basketball sisters feel differently but trans women do not belong in women's sports it's not fair nor safe for biological women there has to be another solution for trans women to be able to compete and or be in these locker room settings besides having them compete against and infringe upon biological women rights which I, I think so if the trans Trans thing is so big, and I've said this on the show before, Sean. Well, then let's create a separate league for trans athletes, right? We'll have men's sports, we'll have women's sports, and we'll have trans sports. But then at the end of the day, when you add up the total number of trans athletes, it's there's not going to be a market and a supply and a demand for it. So it completely obliterates their narrative. I think that's what we yeah. should do. Put them on the spot. Okay, here here's your league for trans athletes. Here's your bathroom. Here's your locker room. And let's see how long it lasts for trans division and i think if you do a trans division in you know in these sports you'll see what will happen all the biological men are going to win that's right. what i mean because it's not just that oh you believe that men are better but there's a biological like we were told follow the science right mm-hmm. don't be a science denier if i say that it's you know global warming isn't happening i'm a science denier if i say that like biology can determine someone's uh you know athletic superiority you know, it, it's like, well, you're a bigot. No, I'm, I'm just following the science like you want me to. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, if you did a trans division, you'd see a lot of biological men. You'd see them sweeping it across the board. Yep. So I've always been in favor of the, do a trans division. I think it's a better idea than just throwing them in the same leagues with each other. I agree. Let's wrap up the segment. One last call quickly here. We've got our buddy Tony in Pottstown. Tony, good morning. How are you, buddy? Hey, good morning, guys. How's how's everything going? I see uh, they let you by yourself today. They did. They did. Greg was like, you know what? You and Sean handle it. You, Sean, and Anthony have a blast. Just doesn't get us fired. I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, it's going. It's going great. Tony. Anyways, Tony, uh, Tony, 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 Tony. 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 Put your seatbelt on. There's too much beeping in the background. <laughs> put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Remember, I told you the, uh, the last time I told you I just bought a new truck, so that's that. Oh, there um, you go, <laughs> Atta boy. Go I, was, ahead. I, I was I was watching some uh, uh, the leaf of TikTok, like how they go nuts, right? And I noticed that there is no Spanish people doing that. Like we don't, you know, we don't we don't go and cut the side of our head off uh, the hair. I mean, and go and do crazy stuff. We're too busy working. I it, like. Do you see any Spanish uh, purple hair anywhere? I, you know, I, I got to tell you, it's a great point, Tony, and we got to let you run because we're up against a break, but we always appreciate the call. I, I have not seen any libs of TikTok videos of people going nuts talking about their pronouns other than white individuals. I, I, yeah. I don't I don't see it in uh, any minority community, whether it's black, Asian, uh, Hispanic, Latino. It only seems to be white people that do this. That's a good I never even thought about that. I'm with the left here, Nick. White people suck. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Cut sheet is coming up next. Stay there. It's Kale and Company back after this. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. I- I've told you over the years about Dr. Bentz and all the infrastructure he has there, but one thing that he does that you don't see in too many dental offices, with Dr. Bentz, my dentist, whether it's a routine visit or a comprehensive multifaceted process, he and his team sit down with you. They create a clear plan, explain it step by step. You will see the Bentz difference with that. Contact BentzDentalGroup.com or call 610-272-6949. If you're dr- 
drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800 514 1026. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800 514 1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your social security check. Call 800 514 1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800 514 1026. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go it alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hi, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about my friends from Piazza Premium Automobiles. They continue to grow their luxury collection of brands. And now Piazza is excited to welcome Infinity Ardmore and Maserati of the Main Line, both located right there on Lancaster Avenue. And you're going to receive the very same first-class customer experience that you've come to expect. Find your new or certified pre-owned Infinity, Maserati, or other Piazza luxury brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and more at PiazzaPremiumAutos.com. I'm Philomena, founder of Ken Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams, and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of DIC. Hi, everyone. Matt here from Emmons Roofing and Siding. There are a lot of companies out there that say they do roofing, siding, windows, and doors. Some good, some not so good. Be careful of those that say buy two, get two free. Does that really make sense? Think about it. At Emmons, we don't offer gimmicks, just quality products installed by our experienced craftsmen. We do offer 12 months, same as cash financing, though. That's not a gimmick. That's because we know how tough it is for some people right now to get these projects done. If you need roofing, siding, or windows and doors, call us for a free estimate today at 856 856- 885-6677 or visit us at callemmons.com. Do you have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more that you don't need? Well, don't lapse or surrender your policy. You might be sitting on a gold mine. That's right. You may be able to sell all or part of your life insurance policy to Coventry for cash or a combination of cash and coverage with no future premiums, even a term policy. Call Coventry Direct at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. For over 25 years, we've helped thousands of people sell their policies and we can probably help you too. Call us today at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. Call now. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Getting support from friends online kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. Instead of smoking after I ate, I'd get up and take a walk. I missed having a cigarette in my hand, so I'd hold a pen or a straw, anything. 
Until I knew I wouldn't give in to temptation, I spent more time with my friends who didn't smoke. I went to places that were smoke-free. I didn't stay quit the very first time I tried. I kept on trying, and I learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. I quit. I quit. I quit. We did it. So can you. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. Don't let them silence you. Follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Welcome back in. It is Kale and Company. Good to have all of you aboard here on this Friday morning. Nick Kale, Sean Farish, Anthony Dorenzo, Phil Omquist. As we head till 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210, the phone number. Get us on social media at 1210WPHT. And, of course, you can watch us on YouTube, as many of you love to do, youtube.com slash at 1210WPHT. Uh, Sean, let's get one more phone call here, and then we'll get to a Friday installment of What's on the Cut Sheet. Cherry Hill, New Jersey, we go, and we have Travis with us. Travis, good morning. How you doing, pal? Hey, guys. How's it going? We're doing, doing well. All right. All right. Uh, I don't really know how to fix the bathroom situation other than having individual stalls in every building on the planet. Uh, but for sports, there are no rules for women to play men's sports. When I played Little League football, there were a couple girls that played football, and they were good, and if they were good enough, they played. So if you are a male and trans, so you're a biological male but a trans female, there's nothing keeping you from playing male sports. So if you want to be a female, you're going to play – you're going to excel in those sports and play against men. The women's sports are specifically for women because they can't play in men's sports. So I don't understand why is all this back and forth. Yeah. No, I, look, I, I, yeah, I agree. And But you try to get into the mind of the biological male that is now a trans female and say, like, hey, you're, you're a guy. you got to compete against the guys. Their belief, as warped as it is, is, no, I'm actually a female. I'm in the wrong body. I should be competing against females. And right. I, I don't even buy into the whole hormone thing. And, you know, well, after a year later, they're more fe- like you're a dude. You are still there's still just natural advantages that you have biologically as a male. And again, I'm not saying that, that every female would lose to a guy. I mean, if if Sean Farish, myself, and Anthony Dorenzo got on the floor right now against South Carolina or Iowa women's basketball, they would make us look like fools. Oh, yeah. But for the oh, most yeah. part, men... I can't guard Caitlin Clark. No, no chance. No, she'd break my yeah, ankles. Yeah. I'd be in the hospital. But, like, most <laughs> men are just naturally either taller, heavier, stronger, or faster. It's just the reality of life, so... I'm offended by Travis's bigotry, by the way, I, I, because he made too, too much... He made too much sense, you know, and so that's not allowed. Yep. Um, you are no, you are now a bigot, and by that I mean someone who makes sense. So, uh, congratulations, welcome to the club. Yes, we are always accepting memberships. All <laughs> right, uh, seven forty-seven here on this Friday morning. Let's get to Anthony Dorenzo's "What's on the Cut Sheet." What's on the Cut Sheet? What's on the cut sheet on this Friday is brought to you by Cherry Hill Volvo, where they have incredible offers for spring. Choose Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. Cherry Hill Volvo is where relationships do matter. Judith, Yusuf, and the entire team look forward to meeting you. Check them out today and tell them that 1210 WPHT sent you. So, I know we've been talking a lot about Trump, of course, because, Sean, you are here. Um, He actually, speaking of RFK, Nick... He put out a little video yesterday okay. on RFK and how he's still a radical leftist, but he also compliments him at the same time and says he would vote for him if he was a Democrat. Okay. Listen in. RFK Jr. is, as you know, the most radical left candidate in the race. He's more so than the Green Party. He's more so than even crooked Joe Biden. But he's uh, got some nice things about him. I happen to like him. Unfortunately, he is about the Green News scam because he believes in that, and uh, a lot of people don't. 
Uh, they want to see our country become rich and wealthy and strong and powerful and lots of other things and not waste money doing something that nobody wants and everybody knows doesn't work. I guess that would mean that RFK Jr. is going to be taking away votes from crooked Joe Biden, and he should because he's actually better than Biden. He's much better than Biden. If I were a Democrat, I'd vote for RFK Jr. every single time over Biden because he's, frankly, more in line with Democrats. RFK Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is also a very liberal person, but that's okay. She's got plenty of money from her ex-husband. <laughs> Kennedy is a <laughs> radical left Democrat and always will be, but he's a better man than Joe Biden, that I can tell you. I mean, I agree almost with literally everything Trump just said there. And my stance on RFK has always been, number one, I think he's, he's an interesting cat. Number two, I do think he takes more from Joe than Trump. If he takes one vote from Trump, and I don't know how to quantify it, but if he takes one from Trump, I think he takes at least more than one from Joe Biden. Um, and I, I like the censorship free speech angle because he's been deplatformed. So I'm on board with RFK there. I'm on board with RFK calling out all the vaccines and vaccine hesitancy and things like that. But after that, he is he is very much a lefty and by and large, he is no friend to the right unless he takes more votes away from Joe, which in that case, keep doing you. I don't know. I disagree. I mean, I, I think he's very much like the libertarian outside. I mean, I get it. He has some of those Green New Deal ideas, but I also think the Democrats have totally misconstrued the reality of those things and us actually finding new clean energy and just using that to take advantage of taxpayers and pretty much do insane things and make a joke out of making energy better. Sean, you know, even people like Elon, mm -hmm. you know, like he even right. admits that. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, so I, I have no problem with clean energy, right? Like I have no yeah. problem with trying to clean the air. I, I don't want to breathe in the garbage that's in there. However, don't scare me. You know what I mean? Yep. Into yep. you know, like Long Island's going to be gone. Al Gore, Inconvenient Truth was a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> um, I 100% I, I believe, and I've said this for quite some time, that RFK is going to be taking more votes from Biden than he is from Trump because RFK yep. is a Democrat. You know, what's his last name? It's Kennedy. Everyone understands that Kennedy is a Democrat. You know, it's a, it's a household name in the Democrat Party, with the exception of, you know, John Kennedy in uh, <laughs> in, in, in the Senate. We talked about, uh, you know, a, a little while ago. Mm -hmm. I think RFK, you know, listen, like you said, he's got he's got uh, the right stance on free speech. He's got the right stance on medical freedom for mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Um, but he's uh, he's he's big into abortion. Very big. Mm -hmm. He's big into grabbing guns. Um, and he's big into the climate hoax. And I, I would I would never vote for RFK. I don't vote for Democrats. However, I encourage many, many, many Democrats to vote for RFK by all means, because if RFK pulls 15 yep. percent yep. and yep. you, know, you want to say two percent of that's from Trump, the rest of it's from Biden. There you go. I, if you're a Democrat and I tell RFK, come on into waters fine. And if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you have to write him in, if he's on your ballot, go ahead, vote for him. Do it. I mean, if you now there's a lot of ways in which I think Joe Biden could lose this election. He could flat out lose because of the border. He could flat out lose yeah. because of the economy. Uh, mm -hmm. He could lose for a variety of reasons. But I don't think there would be a more poetic justice than him losing because of the RFK Jr. factor, denying him it. Secret Service protection, not willing to allow. To, basically, you created the RFK Jr. monster by making him run as third party independent. So oh, yeah. this would be beautiful. Yeah, because they refuse to have a primary. So now this is what they're dealing with and they can't stand it. Yep. And Michigan is approaching he's approaching twenty percent in a state like Michigan. Uh -huh. Especially with Biden blundering everything when it comes to like Israel and Palestine yeah. in a state like that. Yep. So I, I you know I, it is interesting. I don't agree with any politician full time, but I appreciate what RFK does because this is what we need to do to put pressure on both sides of government. Mm -hmm. um, and con continuing on there, uh, this will be cut five, Phil. Uh, not too long ago, I think it was last week, we played the clip where RFK was pretty much just sitting down with CNN and saying, you could make the argument that Joe Biden is more dangerous for democracy than a Donald Trump because of his free speech issues he's had with Biden. Uh, he goes on to explain that here. This is cut five, Phil. Go ahead. She asked me, does, do I really, you know, don't I think Trump is very dangerous for the Republic? And I said to her, I can make an argument mm -hmm. that President Biden is even more dangerous to the Republic. And she had this kind of astonished look, which, you know, her brain 
stopped working. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I said, you know, the reason for that, that I would say that is because President Biden did something no other president in history. And he'd been, a court has found that. No. A court has no, there's no court that's found that President Trump um, tried to uh, steal the election or tried to derail the election uh, or tried to um, start an insurrection. There may be plenty of evidence that he did that. There's no court that's found that. Mm -hmm. But there's a, a courts that have found that President Biden was censoring his opponents. Mm -hmm. And not just me, though, although he did censor me, and I did win that suit, so it's not me making it up. Yeah. And by the way, they were censoring me not because I was promoting misinformation. Um, the, the Facebook people are saying, well, actually, what he's saying is, is factually correct. So they had to come up with a new word to describe my post. And the word is mal. It's not misinformation or disinformation. It's malinformation, mm -hmm. which are, is information that is factually correct, but it's nevertheless inconvenient for the government. It's a remarkable world that we live in, Sean. And he's talking there about how trying to, you know, these people, their brains shut off. It's like the classic case I always bring up is my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law can't stand <laughs> Donald Trump. And as soon as you mention Trump, her brain shuts off. She gets her news from Facebook and <laughs> CNN. It's like Trump was never charged with insurrection, much less convicted of insurrection. Uh, they have attempted to take him off of ballots. These are the threats to democracy. Yet if I were to tell my mother-in-law, hey, did you know that courts actually found the Biden administration guilty of censorship and deplatforming what they did to RFK. And like they don't even they're not even aware of stuff that is factually true because all they hear is Trump. They hear insurrection. They hear buzzwords and they get caught up in feelings. And these are the people that we're up against. These are the people that would rather pay more 49% uh, more for a, a carton of eggs if it means no mean tweets. That's yeah. the world we live in now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I, you, know, you talk about Biden as a threat to democracy. They love to throw the term dictator around about Donald Trump. There's a story in the Post Millennial yesterday uh, about how USA Today, you know, in a, in a rare, rare occurrence of honesty from that outlet, covered Donald Trump's stance on abortion, how it's a state issue fairly. And they said it's, you know, the will of the people. And the Biden regime, on a, on a call with the press, actually scolded the media mm -hmm. for reporting accurately about what Donald Trump said about abortion. So let me ask you this. So I can guarantee that the same types of conversations have happened with other heads of state that we would consider dictators. Winnie the Pooh in China, I call him Winnie the Pooh. That's President Xi. It's Winnie the Pooh. He looks like Winnie the Pooh. It's incredible. <laughs> you know, you look at him, Putin. I got along very well with him too. He's a tremendous guy, plays with the nesting dolls. Putin, I guarantee you, his people on the phone with RT mm -hmm. would have scolded them the exact same way the Biden regime scolded USA Today. How dare you cover that honestly? You have to run cover for us. They literally said to the media, we can't let Trump off the hook here or we can't give him a free pass. That's what they said to the media. He's directing the media and crafting their headlines. This is not free, fair, or honest. Nope. This is a media that's slave, enslaved to Joe Biden. It's He's the dictator. Media. You're exactly yeah, right. State run. And this is And this is not the first time, nor will it no. be the last time that these stealth edits occur where the USA Today, the New York Times, the Washington Post, you go on down the list of all these left-wing publications that get strong-armed by the Biden administration. Not to even, we haven't even mentioned what they do with social media, but obviously with mainstream media as well. They just carry this administration's water, and then they'll sit there and say, well, no, we're actually fair and balanced. We cover the Biden administration fairly. We've had a couple of op-eds that say Joe's in over his head and he's mentally out of it. By and large, the only time they come to that realization is when it slaps them right upside yep. the head and there's no way to pivot around it and slant the coverage in a certain direction this, when it becomes yeah, undeniable. The, the, the only reason they did that, too, back like after that disastrous press conference where clearly he wasn't on drugs, right? He was, you know, he thought Egypt and Mexico were bordering each other. And that was before, you know, Michelle Obama said she wasn't running for president. They were trying so hard 
to get Joe Biden out. They set him up. They were relying on Republicans to push hard for that 25th Amendment. It didn't work. Then Axelrod and Michelle Obama basically said, guys, we're not doing it. Now, all of a sudden, they're back to circling the wagons around Joe and say, yeah, yeah, he's vibrant and young. Go, Come on, please. Nobody believes that. Exactly. Well, and this to me is exactly why the TikTok ban is a complete joke in my eyes, because look at what yep. our government has done to our own American social media platforms. And they're essentially trying to make them the mainstream media outlets that we all complain about. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sick and tired of, oh, our companies here are fine, but TikTok, no. I, I do not trust. Do I trust China? No. I China. don't trust our own government more than I don't trust China. By the honestly. way, speak, China. speaking of TikTok and uh, the ban, did Rand Paul and Dom get into <laughs> yes. it? Because I know they're yeah, on a little different bit. pages over a there. A little bit. And I I, uh, I told Rand, I was like, oh, don't worry. There's one person here that has logic when it comes to TikTok. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming that's the only thing they disagreed on last night. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Okay. I mean, you know, they went back and forth a little bit. Um, right. But speaking of abortion, um, and of course, as we're talking about this right now, actually live on CNN, they're freaking out because uh, Kamala Harris, she's going to be uh, visiting Arizona with the complete chaos that has gone yeah. on there with the absolute insanity with abortion and Trump even kind of calling them out. Carrie Lake even saying she'll try to change it if she has the chance to. Um, but moving on, CNN and Jake Tapper actually had Chris Sununu on and he alluded to uh, something that I don't know if any of us really agree with. Uh, this is cut 14. Phil, go ahead. Democrats are surely hoping that um, abortion rights is a driver when it comes to those swing voters. And we've seen uh, the issue bring out uh, majorities supporting abortion rights in one way or another in not only places like California, but places like Kentucky and Montana and Kansas and Ohio. Um, this week, uh, Trump started the week saying that abortion should be left to the states. Then he criticized Arizona and Florida for their positions, which are abortion bans, essentially, uh, in Arizona, a six-week ban in Florida. Do you understand what Donald Trump's position is on this yeah. issue, and how, and how fearful are you about this issue hurting Republicans uh, in November? You have some big races in New Hampshire that you want Republicans yeah. to well, win. Well, I'll say this. I, I, I think it, it actually could be a bigger problem for Democrats. I really do. And, and, and I actually agree with the, the former president's position. It is now a state's issue. I mean, I, I wanted Roe v. Wade upheld and all of that. It wasn't. Now it's a state's issue. And I think what the former president is saying, hey, we don't agree with what's going on in, in Arizona. Let this, the voters of Arizona are going to have the opportunity to fix it. The voters in Florida, the voters of Texas, whatever your state is, that's where there's a lot of accountability in the system. The voters can change the legislature, have ballot initiatives, whatever it might be. And that's, that's, our, that's our new reality going forward. Now, on the other side, when you, what Biden is going to have to defend, now he has to deal with the national question. What Trump is saying is, I'm not even going to talk about a, a national ban and national questions. Hey, Joe Biden, is nine months okay? Is the day up until till birth okay to have an abortion? Now Biden has to answer that if he wants it to be a national issue. I think that's the strategy here. We'll see how it pans out. I don't think this is going to be a driver as big of an issue. And it was really the issue of 2022. It's not going to be as big of an issue because it's more of a state's issue. And there's been problems here and there. But again, I think the voters are going to have the opportunity to fix a lot of that. I think there's maybe a dozen states or so with ballot yeah. issues on abortion, but not all 50. Right. New Hampshire, we, we have a lot similar to Massachusetts and but New York. What, what is this? What is this nine month abortion thing? I, I've never heard of anyone getting an abortion like one day before they're due or or uh, Republicans talk about this. But all that's the, time. the question that will be asked. Right. If but you it want never ha I've never heard of it happening. Right. But I, I'm just saying so that in, in, let's say they got, you know, they were actually to get on a bait stage. Trump will say, look, I'm leaving it to the states. Hey, Joe Biden, how many weeks is good enough for you? And now Biden, whatever that number is, he's going to have to figure out an answer. for. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was uh, Chris Sununu with Jake Tapper on CNN. Is it, I, we've started this show in October of 2022. Yep. Uh, I would say that this is the most interesting week we have had uh, when we've talked about abortion. I don't think we've talked about abortion in one week as much as we have this week. Yeah. And it's been and very fascinating because he's right. There's you got three states right now where abortion will be on the ballot. New York, Maryland, Florida. I think eight or nine others uh, in the mix as well. So you're probably going to have about 11 or 12 of the 50 states. But Sean, I thought this was interesting. We talked a lot about this this week um, with everything that has been kind of centered around Trump coming out with the position that he has. And I've seen mixed, uh, really a mixed bag of reactions. There have been pro-lifers that are upset with Trump. There are pro-lifers that said, 
I disagree with Trump, but we're still going to rally behind our guy. And then, of course, you have the Republicans out there that are pro-choice, and they've had their thoughts as well. To me, the one thing I would say with this 1864 Arizona issue with this ban, if you're Carrie Lake, uh, I think you're probably not enthused with what happened. I just said like a week ago that I thought Arizona was a lock for Donald Trump based on Arizona being a border state. Now with this abortion issue, I don't know that it's a lock. I still hope it is. Uh, but your thoughts on a busy week with abortion? Well, here's the deal with this, right? I, I, I have a problem with, uh, with, with Jake Tapper, first of all, because this is probably one of the most ignorant people, I think, in the mainstream media. This is a guy after October 7th came out, oh, I am shocked to see all this anti-Semitism on the left. Like he didn't pay attention to Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and AOC for the last four years. Right. I mean, this is a guy who has absolutely no clue. But on abortion as a whole, and this is what happened after Roe was overturned, it became a state issue. That's it, right? So if you are running for federal office, it is by by Supreme Court's ruling, not in your hands. So for Donald Trump to come out and say, listen, it's a state issue now. I, I understand the pro-lifers want him to be like, I want to ban it all, but he can't. Mm -hmm. He's be by the rule of the Supreme Court, he can't ban abortion. It's not a federal issue, and it never was, right? I, I know by Roe versus Wade, it technically was for a while. We all wanted Roe overturned so that federally it was no longer a quote-unquote protected right. So now it's no longer federally a protected right. If a pro-lifer has an issue with Donald Trump's stance, Donald Trump can't fix all of your problems, and he certainly can't federally fix abortion when the Supreme Court took that right away from the federal government. There is more power in the hands of the people right now than before when Roe versus Wade was overturned. If you're a pro-lifer like me who doesn't want to see abortion or wants to reduce the frequency of abortion, get with your friends and change it at the state level where you have the power. Thank Don't you. rely on Donald Trump or the federal government yep. to sit there and yep. solve all of your problems. Yep. Because the minute you start to rely on the government, they're not going to solve your problems. They're going to make your problems worse. Now you have Jake Tapper in that clip say, oh, I've never heard of this nine-month thing. <laughs> Ralph Northam, Virginia, said the baby's born. We'll revive it if necessary. If, if necessary, it's born. And then we'll have a discussion. No, no, there is no discussion. Let's have a discussion about you, Ralph Northam. Should we have a discussion about how people feel about stopping your heartbeat? No, of course we shouldn't do that. I mean, what do you mean you've never heard of this before? And yep. this is the most ignorant guy I have ever saw. Oh, I'm shocked to see this anti-Semitism on the left. The left hates Jews and they've hated Jews for a very long time. It, look at the New York Times anti-Semitic reg. Folks, it is, I, I, the abortion thing is so crazy because it's a state issue, which means the people have the power. So use the power that you've been given. You Stop go. relying on somebody else. Exactly. Thank you so much, Sean. I am so sick and tired. We have come so far from when we came here in the 1800s where we left and we wanted to be our own kings and we wanted to be our own rulers and we wanted yep. to make our own laws for our own communities. And we have come so far in 2024 now. We're so used to and so complacent to the federal federal government, uh, Big Daddy telling us what to do. You know, uh, Joe, Joe, where is that cut we always have? Uh, <laughs> oh, Daddy owes you? Daddy owes you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy time. owes you. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's talking Daddy to kids about ice cream. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's, yeah, so we all look to the big boy, the big daddy of government. And, oh, can we please have abortion rights or can we not? Shut up. I'm so sick and tired of it. We are our own kings. We rule ourselves. This is between you and your doctor. Make these things, create a grassroots movement. And if we do that, we will then elect better people on a local level. And eventually, hopefully, those people rise to the top instead of this top-down bull crap we see are every you day. Are saying elections have consequences? Yes, I do. Out. Yes, the hell yeah. you say? God forbid they bigot. do. Bigot. Another bigot because he's using common sense. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but I, I know we, we veered off a bit from OJ, but I wanted to lighten it up a little bit after screaming at you guys about abortion. Uh, 23, this will be here, <laughs> Phil. Um, Norm MacDonald oh. spoke out about oh. OJ at the ESPYs back in the day. This was in the 90s. So good. And actually, Phil, I don't think you have the clip. I didn't put it in there, but I pulled this later. But listen in. This is, uh, this is Norm MacDonald in, in his uh, golden era. Listen in. And there's Charles Woodson. How about that? I want a season he had. Great, man. He, he 
became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> <laughs> the the reactions to that were so great. Uh, I think you had Ken Griffey Jr. was sitting next to Charles Woodson at the time, and he was like, "Oh man, did Norman just Donald, like hold in their did face? Did he really like, just yeah, yeah. go there? This is back when you know comedy was great, and you could offend people, and you know you yeah. get people ticked off and not get canceled." Um, I I was too young to watch Norm Macdonald when he was hosting Weekend Update on SNL in the mid '90s, but when I started getting into SNL in early college days, like 2002, I'd go back and I'd see those reruns from seven years before. They were so good. I mean, the amount of content. This is like actually you know when SNL was funny with yep. Sandler and Rock and Spade and Farrell, Farley, the whole bit. Like I mean the. For almost a year and a half, SNL just did mock bit after mock bit, spoof yep. bit after yep. spoof bit on OJ. Do you guys remember when Mike Myers was dressed up as Judge Lance Ito? I used to have the old SNL like DVD sets, and oh my god, I'd watch the Norm seasons. I loved him every I think, single. I think time. Norm McDonald just died. Uh, yeah, he did. I, I think he did. did like two years ago, maybe a little less. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even some of the best uh, bits on that SNL back then with Farrell and all those was uh, the Celebrity Jeopardy bits. Remember oh, those? Yes. Oh, those yes. were great. Bert, the Trebek. Connery, yeah. your mother yeah. Trebek. Those were my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember Burt Reynolds, uh, uh, Norm Macdonald, Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funny hat and the yeah, podium. Yeah, yeah, the huge hat. It was so Dude, funny. I'm telling you. If you should, and and I know they probably would never hire you because of your politics. That's why they're a disgrace. But like, you should send your Trump bit to SNL. Like, send it to uh, Lauren Michaels. Listen. No, there's a no. There's a condition here. Okay. All right, I've already said this publicly. This is why they're not going to go near. First of all, I'm not going to let the fake news make money off of me. That's not going to happen. We did that once with the Apprentice. It's never going to happen. I said the only condition, and I've had, and I've said this now. I'm saying it on the radio, so it's fine. You know, and it Comcast, Philadelphia, they're listening. So we have all right. If they ever came and said, "Do Trump for us," I would say absolutely. But they're going to want me to rag on them and clown on them. So I'd play along, play along, play along until we went live. And then I would just crap all over the left. And oh, it would just make history. Oh, so you, you would flip the script and get people oh, all to be, off. Wait, this was uh, what we had planned? Totally. And then I would say, well, too, <laughs> too bad it's live. Then you're all fired. You're all terrible people. This is the fake news. This is what's happening. We need you a know, Trump we, celebrity would, Jeopardy. That's what it needs. Oh, to be. <laughs> it would be so good. It would be so the, fun. The guy they so have fun. doing it now is terrible. And yeah, he doesn't even look like him. He doesn't yeah. sound yeah. like him. Now, maybe yeah. it would be. I don't look be, like him either, though. Right. I look like that, that, Cooper that would be, he was a dollar store. That would be the tough thing, getting. But I, I would think with the right amount of makeup and obviously the wig, you could pull that off. Dude, you yeah. would be a home run at that They spot. did a pretty good job when Shane Gillis was on. They did a pretty good job with makeup and like a bodysuit of making him like have the figure and uh, the hair of it. Gillis uh -huh. is good, too. He's he's genuinely funny, too. He's Shane hilarious. Gillis. Like He's actually yeah. hilarious. He's yep. a cool dude. Yep. He's my favorite comedian, I think, right now. Great. Um, but also, we're, we're going to go to cut one here, Phil. Um, I know we talked a lot this morning about the Planet Fitness story and transgender people in general and how that issue affects the right and the left. Um, Vivek was on with Greg Gutfeld, specifically spoke about Leah Thomas and women's sports. Uh, this is cut one, Phil. Go. And on the trans piece, I just want to think about this for a second, Greg. Mm -hmm. Let's say you started claiming to be black. Mm -hmm. Painted your face black. Mm -hmm. Started wearing dreadlocks. Yeah. Claimed to be a diverse late night addition to late night television, <laughs> right? A lot of black people would find that offensive. Whoopi Goldberg would be on The View tomorrow morning calling you a racist. Yeah. It wouldn't and go for that once, far. Yeah. <laughs> for once, she would have a point. You know? and, and, and the reason is it's offensive. And I think it's equally offensive when Leah Thomas puts on some lipstick and has a boob job and claims to be a woman when a bunch of women competing in swimming and competing in athletics find that offensive as well. So I say enough is enough. If you have two X chromosomes, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. If you have an X and a Y, you're a man, period. Mm -hmm. And if you have a different argument for the other side, I'm open to hearing it. But I haven't heard a good one yet. And yeah. you know they used to say the sex of the person you're attracted to is hardwired on the day you're born? Well, now people say your own biological sex is totally fluid over your life. It doesn't make sense, and we just got to be done with the nonsense. I think it's well said by Vivek, and I think Jennifer Lewis would add this to the conversation. I know what men 
mental illness looks like. <laughs> exactly right. I, I mean, it is. There's no doubt in my mind. It's a mental health crisis. Um, and at the end of the day, if you're religious, God created man and woman. If you're science and you're not, maybe not a religious person, there's biology, and there was two genders for a bazillion years. There was male and there was female. You don't get to create six, eight, 10, 12 different genders and have a drop down box when you fill out an application on an iPad these days or to fill out a gender in your doctor's office or for whatever type of uh, employment you might be seeking and get to pick and choose. Like, no, there's two. You come out in mommy's womb and that's what you are, right? There's a couple of things you can't deal with. You can't uh, change in this lifetime. You can change your friends. You can change who you hang out with, your inner circle, what you subscribe to, what you watch, what you consume, eat, or drink. Can't change your family, and you can't change your gender. And I'll no. take, I'll die on that hill. No, and I, and I think Vivek actually he he speaks you know he speaks very well, and I, I think that's why he scares a lot of people. I actually like him. I, I like a lot of what he has to say. I think he was a a very interesting candidate because of the the folks that he was able to speak to. He actually had uh, an encounter in Iowa. Um, with like a, a an LGBTQ protester yeah. who like started screaming and he he calmly diffused her and then was like, look, there shouldn't be, you know, they they agreed on something and he high fived. And it was actually like it was interesting to watch that because I have never, I have not seen that happen. It's so hyper polarized. Like I had not seen that happen, right? You know, ever you know, it, late, lately. You know, I've, we've seen it in the past, but not lately. I think he's, I, I think he's got a bright future, man. I, I, I don't know. He's like very polarizing for a lot of people. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, you can't trust him because he was in pharma or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I just, when a guy comes out there, they're like, oh, he's plagiarizing from Obama, and he did lift a few lines, and I didn't love that. Right. But like, I, I, I missed the part where. Obama said he wanted to fire 75% of the administrative state. I must have slept through that part of his uh, presidency. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think Vivek in the future, he's got a bright future. Yeah. I, I like him. I but, really do. And but, I think he's got a cool personality too. He seems like some guy you yeah, want to kick back yeah. and have a beer with. Yeah, he's not one of these uncomfortably uh, super smart guys where it's like you get around him and it's just awkward. He's totally no. personable despite yeah. being, you know, a billionaire, businesses, law, medicine. And the guy's not even 40 years old. I don't know how you accomplish that in 39 years or 38 yeah, no. years. He somehow did it. But let me ask you this because you brought up Vivek for a moment. I made the case, uh, you know, Trump excluded for the primary. When we talked about Nikki Haley, DeSantis, Christie, Ramaswamy, Scott, on down the list of all of the contenders uh, for the Republican nomination. Even though Nikki got the furthest, and even though DeSantis I thought was maybe the biggest disappointment because I'm a DeSantis guy, I would say going into the primary and then coming out of the primary, nobody had their arrow and their stock ascending more than Vivek Ramaswamy of all the people we saw and heard from. Would you agree with that? 100%. I think Vivek, he made a splash. And I think, you know, look, if you if you had him in a moment off the record, no cameras, no phones, nothing recorded, that's why he did that. Because I think he wanted to get his name out there and, you know, potentially plant the seeds for for future presidential runs or political aspirations. And I think he did really well. When you go on the debate stage, and you call out Ronna McDaniel oh, sitting yeah. in the first row. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to – it was just – it was it was so good that a friend of mine wrote a song called Damn It, Ronna and used that clip <laughs> dressed up like Vivek Ramaswamy in a 7-Eleven. And he, and he like oh. – I mean, it was the funniest thing in the world. And, and, and Vivek's people saw it and thought it was great because he's got a sense of humor. This guy, I think, going in – uh, you know, going into the primary, I was kind of like, who is he? I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I like DeSantis. I think he's a great governor. You know, Trump excluded. I, I think Vivek would have been my number two. I got to be honest, because he's an outsider. He's not in yep. the system. Yep. And and I, I just I really I was really impressed. And I'm excited to see what he does in the future. Yep. I'll just say with this clip, I understand what he's saying and his analogy does make sense. But at the same time, I just feel like we should, as the Republican Party, if they want to like not be framed as bigots, I don't think you could just say you're either a man or a woman. If you're an adult and you want to be a gender that you're not, I feel like we should be okay with that as oh, a party. Yeah. I, and yeah. I am. I look, by all means, you, you're an adult. You knock yourself out. I yeah. mean, right. you yeah. know, uh, just just if I disagree with the premise of what you claim to be, just don't come after me because... I'm not misgendering you personally. I think you're misgendering yourself. Well, I get offended. I just, I'm not playing along. I get offended when I accidentally misgender. Like I was at a restaurant 
and I said, oh, thanks, man, to someone. And they were like, oh, I'm not. That's I'm not say ma'am next or something. Right. And I looked, I like laughed. I thought they were kidding, but I totally misgendered them. But at the same time, something like that, I'm not trying to misgender you. I well, thought you were a guy. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I'm and sorry. I've, and I've had moments where I've messed up. Uh, yep. I'll give you, yep. I, I've mentioned this story, I think once or twice on the air, but it definitely wasn't when Sean was with us. So I'll, I'll tell the story again. So my, my in-laws, they own a concession and catering business and they had a guy that worked for them. Uh, his name was Clyde, very good handyman. I mean, we're talking about lifting up grills and fryers and they go to these big music festivals. They set up their, their concessions in these big tents. Um, and, they, and he's an unbelievable handyman, great at laborer, uh, a great laborer, a hard worker. And then he started to go through the the transition process. Now he hasn't had any work done, but he he now he now wears women's clothes and he's got like the padded bra on. So this is a couple of years ago as he's going through this process, and I'm going into uh, my in laws' driveway. I get out of my car and he's working on some of the fryers and fixing something with you know it's beyond my comprehension. I can't put, I can't assemble anything, and I walk past him and I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? And, and I'm, it's like he's kind of in, like, the state of being a female. And I go into the bathroom, like, ah, oh, I wonder if he took offense to that. Like, I Well, said, I call girls dude, too. Like, that's the thing. Like, well, I don't on the, purpose, well, but I've done it. It's because you're brain dead. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I had a moment where, like, I hope he didn't take offense to that. I'm just so used to seeing him in his prior state where he was a guy and wore normal. Now he's got spandex on and <laughs> just padded chest, and I'm just like. All right, let me just make sure uh, I get, let me make sure I just get this right here because I don't want to tick the guy. He's a great dude, whatever. So, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, well, moving on, I wanted to get to this. This is an, an amazing clip. Um, this shows why the Republicans constantly fight with each other. This is the perfect example. Okay. Uh, former Speaker McCarthy uh, spoke out about some allegations and some people that are, uh, you know, that quote, quote unquote maybe colluded against him. This is cut for Phil. Go ahead. So was it this? You made a lot of concessions in oh, the negotiations. Oh, oh, I did. Okay, okay. okay. Is that Let's the get right? to the bottom of that. Right? That, no, no, that no, no, is no, no, such no. a misnomer right. in life. Let me give you the truth about that now. <laughs> and I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person, a member of Congress, wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17-year-old. An ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker, and that's illegal, and I'm not going to get in the middle. Did he do it or not? I don't know. But in ethics is looking at it. There's other people in jail because of it. And he wanted me to influence it. And you know what? So then they come out and they say, because I kept government open, I'd do it all over again. We're not going to pay our troops? No, I'm going to pay my troops. You can't do the job? OK. When it comes to the concession, the motion to vacate about one person being able to make that motion, how long has that been in the rules? Forever. The only time it was changed is when Pelosi became speaker the second time. And she put the power with the minority leader. I think it's wrong. I think you could let, let, let them govern. Now it takes 218 to have the rule package. There's nothing I can do there. But I had five people who never voted for me anyways in the process. I had eight at the end that did the other. But everybody had to live by it. I lived by it. I think today if you went back to the people that voted, they think that was a smart vote. I don't think so. I had the choice of having that vote of motion to vacate where you just put the cards in and walk away. No, I made everybody stand up. Because I think historically, it'll be viewed as a very bad thing that happened to our Congress. Do you think it happens again? I mean, there's now no. talk that it could happen to this speaker. No. Two things. The Dems will never let it happen. The interesting part is, you want another, another, want another inside story? Oh, God. Not this crowd. So. So I knew I needed to win the majority by 20 votes or I'd have a problem. So I knew on election night I had a problem. But I had tried for speaker before and I, I made a bad interview and I had to pull out. But as leader I had never lost the race. I helped us win a majority. I expanded that. I thought I was best prepared. All right, there's Kevin McCarthy from C-SPAN. And by the way, he was referring to Matt Gates in the beginning when he was talking about yep. the stuff early on. I don't know about you, Sean, but I, I'm glad McCarthy is gone. I know he's kind of been back in the news a little bit, making headlines, making appearances. Um, and, but yeah, I tell you what, uh, Mike Johnson is under the, the spotlight again. So we again, we continue to have this dif dysfunction right now within the Republican Party. But what, what did you make of that right there?
Well, there's only so much you can do with a slim majority for McCarthy and Mike Johnson, but Johnson's really let me down because yep. this Pfizer renewal that he's behind the Ukraine funding, he said that was going to be a, you know, something that we weren't going to do until we took care of some other things. And that seems to not be the case. So, you know, Johnson's let me down too, but I think he wants to, you know, I think they're all going to let us down to be honest, except for guys like Rand Paul, right. They'll all let you down at some point. Yep. McCarthy though was really slick and smarmy and slimy in that clip because he said, first he said that Matt Gates slept with a 17 year old and then he comes out. Well, did he do it? Did he not do it? I don't really know. You know, kind of, circling back around and covering his backside to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, that he didn't say anything, you know, off the, that, that was a little defamatory or slanderous. Right. Yep. I, look, the guy's a slime ball. Um, I'm, I'm happy. He's not the speaker resigning the way he did was a slimy move. It was stupid. It, it kickstarted, you know, the Ken box and the Gallagher's and this whole thing going on. Um, but I'm happy he's not the speaker and, and I'm happy he's not going to be in Congress, you know, any longer. I just wish he would have, you know, kept, kept his butt in the seat for the next couple months to, you know, uh, so that the majority wasn't hanging in the balance. Now, Lauren Boebert has this disease. Yeah, she might I saw be, that. You know, this yeah. is a whole thing that, you know, McCarthy could have helped stop, but uh, he's, he's just a slimy guy. He speaks very, you know, you hear him. He's nice, soft spoken guy. You want to mm -hmm. trust him, but at the end of the day, you can't trust yeah, this I guy. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I just like, I love seeing the infighting and I, now I'm just waiting for a George Santos clip to come out with a similar, <laughs> similar I love him so revolutionary. much. Revolutionary. He was a revolutionary. He's the man. Great guy. Great I need, guy. I need Battle George Saratoga. Santos. I need him to Battle run again. Saratoga. Battle of Saratoga. He crossed Valley Forge with George Washington. They had the same name. Great guy. <laughs> Mr. President, is George Santos a candidate for your VP choice? Absolutely not. We never put a drag queen from Brazil <laughs> as my vice president. I never do that. Okay. We'll never do that. <laughs> Oh, my God. So mo moving on, I, I know we've talked about the trends on social media uh, with people getting punched, women specifically targeted big cities, whether it's New York, L.A., even there, there have been some reports of that here in Philadelphia. Um, this is Fox 11 speaking out with uh, residents in some of the neighborhoods in Los Angeles as a few women were violently assaulted in Venice, which is normally a, a nice area. Uh, this is Fox 11 reporting. This is cut eight, Phil. Go ahead. Aftermath of a brutal attack on a woman out walking by the canals in Venice. It happened Saturday night at 10.30 as the victim walked on the path by the canal behind Strong's Drive. The suspect coming up behind her with a glass bottle, smashing it over her head, knocking her unconscious. What happened next? The LAPD won't confirm the details, but what we know is that it was violent violating. It happened right behind Byla Khan's home. Well, it makes me feel very sad for the women that were attacked. And this was just one of two women attacked Saturday night in the span of one hour and by the same suspect, according to the LAPD. Around 11.30, another woman out walking nearby in the area of Sherman Canal was also attacked, hit in the head from behind. With a rise in crime reported in Venice, those who live here are worried. It's just heartbreaking. I, I have spoken to the officers in the neighborhood and they are they're doing the best they can but something needs to happen with the crime you know if the da did his job and prosecuted criminals and didn't let him out you know uh we'd be a lot safer on the streets and i and i think that you know criminals just need to be prosecuted and that's that's a, that's a problem the LAPD putting out a very generic description of the suspect, not much to go on, but they are warning women to be extra careful, extra vigilant while walking by the canals. Someone in the neighborhood is also warning women to be careful. Baila Khan is doing just that. Well, right now I may not walk at night. All right, so there you go. That's from Los Angeles. I opened up the uh, show this week on Monday, Sean, with a big take on uh, the headline being the experiment is over. I'm done with DEI, and I'm done with defund the police. And then all this week we've seen uh, stories about, oh, well, you know, subway crime has never been lower in New York City. No, the New York Post quickly corrects that narrative from Eric Adams. It's the highest it's been since 2006. The Washington Examiner had a great story about how the FBI is giving out bad data to the media and the cities uh, because we are seeing uh, crime on the rise again. And I I'm just I'm done with the empowerment and the emboldening of the criminal. I want these police officers to have full authority to arrest and 
you know what? I want district attorneys that want to put the fear of God in the criminals, right? Like, I want law and order. You heard Trump when he was at Jonathan Diller's wake last week talking about how we have to get back to law and order. So progressives, your little funhouse experiment at the expense of the safety and security of everyday good citizens, to me, is about to come to an end. I've had it with it. Social workers, oh, we got to do social workers for the criminals. That'll disarm a guy with the gun. No, it won't. You'll just, the social worker will die. That's what's going to happen. They're not going to, they're not going to pay attention to that. This, uh, this bigoted segment about law and order is, is completely offensive. It's too much common sense for me. I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a simple concept. And this is one of the pain points that I believe is going to continue. Cause as you said, there are district attorneys, DAs who don't care. They're not enforcing the law. So when you don't hold criminals accountable, you're essentially encouraging more crime, right? You're, mm-hmm. you're basically saying, no, you can go ahead and shoplift. You can go ahead and punch women in the side of the head. You can play the knockout game. You can push people in front of trains. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. You're not going to be held accountable. So there's no deterrent. There's no fear of consequences. It is, this is how we devolve into chaos. This is the inmates running the asylum. This is you know, it's it's unsafe in cities like New York and 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 Philly and San Francisco and Los Angeles and, and and Detroit and Atlanta. You know, you're seeing it happen. It's on the rise everywhere because criminals are just not being held accountable because accountability is racist or it's bigoted or it's not fair or it's in some way, shape, or form not equitable or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you 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 throw it away and now people have free reign to do whatever the hell they want. Yep. That's why people are getting hurt. It's it that that's all it's about. I want the days of law and order back. Broken windows policing. The guy who jumped the turnstile on the subway is probably the guy that's going to commit a crime on the subway. Stop him before he gets on the train. Put him in jail. You know, fine him. Where's the deterrent? It's not there. And that's why you're seeing this madness. I got to tell you too because I, you know, one of my goals in life when I was younger was I wanted to go to law school and either be a defense attorney or a prosecutor and probably go back and forth probably we start out as a DA and then then go into private practice or something like that. And one of the things I just loved as a district attorney, as somebody that was a criminal justice major, was enforcing the laws on the books, hitting people with mandatory minimums. You have all these different theories in the criminal justice system of how you uh, is rehabilitation the right way, is retribution, is counseling. To me, it was always incapacitation because you can't commit a crime if you're surrounded by cinder block walls and metal grates uh, yep. and metal bars. And this, I, I don't even know what my life would be like today at 40 if I would have went down that path and finished and I was a district attorney, I don't know, in Philadelphia or any blue city. How do you, if, if you have a, a passion and a zest for justice, how do you operate as a DA in these progressive cities these days where you're mitigating, you're reducing crimes, you're dropping them from felonies to misdemeanors or taking them from misdemeanors to just tossing the case in general. If that's the case, uh, you might as well just become a defense attorney because that's what a lot of these these district yep. attorneys yep. in big blue cities are now. Yeah, they don't, they don't understand how government works. What a shock. And then yep. they get elected. Um, but we'll, we'll wrap up with this cut. Uh, this will be cut nine, Phil. CNBC has been reporting on inflation, the consumer price index, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they talk about pretty much everything since 2020 when Biden was election, and especially in the past year where inflation is up three and a half percent. This is cut nine, Phil. Go. Than expected, 3.5. This is three tenths, three tenths hotter than we looked at in the rearview mirror, 3.2. To find a bigger number than 3.5, you're going back to May of last year when it was, oh, I, excuse me, I am wrong, September of last year when it was 3.7. And finally, what many would consider the most important number, uh, year over year, CPI core. 3.8, hotter than expected, equals the rear view mirror. To, to find a higher number, January was 3.9. And what's the lowest it's been of late? Well, 3.8, our last look and what we have today, actually is the lowest since 3.0 in April of 21. The issue is it's still running hot. I think, Sean, at the end of the day, everything this administration has tried to tell us about the economy is a fabrication, if not a flat out lie. You can you can point to the stock market and, and that's maybe one indicator. But like when they well, look at all the jobs we've added and then you break it down. It's like they're all part time jobs. Part-time. Right. Yeah. And some of them yeah. were jobs that were removed during the pandemic. Yeah, I'm old enough. I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember when inflation was temporary. Remember that? It's mm-hmm. temporary. It's transitory. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It, and, and 
uh, as far as much as the they want to gaslight and say this whole you know well prices are down or inflation is slowing down. Like I said, I, I went to the supermarket the other day. I could I could firsthand breaking news. Prices are not down. Okay, I don't need CNBC to tell me that. I go to the supermarket all the time. I, I buy my food. I was doing this. I was talking about this on on Rumble the other day. You know, beef roasts. I love my. I love myself roast oh. beef. It's tremendous. We love it. It's, it does a fantastic job. We do a great job. You know, eleven point two percent year over year. Mm -hmm. it, it that it's you can't eat. Yep. Uh, you know, it's it it's it's crazy. You have to buy crap instead of buying you know potentially good stuff. It, it's uh. It's happening all over the place too. It's not just food. Yep. Everything. Electricity is up. I wonder why. Well, we're not energy independent anymore. It's 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 happening across the board and people are noticing. They don't want that. Who wants to pay more in the grocery store? I mean, you Painful. ask a rule of 100 people. Who wants to pay more? Not a single hand will go up. Nope. That should <laughs> that's where you that's where you campaign. You're Trump, you're you're the Republicans, you know, the economy's a mess. When Republicans are running things, they're not the solution to all your problems, right? Mm -hmm. But when Republicans are running things, you keep more of your money, right? You pay less in the grocery store. You pay less at the gas pump. You know, tax cuts. You can pay less in taxes. It, do you want that? You want more of your money? You want less? I think everybody wants a little bit more. I've got the numbers. I've said these uh, earlier in the week. The inflation numbers at the same point in their respective presidencies, Trump and Biden. Right now, inflation, energy under Joe Biden up 39%. Gasoline up 48%, electricity 29%, natural gas 27%, groceries 21%, eggs 49%, milk 15%, chicken 24%, transportation 33%, airfare 33%, public transportation 23%, used cars 21%, and apparel, 14%. You know, that's the most painful thing, and I know eggs at 49% is uh, absurd, but I remember when I was a kid, my, my dad would like to get us steak, and steak always cost more than chicken. And my mom would always want to get chicken because you got more bang for your buck. But now chicken, which used to be a cheap way of getting a, good, a decent dinner and a healthy dinner with protein, up 24%, yeah, it's a you lot. can't even afford that. That's the thing yeah. that really stinks about all even of like chicken breasts like you're not getting like big like bone in thighs like whatever you're just getting normal chicken breasts it'll be like twelve dollars right. right. for two it's crazy pieces. yeah it's crazy and like yeah I saw that was ten bucks for a thing of uh chicken tenders yep. you know like yep. uh, the the uncooked is chicken breast nuts yep. I mean what are you supposed to do? You got to eat the bugs and be happy. That's what they want you to do. It's I know. insane I know it's insane that's what that's what's coming. Do you guys prefer breasts or thighs? I like thighs thigh more, yeah. I I like the uh, the bone in though. It has a little bit more flavor, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, well, I wasn't talking. I was talking about women. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like dark meat in the chicken, uh, go by the, the thighs are more juicy. No doubt about it. I'm a breast guy on both sides, Chick, chicken and women. <laughs> Give me more meat. That's why I take a. I'll probably get ridiculed so, for this one on YouTube. So, then Nick, no, you're a fan of Nancy Pelosi, then, yeah. aren't you? Uh, hold on, I got, I got, uh, here, here's my here's my thoughts on Nancy. Please don't bother yeah. me with such frivolity. Okay. Okay. You have uh, you have Nancy Pelosi. She left the headlights out on the beach. You saw that picture. I know you're a big fan of that. I've you're been waiting for this that. day for years. We're gonna get him. We're gonna punch him in the face. I want to pummel him. <laughs> Remember that little Nancy, tirade she Nancy went on? Nancy Pelosi. Nancy yeah. Pelosi. All right. That'll do it for the cut sheet. Uh, coming up at 9 o'clock, we've got Jake Crane from The Daily Wire is going to join us. Uh, we'll come back, put a bow on the 8 o'clock hour. Uh, a update on the battleground states between Trump and Biden. And also the greatest closer in baseball history with a pro, uh, presidential endorsement. We'll get to that yes. as well. Kale and company back after this. Throw a punch for the children. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $40 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $18 a month, a savings of nearly $300 a year. Whether you need a $100,000 policy or a $10 million policy, SelectQuote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. In a hurry? Don't worry. With SelectQuote, you can get up to $2 million.
in instant, affordable, same-day coverage with no medical exam. Call Select Quote at 1-800-637-9116. That's 1-800-637-9116. Or go to SelectQuote.com. That's 1-800-637-9116. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Lose 20 to 40 plus pounds guaranteed with NJ Diet. NJ Diet uses DNA and blood work to help you lose weight and keep it off. Tune into their radio show Sundays at 2 or visit NJDiet.com. Hi, it's Dawn. Want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care? Call my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. I've been a customer for years. Trust me, you're going to love the results. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs. This reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is locally owned and family operated. They have offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full-service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800-FREE-SEED. NaturalLawn.com. 800-FREE-SEED. And choose my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds. Needs guaranteed. Tell them Dawn sent you. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. At Cherry Hill Volvo, we have absolutely incredible offers. Incredible offers. And a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hill Volvo, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krupnik, president of Cherry Hill Volvo. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green-lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-LIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com, res-q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort. Again, use the code RELIEF. Buy one, get one free on Rescue Glyco Plus. I'm Bev. My husband Bill is living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that can scar your lungs and make it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. If you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. Bill and I have been married for over 60 years and we're looking forward to more. If you or someone you love may have ILD, find support, hope, and help at lungsandyou.com. Kale and Company, weekday mornings, 6 till 10. You can't play Naked Twister anymore when you grow up? Naked Twister? Yeah. Oh, nice. Play it right, both people win. Nice work out of Robin. We might have to put that one on the board. <laughs> if our buddy Jim the Floater is listening, get that on the board stat today. I'm going to ask my apartment complex. They do all kinds of community things down in the lobby. Wine tasting and Cinco de Mayo things. I'm like, can we do like, an, an apartment Naked Twister night? Oh, that might, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Bring your own booze. You don't keep score, though, on Naked Twister, do you? I don't know. Is it inclusive? <laughs> Start your day with Kale and Company, weekday mornings 6 till 10, on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. 
with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Hey, it's Shota Camry here. Baseball season, it is back. From driving your kids to practice to driving to the ballpark, make sure you are taking care of your car. Schedule an appointment at United Tire. From new tires to oil changes to state inspections and everything in between, the highly skilled technicians at United Tire, they're happy to work around your schedule to do whatever work your car needs, no matter the make or model. Let United Tire help you get in gear for the spring season. Take your car to your locally owned United Tire or visit UnitedTire.com. Don't drive alone. Drive United. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. Yeah, they're local in Pennsylvania. They have an experienced team which has transformed more than 60,000 spaces. A dedicated design consultant works with you on your choices for re facing custom cabinets, backsplash counters, and tub shower conversion. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Visit KitchenMagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hi, this is Dom Giordano at Martin Water Conditioning's Customer Appreciation Sale. Everything flows smoothly. Martin Water Conditioning has the latest in water purifying technology for your home. Until April 22nd, receive up to $500 off when purchasing a Connecticut water system. 18 and 48 months special financing or 10% off spot-free car rinse system and more. Call Martin Water Conditioning at one 800 853 10 93 offers cannot be combined or applied to prior sales. Now, your Live Nation lineup. Don't miss these upcoming shows. See Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic with Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, and Allison Krauss, and many more at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion July 4th. Plus, see Neil Young on May 12th at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. And Santana and Counting Crows on June 21st at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. Don't forget Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic, Neil Young, and Santana and Counting Crows. For tickets and info, go to LiveNation.com. With so much uncertainty in the world today, you may find yourself wondering, is now even the right time to retire? And so many people are waiting, and those folks are going to be waiting a really long time, I hate to say, because there's no perfect time. The market is always unpredictable and volatile. Fortunately, Jim Cipriati has been helping get people to, through, and beyond retirement for over 25 years. Each week, he wants to help give you that freedom to retire. Listen to Freedom to Retire with Jim Cipriati, Saturday mornings at 9 and Sunday afternoons at 5 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com. Tell them, Dawn sent you. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage. Available at Navage.com. Calling on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. 8 o'clock hour brought to you by Arden Theater. Don't miss Arden Children's Theater, modern retelling of the classic tale Pinocchio. It's adapted by Greg Banks, not Greg Stocker. A wooden boy, a nose that grows, a huge whale, and a cricket with a lot of opinions. On stage now, info at ardentheater.org. As we continue, 
Kale and Company, Friday morning. Sean Farish in for Dawn Stensland. We're going to chat with Jake Crane from The Daily Wire coming up at 9 o'clock about O.J. Simpson and all sorts of other issues in the world of news, politics, sports, so forth and so on. Sean, I wanted to get to a couple of these numbers that we have seen now. Latest polls coming out. Again, uh, I always try to take them all with a grain of salt, but uh, a new poll out from Quinnipiac University, a lot of the battleground states, where Trump has a lead in North Carolina. You look across the board, and for the most part, he has been leading all of these swing states for a majority of these polls. Every now and then you see Joe, he's tied in one, or he's up one, or he's up two points. But right now, and I was thinking about this last night, gun to my head, I think, no doubt about it, Trump takes Carolina. No doubt about it, I think Trump's taking Georgia uh, after losing in 2020. I think the Lake and Riley thing is a big thing. Uh, Arizona is interesting, very flippable, very winnable, roughly 10, 11,000 votes. Um, you know, with this latest abortion thing, I think that could be a little bit of a fly in the ointment. But do you think it's possible right now that he sweeps all seven or do you see a state out there that you think might be very difficult for him? If there's one that is difficult, is there one that stands out to you? I got bad news, and I think it's Arizona because, you know, um, Maricopa County is in Arizona. And oh, there's oh, always, always, always fugaziness at Maricopa County. There's Something's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe there's another solar eclipse. Maybe it's uh, an earthquake. Maybe it's, you know, there's a tsunami in the death. You can never count it out. Maricopa County, um, Arizona is going to be tough. And now add the uh, that abortion, you know, the pre Civil War or, or Civil War uh, uh, statute in there when Arizona was just a territory. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're seeing, you know, you're going to activate a lot of people there. Uh, I think Wisconsin is 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 good for Trump. I think Michigan right now looks really good for Trump because of the. Uh, the, the Dearborn situation going oh, yeah. on there. Yep. And you can't discount the RFK factor. He's going to be on ballots. Mm-hmm. That guy's determined. And he picked a VP. He picked a running mate with a lot of money who can get her on, get him on a lot of ballots. And he's already on the ballot in uh, Utah, but I think his, one of the packs, a super PAC that's helping him gain ballot access has got him. They say they've got him on the ballot in North Carolina, New Hampshire. You know, if if all RFK does, honestly, is make ballots in Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Arizona, I think then, yeah, then you're looking at a really good chance Donald Trump sweeps the swing states. And, oh, man, will the Democrats be upset. I mean, the Kennedy name will be ruined <laughs> in the Democrat Party for a long time. But I'll, I'll be sitting back here at my feet on the table laughing. I don't care, right, if 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 they want to say, well, you only won because of RFK. Yeah, but we still won. Yeah, right. We of course. Still, I just want to win. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, when Tom Brady was hurt, I still wanted to beat the Patriots. No, let's beat him when they're when when Brady's back. No, I wanted to beat Matt Castle too. Mm-hmm. We found a way not to do that, but it's you know it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, and we talk about Pennsylvania as well when we talk about these battleground states. Scott Pressler has just done a fantastic oh. job uh, oh. getting people to register Republican, flip from blue yeah. to red, D to R. Here's some of the numbers, uh, and Scott tweeted these out just two days ago uh, on January 22nd of this year. Bucks County, which is right here in our listening area, probably the third biggest county in the state. You've got Allegheny County, which is out Pittsburgh area, Philadelphia County, obviously self-explanatory. But Bucks County, just three months ago, uh, Republicans were trailing Democrats in registered voters by 3,139 voters. Now, as of two days ago, that is down to 1,700. It's a 1,400 Swing, which is substantial. Uh, also, two other counties here in Pennsylvania, Center County and Luzerne County, is being chipped away slowly but surely. I, I think there's a real chance here. Um, and if you want to see these uh, these figures that Scott tweeted out, you can check out his Twitter feed, at Scott Pressler, P-R-E-S-L-E-R. Um, I think it's really interesting that by the time we get to Labor Day, these counties could, at least from a registered voter standpoint, have been flipped from blue to red in a matter of probably eight or nine months. And that will go a long way. Now, it doesn't guarantee that Republicans are going to you know, handle their business in Pennsylvania. But Scott, and Scott comes on a lot with Dom. And he's, he, uh, Anthony, have you had Scott on, on with, uh, with Dawn? 
Uh, or is that I, Dom only? Yeah, Dom's pretty much had him mostly. Okay. But, uh, Scott, I mean, he's always willing to talk to people. And like you said, the fact that he's getting bucks to this point, I mean, yeah. they've very much been blue since like 2016. I mean, I know Trump had a had a shot, but right. still. Yeah. So I don't know. Have you actually spoken to uh, Scott at all, by the way, uh, Sean? Have yeah, you? on a number of occasions, actually. I've spoken to Scott. I, we had a watch party. He came down to Long Island. We had a watch party when Liz Cheney was... Uh, uh, being primaried and losing, we we set it up in our studio and we we restreamed with them for like three or four hours. We were just laughing at Liz Cheney the whole time, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Scott did a lot of work on Long Island. He saw what we were doing out there uh, on Long Island with our grassroots movement. He wanted to come register voters and be a part of it, and we had him out a few times. And he's just great. That guy, you know, I, I, it's hard to find somebody who works as hard as uh, as Scott Pressler. He just just does an amazing job. It's nice to see that uh, the RNC is going to at least kind of bring him in the fold, not hire him because he's got, I think he's dealing with his own situation, his own organization, early vote action. But um, what he's doing in PA is just incredible. And he doesn't stop. I mean, I remember earlier last year, this time last year, Wisconsin, we lost a, a Wisconsin Supreme Court seat, but he was literally walking through like banks of snow mm -hmm. to, do, to door knock and register voters to get people out to try and win that election. It was only as close as it was because of people like Scott Pressler, and he's only one guy. Right. So this thing about like what a thousand people who have half the work ethic of Scott Pressler can do. That's why I say if you're pro-life and you want to make a difference in your state and push, you know, uh, restrictions on abortion, you can absolutely do it. You just got to put in the work. And uh, and a guy like Scott should serve as your inspiration and your model for success. That guy's amazing. I've spent time with him and he is just as driven and as passionate, as patriotic and as effective as just about anybody in the space right now. He's, he's incredible. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. Lastly, as we wrap up the 8 o'clock hour here, uh, interesting story yesterday as Yankees legend Mariano Rivera, I believe the greatest closer in Major League Baseball history on that one-pitch cutter, uh, officially endorsed Donald Trump for president. Uh, he was on WABC in New York with my buddy Sid Rosenberg, and he said that he would vote for his friend in a presumptive race against Biden saying, quote, President Trump, he's my friend. I can't deny that. I will tell that to anyone before he was president. He was my friend. Because of that, I'm going to vote for him. We know Trump's doing incredibly well with the Hispanic community and Latino voters, but it's nice to see that somebody as decorated as Mariano Rivera comes out and says this because, look, he was friends with Trump prior to Trump becoming president, but we know what's happened ever since he came down the golden escalator in 2015 and announced he was running for president as an R. Those in Hollywood, in sports, and media that used to love Trump, he was a darling to NBC, they've all shunned him because he's a Republican now. Now, and Mariana Rivera is like, no, the hell with that. You, you're not getting me off of my position. I'm still a Trump guy through and through. And I know as a Texas Ranger baseball fan, Mo broke your heart a few times back in the day, I believe. He did. And uh, I wish we had a closer as good as Mariana Rivera right now. Jose LeClerc seems to not be able to get it together. But uh, here's the deal, you know, I taught... Mariano had to throw the cutter, believe it or not. I actually invented the cutter as my own pitch. I said, this pitch is going to cut. It's going to break bats like Biden broke the border. It's going to break bats like nobody's ever seen. Uh, but I taught him how to do it. I call him Mo. Not a lot of people call him Mo, but I call him Mo. as the first person to call him Mo. And I told him, you know what you need to do? It's on my playlist and it should be your song. Enter Sandman. Billy Wagner is going to try to take it. He's uh, He had it, but it's you're going to use it a lot better. You're the Sandman. And you're an incredible Sandman. You're a talented Sandman. The greatest closer the world has ever seen. I taught him how to throw the cutter, and it worked very well, believe me. Well, you said the greatest closer of all time. I thought you were going to be referring to Brad Lidge, but no. I, I guess not. Oh, jeez. No. And not, <laughs> and, and not, Lee, not Lee Smith either, because that guy stuck around for too many years, yeah, yeah, racking yeah. up Lidge. 12 saves here, 12 there. Give me a break. He was a stack compiler. Rivera's the yeah. best. And by the way, you knew it was over. Like when Rivera came out of the bullpen to enter Sandman, like it, it didn't matter it's if it. you were down one, two, or three. It's a wrap. Yeah, he was still he was on the 09 team when we lost, right? He was yeah. still there. Yeah. 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 yeah they were all one still pitch. There. I'm not one over pitch. that still. I'm not over 2009. The Phillies should have won that World Series. The fact that Cole Hamels was that bad and Pedro Martinez was better than him. Oh my God. And mm -hmm. Cliff Lee and Chase. Oh my God. I'm yeah. still I'm not over it. Oh, Cliff Lee went to the Rangers. That's Sean at Sean's squad. Yeah, I love Cliff Lee. Yeah. He's like well, my he went favorite. to the Rangers before he went to Philly. You know, we that's had right. him. Yeah, yeah. 
lost to Bochi that first year, and now he's our guy, and uh-huh. uh, you know we got one. So well, he refused happy. to go to the Yankees because I spit on his wife in the stands. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Blame that. Uh-huh. It's weird. You know, it's bad when you go to Philly because the fans are nicer there. Yep. And this yep. is the, the yep. this from is a the New Yorker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the home of the boo. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up next, we will chat with Jay Crane from the Daily Wire. But first, a word from my friends at the Piazza Auto Group. We dropped the debut episode of Kale Pool Karaoke just about ten weeks ago, and we filmed the first uh, installment of that with Patrick Murphy in the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. And that features a seven-mode drive system, trail watch, multi-camera view, 18-inch alloy wheels, and wireless Apple CarPlay for, for all the kiddies out there that need their devices connected at all times. And your wife or maybe your husband loves the third row seating yeah, come standard in the Pilot Trail Sport. You can check out the Trail Sport, all the uh, other varieties and renditions of the Honda Pilot at one of the five Piazza Honda locations in Philadelphia, Pottstown, Reading, Springfield, and Langhorn, or shop their inventory online, piazzaautogroup.com. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Do you know when the best time to buy investment properties is? It's now. It's always now. You just need to learn how to buy them correctly. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday night and learn how to buy investment properties and make money every time. That's right. That's what we teach. We teach how to buy investment properties and make money every time. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Take a class this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Don't go through life ignorant about how to become a millionaire. Learn how to invest in real estate, the stock market, precious metals, and learn from an expert. At Investor Schooling, we teach these things and more. We only provide education, and we will teach you how to leverage real estate, how to leverage the stock market, and how to leverage precious metals to make more money than you've ever made before. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and take a complimentary class this Thursday. We will see you there. InvestorSchooling.com. That's InvestorSchooling.com. WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Do you have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more that you don't need? Well, don't lapse or surrender your policy. You might be sitting on a gold mine. That's right. You may be able to sell all or part of your life insurance policy to Coventry for cash or a combination of cash and coverage with no future premiums, even a term policy. Call Coventry Direct at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. For over 25 years, we've helped thousands of people sell their policies and we can probably help you too. Call us today at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. Call now. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $40 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $18 a month, a savings of nearly $300 a year. Whether you need a $100,000 policy or a $10 million policy, SelectQuote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. In a hurry? Don't worry. 
With SelectQuote, you can get up to $2 million in instant, affordable, same-day coverage with no medical exam. Call SelectQuote at 1-800-637-9116. That's 1-800-637-9116. Or go to SelectQuote.com. That's 1-800-637-9116. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of 4x6 photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyBox.com slash value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, LegacyBox also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media. So you can get your favorite memories on VHS or Grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyBox.com slash value. That's LegacyBox.com slash value. Yo, 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 Roy is Ford. What? We know your favorite station is 1210 WPHD. WPHD. 903, fourth and final hour here on a Friday morning. Kaling Company, Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. Nick Kale, Sean Farish, as we head till 10 o'clock this morning. We'll get to what's on the cut sheet part due at the bottom of the hour and all the other typical 9 o'clock goodies. But right now, time to talk a little sports news, politics, pop culture. It's all a melting pot these days as we welcome in my buddy Jake Crane from the Daily Wire. Jake, good to have you back on the show. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing great. I always love coming on and talking with you. And it's uh, it's never a slow time in the sports world or, you know, the political world, if we're being honest. No doubt about it. And uh, I want to start with O.J. Simpson because I said this morning as we were talking about it in the first hour that with the death of O.J. Simpson yesterday, you think back 30 years. And really, O.J. Simpson, he kind of encompasses everything, right? It's sports, it's entertainment, it's race, it's politics. And we live in this world 30 years later where identity politics is all the left ever talks about even in sports and we saw it just recently with women's college basketball uh your thoughts on the way maybe the media covered it yesterday in the sports world uh and when you hear about oj simpson what comes to mind for you well you know it's i I think first off it's kind of sad that that we still have these identity politic and and race divide problems that we had back then today it's kind of taken a little bit of a different form but we still have them. You know, I wish we, you know, somehow made more progress and just, you know, treat everybody by how they act, not what they look like. Uh, you know, some outlets I thought did a good job of being honest. Um, I, I think we've got to be able to say, look, O.J. Simpson was an incredible football player, but he was an awful human being. Uh, I think he was guilty. Uh, I'll be the first one to tell you that. I didn't shed a tear yesterday when I heard it. And I think the world's a better place now that he's not here. Um, but I was very disappointed with the Heisman. Uh, committee, uh, the committee and, and the people who represent them on social media, you know, they really just, they, they took away Reggie Bush's Heisman basically because of NIL, but then they go and, and basically celebrate the life of OJ Simpson, who in my opinion is a double murderer yesterday. So I thought some outlets handled it well, uh, just by being honest, that's the best way to handle it. But um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where OJ was one of the most captivating people, you know, good, bad, or indifferent that we've seen in the sports world. And, and we talked about this morning on Crane and Company. I think the top three villains in the history of sports, at least in my opinion, are Aaron Hernandez, O.J. Simpson, and Jerry Sandusky. Yeah, hard to disagree with any of that for all those different reasons with all those different cases, whether it's, you know, murder, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the child pedophilia stuff and the sexual assaults that happened in Happy Valley for sure. Uh, Sean, go ahead. You can jump in, buddy. Yeah, Jake, good to talk to you. Um, happy year. You too, buddy. Thanks for coming on. What's that? Yeah, it's a good, to, good to have you here. But, uh, I, you know, I, we, we've been talking a lot about, you know, you've hear, heard about Riley Gaines. You've heard a lot about, uh, you know, it's, I, I believe it really started with the Bruce, Caitlin, whatever you want to call him, Jenner. 
Um, yeah. When does it stop, in your opinion, this women, men's and women's sports issue? When does it, when, when do you think people are going to finally wake up? The NAIA, I believe, just banned uh, men from, yep. from, from joining uh, uh, fe- or playing in female sports. But like, when do you think enough is going to be enough? Is it going to take someone to get seriously hurt? Because, I mean, we've seen it in, in, in hockey. I think last year a, a female player was checked by a transgender. You know, she, uh, he identified as a woman, but checked her into the boards and she was out with a concussion for a while. How much yep. more of this until you think we see it reverse course? Well, it's, it, you know, the fact that we even have to have this discussion is one of the dumbest. We will, they will look back on this 100 years from now and <laughs> wonder how we just didn't blow the planet up. This is the reason the aliens won't talk to us. I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, but it, I, I think there's two ways this ends. And I'm really starting to only believe there's one way this ends. Because you brought up the, the, the female that got hurt by the guy in hockey. Well, in volleyball, we had a girl that has partial paralysis now because some dude thought he was a woman and went and played women's volleyball and basically pulled a Ben Stiller off Meet the Parents and spiked it off her face uh, and yeah. caused just irreparable damage. So if, if hurting a high school girl isn't going to get them to change it and that was national news, then outside of somebody maybe dying, which I don't want to have happen, uh, I don't know if the injury thing's going to stop it. Here's what I think stops it. Do you notice that all these men in women's sports, they're not in the major sports, right? We, we haven't seen it in women's college basketball. We haven't seen it in high-level women's college softball. Uh, a, a transgender tried to trick the Washington women's volleyball team and get on there, but they turned uh, him away, and that was in the state of Washington. And the reason that they only do it on these periphery sports, and not saying those sports aren't important, swimming's important, cycling's important, important. Hell, disc golf is important, and they're infiltrating that too. The yeah. minute it goes to a mainstream women's sport, it's going to be so blatantly obvious that everybody says we can't do this anymore. The minute that some guy goes and plays for Don Staley and is averaging 45 points a game and 25 rebounds and is basically like Zach Eady against normal human beings, or a guy goes and plays shortstop for Oklahoma softball team and drops 65 home runs and knocks some dude, a poor, poor girl unconscious at third base or is throwing just innately harder on the mound than another girl, then it's going to stop. That's why I think they're afraid to let any of these transgenders get into, like, high mainstream women's basketball. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just a D2 player? going to play in the WNBA or doing something that like Lee, like Will Thomas did mm-hmm. and going from where he was into the women's ranks and just absolutely dominating, I don't think they'd be able to get away with it because it would be too blatantly obvious. Jake Crane from the Daily Wire joining us here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Jake, what were your impressions from what transpired last weekend with the Q&A that happened with Dawn Staley? Uh, her response to transgender individuals coming into women's sports because I thought uh, the head coach for Iowa took a different approach. I'm not even sure I believe that Dawn Staley believes what she said, but she was put on the spot and she had to give the the PC answer. Uh, Your your impressions with everything that transpired around that story last weekend? Well, if you just watch the way, number one, I'm glad the question was asked because it is a very relevant and pertinent question to somebody like Dawn Staley. But the way she answered it, Nick, you could tell she was not comfortable and having to think about what she was going to say. Number one, I think she, she took the easy way out with the way she leans politically. I don't think she really believes that. Nobody whose brain actually works believes that that's okay. But here's the problem with our politics. We are so tribal. We are so dug in to one corner or the other. We cannot think or say what we really want on different issues. We can't disagree on normal things. We can't say, oh, well, this side may be right about this, and we, the side I'm on may be a little wrong about it. She's so dug in to this left-leaning ideology, this identity politics, I'm not okay, you're not okay, but that's okay type of thinking, that she cannot even say that men should not play in women's college basketball. And we all know that she she literally has her women practice against men to make make them better. 
and they lose all the time. She's admitted that. Yep. So she knows the difference. But we just – it's cowardly to me. But any time that anybody thinks they're going to – the same reason Sue Bird or Megan Rapino or any of these other high-profile women's athletes or coaches don't say anything against it, they're afraid they're going to lose their, their what's in their wallet, their sponsorships, and their fame. And at the end of the day, to me, it's cowardice. That's what I think it is. Did, you, did we drop Sean? Did Sean drop? Oh, no, I'm here. Oh, oh, I'm you, sorry. Oh, oh, you, brother. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I got you. Well, I'm sorry. Jake, drop, I, man. That was a mic drop moment. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it was, I, you left me speechless. It never, it's never happened before. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably never going to happen again. Uh, no, I want to uh, I want to ask you. So I'm a conservative. I'm into sports. I know you're with the Daily Wire. I get this all the time. And the minute I start talking about sports, whether it's I like the Texas Rangers, they're the only team that didn't, you know, celebrate a pride night. Or I, you know, if I speak about the NFL or anything like that, I'm told, well, you're just falling for the bread and circuses. They're just doing it, you know, to 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 uh, you know, to distract you from something else. So you're covering sports for an outlet that made its way in politics. Have you ever handled that yeah. criticism? And, and how do you get, like, over that aspect of it? Is it not okay to like sports anymore? No, well, it, it, that's a great question. Look, it, it's like I say on, my, uh, on our show, we don't go and, like, reach to make things political. We're not looking for political stories. We mainly cover what's going on in sports, you know, who did well in the spring game, you know, how many points did Jokic score last night, who should be the MVP, this, that, and the other. But there are times where it intersects, like, it, and – you could really say anything's political, right? Oh, NIL's political. Are the transfer portals political? Conference realignment. I mean, we see what's going on right now in the courts with the ACC. You can claim that's political. So people can try and make that distinction if they want. Really, the way I handle it is, listen, I, I'm not going to tell you what, what – you should think politically. I'm going to tell you what I think about the situations that are presented to me. Uh, and, and we kind of just really let our work speak for itself. We got to be able that one of the reasons I love sports is that it brings in people from everywhere, right? Like if I yeah. go to a game and I'm, I'm watching my team play, if my team scores and I turn around and high five the person next to me, I don't know if they're Democrat, Republican, independent, or something I don't even know about yet. My team scored. We're both happy. But there are times, like with men and women's sports, where you do have to sit here and say, look, I know this may be a controversial or, or political topic, but it actually has to deal with what's going on in sports, like with the Kaepernick and Nealon during the national anthem thing, like the yeah. pair, players getting paid in college to become employees. So sometimes, you know, you do have to talk about it, but we don't sit here and flaunt it like, hey, we're a conservative sports show. No, we're a sports show that just has common sense and you look around at some of these other four-letter networks, and they, when they do talk politics, you only get one side of it. I'm on the side of common sense, guys. There you go. Jake Crane of The Daily Wire. Always appreciate the time, buddy. Thank you so much. Hey, man, you guys keep killing it. Love what y'all are doing, and uh, always down to come on. All right, there he is, Jake Crane, joining us from The Daily Wire, another guy that was into sports for many years and now works with uh, Ben Shapiro's site, The Daily Wire. And he's right. I mean, you know, they, they, they talk mostly sports, but anytime the sports, social, political issues all kind of cross mojinate together, then they're, they're going to share their opinions on it, and they certainly are not on the left. I will say that much. All right, quick break. We'll come back, and we'll get to our morning mystery movie clip at 920. Anthony Dorenzo's got the cut sheet part due at the bottom of the hour. As we continue Friday morning, Kale and Company back after this. Rich Zioli. Rich Zioli. Lieutenant Colonel Tulsi Gabbard, how are you, Tulsi? Aloha. You are on the short list for President Trump's uh, VP list. Obviously, there's so many serious challenges that, that face our country right now, and if I were asked to serve in that position where I could help implement President Trump's agenda of securing our border, and uh, I would be honored to serve in a position where I could help accomplish these things for the American people. Rich Zioli, weekday afternoons, 3-7. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT and on the free Odyssey app. Join the Delaware County link to Aging and Disability Resources for a wills and end-of-life planning information session featuring guest elder law estate planning and real estate specialist Dana Breslin of Breslin, Murphy & Roberts and other legal professionals to present and assist with the first steps of creating wills and estate planning and for Q&A sessions. The event will take place at Redwood Community Center on April 29th from 1.30 p.m. till 3 p.m. Call 610-499-1978 to register today. 
At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey teams will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com slash one thing. If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels, New York. And for psychics, think California Psychics. You want the best, you go to the best. At California Psychics, home of free spirits and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. That's why we guarantee, if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. You're in hot water, mister. What'd I do? I told you months ago our utility bills were getting higher because of that old outdated tank water heater. Maybe it's time we finally switch to a Navian tankless. Learn about Navian's high-efficiency tankless water heaters, endless hot water, all while helping you save on your energy costs. Hey, look at this. Our utility bill is lower since we got the Navian tankless water heater. Who's in hot water now? We are, all the time. Learn more at tanklessmadesimple.com. When you enter a place of business, you're owed a legal duty that the place of business is safe for you to shop in because they are making a profit from you. That's the law. Yet many times a normal day ends with injuries because that business breached that duty because they knew or should have known of the dangerous condition that caused your injury. It happens every day in many ways. Slip and falls where cleaning and maintenance were ignored. Falling boxes and items stacked too high. And so many other unexpected occurrences and dangers only known to that business owner. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you suffered an injury at a place of business, let our team investigate and report back to you. The duty to protect customers from harm is the law, and our duty is to protect you after that harm. Visit ForThePeople.com for more information or on your cell phone dial pound law. That's all. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. ForThePeople.com Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, <laughs> a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go it alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. It's a Joe Conklin Comedy Show fundraiser at the Church of the Incarnation in Mantua, New Jersey. We're raising money to send altar server Christina McNasby to the shrine at Lourdes in France. 24 years old, she's been going through a lot. Her faith is steadfast. She's an unbelievable parishioner. Christine is in pain quite often. All she has to say is she's offering up that pain to the Lord. Him get her to Lourdes, and we're going to do that with your help. The Benefit Comedy Show for Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! 
Mom! Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. Free speech lives here. Where are you? Hello. Carrie Company, it is 921 on a Friday morning. Hopefully all of you having a great start to your work day or your three-day weekend. Nick Hale, Sean Farish, Anthony Dorenzo, Phil Omquist. Dawn will be back uh, early next week, I believe. I think Tuesday from her trip from Thursday, early. I think. Thursday. The 18th. Yeah. yeah. Samson, Swanson. I knew it started with an S. She'll be back. Uh, Greg will be back on Monday. Sean's been crushing it as he always does. And Always look forward to working with our buddy Sean Farish. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. The four hours always fly by, but between all of your takes and then the uh, insertion of Trump uh, impressions, just goes by like that, pal. Well, it goes by so quickly, and it goes by so beautifully, and it goes by, and the ratings are going up. It goes by, <laughs> and the ratings are going up. You know what happens? It's always so much fun coming on here in any capacity. As, uh, as I say all the time, I really appreciate it. So thank you, guys. No doubt about it. Nine o'clock hour brought to you by American Heritage Credit Union, where you can unlock financial freedom with American Heritage Credit Union. Secure your future with a 13-month IRA certificate at 5% or enjoy flexibility with a 10-month 5% APY. Visit AmericanHeritageCU.org and join today. Anthony Dorenzo, let's get to our morning mystery movie clip. Movie clip, movie clip, movie clip, one, two, movie clip, movie clip. Here we go. Sorry, here we go. Here, we go. here we go. My computer is just taking forever. <laughs> the morning mystery movie clip on Kalen Company. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Well, hell, we'd have won that son of a gun if the corn stalks would have held out. We just ran out of ammunition. Better luck next time, Pee Wee. All we got's right here. Thank you, Jack. What are you thanking me for? I got family up there from Louisville. I need them to know. I need them to know who I am. Hey, number one! You playing ball or socializing? Playing ball, Lump. Come on! Don't let us get to you! Maybe tomorrow we'll all wear 42. That way they won't tell us apart. Think you know what it is? Be call at 12 at 855 839 1210 you could win this great prize. And today's prize, once again, another pair of tickets to see Jeff Lynn's ELO over and out tour coming up on September 21st at the Wells Fargo Center in South Philadelphia. Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster.com, but you can get a pair right now. Call or 12 855-839-1210 if you can identify that movie clip. Best of luck, and we'll see if we have our winner when we come back out of the next break. But a couple of things just to hit on here. Final couple of stories of the day. Uh, and I think this is very interesting. So the Wall Street Journal uh, surveyed and polled individuals. Uh, this was on, let's see here, between March 17th through March 21st. And uh, the journal poll of 218 to 354 registered voters. And they wanted to look at the share of black voters who favor Joe Biden or Donald Trump. And I think these results are really, really interesting because the actual number of black men that now favor Donald Trump has gone up substantially. We have seen where Trump was in 2016 against Hillary with black voters, where he was in 2020 against Biden with black voters, and where he is now in 2024. And this is very, very important in my opinion. So for non-college black voters, Trump has gone up from 2020 to 2024, from 9% to 21%, with black college voters 8% to 18% in the last four years, with black women from 6% to 11%, but with black men, the biggest jump, 12% to 30%. I'll say this right now, Sean Ferris, I'm not sure if you agree with me or not, but if this poll is reflective of the community in general, if Trump's carrying 30% of the vote with the black community amongst men, Donald Trump's winning re-election in 2024. If that number's accurate, I think Biden's in deep trouble. Not only is he winning re-election, he's winning the popular vote, which is just unbelievable to think about. Um, because you, you, you shave away, you flip, you, you kind of swing 
that demographic that drastically. And I don't know if it's going to be that drastically because we've heard about this every election, but it is happening. There is a shift. Uh, and the Ragin Cajun, I think his name, James Carville, he came out and said, we're not just, you know, they're not just, uh, we're not shedding them. We're losing them in droves. You're mm -hmm. losing uh, these, these, these demographics in droves, blacks, Latinos. Um, it is, it's huge. You know, I think they're starting to see through the black community specifically yep. starting to see through the Biden administration's gaslighting here. You know, the the border is a huge issue because you're seeing the illegals getting the preferential treatment, uh, whereas, um, you know, members of the black community in places like Chicago, Atlanta, Seattle, Detroit, Philadelphia, New York are being you know shoved to the back of the line again mm -hmm. uh with regards to the illegals to this whole situation how come they're getting the money and not the black community uh and then you have you know you, you add on top of that that joe biden you know says oh if you don't vote for me you ain't black you know i mean uh, tell me you're a racist without telling me you're a racist right so i i, I really think this shift is legitimate and if those numbers hold, Donald Trump wins the popular vote, and it's really embarrassing for the incumbent president right now to lose in that fashion. No doubt about it. And you saw it again on full display over the last 48 hours. Trump was in Atlanta, Georgia. Trump was at Chick-fil-A. You saw that video of that one girl that goes over. I think she goes to Morehouse College, a historically HBCU uh, institution, and she comes running over to Trump, and Trump wants to hug her. Um, and you, like, you're never going to see that on the mainstream media. Like CNN's not going to sit there and show you the videos that were going viral on social media on Wednesday and Thursday of Trump showing up and getting the support he does in Georgia, in Atlanta specifically, because it goes against the narrative that the black community does not like Donald Trump. We saw right. this when he got indicted with Fannie Willis, or as you say, Fannie Willis, uh, the whole situation when he was going to show up for his first court appearance. You had many people in Fulton County, Georgia, that were African-American, and they were showed up, and they, they were lining the streets, and they wanted to see the motorcade come by, and people that were saying, yeah, I'm, I'm a Trump supporter, I'm a Trump voter, and even the most entry level reason is good enough, in my opinion. And you have people in the quote communities that aren't supposed to vote Republican. They're like, I had more money in my pocket under Trump. Biden gave us all these promises that he never came through with, and I'm completely broke. So if you just look at the first level, the economy, it's like, okay, well, we live the Trump economy and we're living a Biden economy. Well, who's got more money? Who's got more disposable income at the end of each month to take a trip or a vacation or to buy that ribeye or that strip steak or whatever? It's the people that were living the life under Donald Trump when a ribeye was thirteen ninety nine a pound, not twenty four ninety nine a pound. Right, and I think I think that despite what the left says, despite how MSNBC wants to treat people. Americans aren't stupid. These aren't, these are not, we are not dealing with a dumb class of people. These are voters. They're informed. If they're paying attention to the, to the election and to politics and to their personal finances, well, they're going to make decisions based off of that. And I, I really do think that uh, you're seeing it not just with, again, not just with the black community, but with people all over, even, even people maybe who lean to the left say, you know, the tweets, maybe the whole little rocket man thing was too far, but, I had more money. Things cost less. I was able to take a couple of more vacations. I was able to buy, you know, kids, the new Xbox games or, or load credits onto whatever the games they're playing, Minecraft or Roblox or Fortnite or whatever games <laughs> it is. Right. I mean, like, seriously, like it's, it's, th there was, you had more disposable income. You had yep. more buying power under Donald Trump. Your quality of life was higher under Donald Trump, voters aren't dumb people. If you come out on that podium, in front of that podium, and tell voters, everything's, you know, inflation is slowing down, and then the person goes to the supermarket and pays more than they've ever paid before, mm -hmm. despite having nothing in the cart, they're going to say, they're lying to me. I'm not voting for them. And that's, I think, what's going on. You're seeing a bit of a rebellion here. I've given you the percentages of the inflation. Let me give you the raw dollars here. Uh, RNC Research tweeted this out last night. The average family has lost $23,760 paying for the increased cost of living under Joe Biden. You are spending, on average, and this is according to the Joint Economic Committee, uh, that's the source, you're spending $4,200 more a year on energy, $3,200 more a year on food, $3,900 a year more on shelter, and $8,400 a year more uh on transportation. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think every family in America 
regardless of how many kids you have, whether you're a two-family income or a, or a two-parent two household or one, we could all use $23,760 more in our bank account each year. W- would you agree with that? Unless you're super rich that I don't know about, Sean, I think you could use an extra twenty four grand a year as well. Oh, of course. I mean, I would love that. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't go there. It goes to Ukraine. It goes to uh, other countries. I- I'm a firm believer in ending every single red cent of foreign aid until our problems are solved. And I'm not looking for social welfare programs, but my goodness gracious, I mean, the government doesn't have to give us the money that we pay in taxes, but if we could just get things in order here, we wouldn't be blowing it on on everything else, trips to the supermarket, trips to the, you know, gasoline, housing is out of control. You know, you just mentioned all those numbers and inflation and that's that's the hidden tax. Everyone calls it the hidden tax because it is. Mm-hmm. It's not, you don't it's not on your tax form. It's not money that's deducted from your paycheck, but it's it's something that you're feeling every Every time you make a purchase, every time you have to, you know, pay for anything, if it's a utility, if it's housing, if it's insurance, if it's an auto repair, if it's anything, you're paying more now than you paid under Donald Trump. When we had a booming economy, we had real jobs being added to the workforce, real full time, well paying jobs that were being added to the workforce. It's it's a shame what's happening now. I I really hope enough people are realizing why it's happening. They know that it is happening, Mm -hmm. but I hope they realize why it's happening because the Biden administration is going to somehow try and blame Trump or blame Republicans for it when they've been in control this whole time. There's nobody to blame but yourself. Every finger should be pointing at these Democrats that are running this country into the ground. That's why you have less money. That's why your you know, your buying power has drastically decreased. All right. Coming up next, we will get to our morning mystery movie clip winner. And then what's on the cut sheet part due? As we put a bow on a Friday show, Sean's in for Dawn. It's Kale and Company here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-ALIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable Rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com, res-q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort again use the code relief buy one get one free on rescue glyco plus the irs is the most powerful collection agency on earth and if you owe back taxes the news isn't good the irs is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected most people don't know it but the irs adds interest charges to your tax debts daily so if you owe the irs today you'll owe even more tomorrow and it doesn't stop until you get right with the irs the good news is getting right can start with one phone call to optima tax relief america's number one tax relief firm optima's tax professionals specialize in the fresh start initiative a powerful irs program that can save you thousands if you qualify in fact the experts at optima have resolved over one billion dollars in tax debt for their clients call now for a free consultation call 800-354-2840 800-354-2840 800-354-2840 optima tax relief some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hey, it's Rich. It's the only take your lawn to the next level with the lawn care company I trust, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for over 35 years. Their unique approach to lawn care reduces the need for chemicals, creating a safer lawn for your pets and children. Time is running out to get free seeding every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED or visit NaturalLawn.com today to learn more. Natural Lawn of America. America, greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community 
Community Tax Helpline at 800-514-1026. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-514-1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-514-1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-514-1026. Crash Proof Retirement records all financial meetings. All promises made in recorded financial meetings become legally binding between Crash Proof Retirement and the investing client. Crash Proof Retirement provides all of their clients with a certificate of authenticity, further documenting that recording financial meetings brings fiduciary responsibility to the highest level. I'm Jack Gunning from Bluebell, Pennsylvania. I don't know whether anybody can offer you the security that Crash Proof Retirement does. I have this certificate that tells me they're a fiduciary. Everything is recorded and they have your best interest at heart. That certificate is 100% documentation that you know what they're saying is 100% correct. Other companies don't have this guarantee. This certificate means an awful lot for me and it should mean an awful lot for you. Certify your retirement future and register for our next educational event at Springfield Country Club on April 16th. 800-722-9728 or crashproofretirement.com. Hey Clementine. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. WPHD. Kelly Company, as we continue, 938 here on a Friday morning. Nick and Sean, as we head to the top of the hour. Kathy Barnett will be in for dawn at 10 o'clock this morning. What's on the cut sheet part due? You'll find out in just a few moments today in music history and who won Twitter today. But right now, who won the morning mystery movie clip and who gets the last pair of tickets for Jeff Lynn? I believe that is John in Kensington. John, good morning. What movie clip did we play for you just about 15 minutes ago? Hey, guys, the movie was 42. That is correct. Did, did it, was, was it like a dead giveaway in the clip when they oh, mentioned so the number 42? I'm so sick of this. Yeah. It's, it's either too easy or too hard every time. Oh, Anthony, oh, this movie sucks the, today. It was at the very end where you heard that 42. It was yeah. crazy. All right, well, John, we appreciate you playing and listening, and thank you very much. You've got the tickets for uh, September 21st at the Wells Fargo Earlier Center. this week, someone didn't win. So oh, no. I tried, I, honestly, I try to make it a little easier. You usually, can never cause... find the happy medium sweet spot, can you, sir? Well, some Anthony movies just went DEI. He went yeah. DEI on the movie clip. He made it too easy. He did it. I mean, they say 42 in the clip. I wonder what movie it's from. I wonder what movie. <laughs> is it a movie? I was sitting there. I've actually never seen the movie. And I said, I bet you the movie's name is 42. <laughs> yeah. and, and 42 in this, in this instance has nothing to do with Mariana Rivera. It has to do with Jackie Robinson. Jackie so. Robinson. I knew Jackie very well. He's a tremendous guy. <laughs> All right, I told let, him he should play baseball. I said, you should do it. You should absolutely do it. He did it, and he was tremendous. Was he considering a different sport, Mr. President? I didn't know that. He was, no, he was not considering a different sport because anything I say now would get me in a lot of trouble if I say he was considering. He wanted to play baseball his entire life. I said, play it. You're going to play it so well. Brooklyn Dodgers, he did well. And I did very well in Brooklyn, too. I have to say that. I do very well in that community. I invented Brooklyn also. I did that. <laughs> All right, let's get to a Friday edition. Anthony Dorenzo, what's on the cut sheet part do? What's on the cut sheet? I do. What's on the cut sheet part do on this Friday is sponsored by Best Work Industries for the Blind. Their e-commerce store is helping businesses succeed in all work environments. Bestworksupplycenter.com offers traditional office products, cleaning supplies, furniture, technology, and more. Free shipping and next day delivery. Shop now and save at bestworksupply.com. Uh, so, being on a conservative talk station, I think most of us hate taxes. Um, but this take in particular, we didn't get to it yet, so we're, we're going to go here. This will be K1 film. Mm -hmm. uh, Jasmine Crockett talked about her opinion on taxes and uh, only a specific portion of Americans and, and their payment to taxes. This is K1. Phil, go ahead. Just this past week, I saw, I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity. And I was like, 
I don't know that that's not necessarily a bad idea. But I'd have to think through it a lot. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time because then again, that puts money back in your pocket. But at the same time, it may not be as objectionable to some people about actually giving out dollars. But obviously then you start dealing with the different tax brackets and things like that. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we argue the reparations make sense because so many black folk, not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things, right? But the fact is like we end up being so far behind, right? And so it's like, how do you bring fourth people exactly and so it's like if you if you do the no tax thing for people that are already say struggling and aren't really paying taxes in the first place it doesn't really exactly they may they may want those those checks like they got exactly (laughs) so that's jasmine crockett democrat from texas look if you feel you are entitled reparations if you endured something in the 40s or the 50s or the 60s I got you. But uh, I'm 40 years old and I went to public school and I went to school with people of all different ethnicities, Asian, Hispanic, Latino, black, white, gay, straight. There is, in my personal opinion, there is nobody in my generation today that was oppressed. Is that was there racism in the 80s and the 90s? Sure. Is there still racism today? Yeah. But there's not nearly the demand. There's not nearly the supply for racism to match the demand that the left tells you there is. I I still think it's out there, but not like it used to be. So this idea, and by the way, it's not, it's not possible. Like some of these people like, yeah, we're just going to give everybody gets a million dollars. I mean, give me a break. I would argue today that the marginalized communities are celebrated more than ever today. So this notion that you're in your 30s or 20s or 40s and you should get reparations, take a hike, stop. Oh, it's crazy. And and all we hear about is systemic racism, right? And I say, all right, well, you want to talk about systemic racism from Atlanta? You want to talk about systemic racism in Minneapolis or New York? Who's running your cities, right? I mean, can you tell me who's running the system? Mm -hmm. And then we can point to, you know, okay, well, if you think the system's racist and that Democrat, that Mayor uh, Brandon Johnson in Chicago, he must really be a racist then if he's running the systemically racist, you know, uh, political infrastructure and and and, uh, and and legal infrastructure up there. At this, you know, I, I love Texas, right? I got the hat. It says to, we got to get it under control there. I mean, between between this woman and Sheila Jackson Lee saying we should live on the sun, it, uh, what is going on in Texas? What's in the water? <laughs> what are those bad hombres? But what if they bring across? I hear they're bringing measles. I hear they're bringing tuberculosis. Are they bringing some sort of mental problem too? <laughs> what is going on? I mean, that we are that we're coming up with these absurd things in Texas. Yep. I, you want reparations? No, absolutely not. You were never a slave. Right. I was never a slave owner. Right. My family never owned slaves. You, I don't know what her family history was ridiculous stop it it's annoying it's ridiculous and it's juvenile it's just another way to pander to get votes it's the same thing the biden administration is doing biden coming out again today more people are going to have student loans forgiven so taxpayers have got to pay off other people's student loan debt as they use that as a way to garner more votes i don't know if people are going to take the bait like they have in the past uh we'll see how that plays out i'm glad you brought up brandon johnson too how about the story did you see the story about Lori lightfoot the former mayor of Chicago. She has yep. now been hired at four hundred dollars an hour to investigate the worst mayor in the United States. I mean, imagine being Lori Lightfoot, arguably the worst big blue city mayor in the United States, and getting four hundred dollars an hour. I made this yeah. analogy yesterday, Sean. It would be like me doing a radio show that got no ratings and got canceled after six months, and then somebody hires me as a consultant in the radio industry to tell shows and markets around the country. Here's how you succeed despite the fact that i personally failed it makes no I gotta sense tell you, Lori lightfoot so first of all she's investigating the worst mayor in the united states so she's investigating herself <laughs> right she's gonna read because this woman this woman made history in chicago for all the wrong reasons Lori lightfoot was the ultimate dei hire right think this let's let's just let's just think about it right let's look at it she's of color she's gay she's ugly She's short. She's, she's a little not, fat. Okay, she's got all the all the boxes. She should have been the best mayor ever by the left standards, right? Because she checks off all the boxes. She's diverse. She's equitable. She's inclusive. All of it. And she sucked. 
She was terrible. The city was disgusting. The only reason why it never snowed in Chicago, my friend says this all the time, is because uh, the bullets flying around knock all the snowflakes out of the air. That's it. That's the only reason why you don't have snow in Chicago. The Windy City, yeah, oh, yeah things blew in Chicago. I can tell you that much. It was real bad. It, it, it sucked. I mean, and now this woman, you want to say that she was somebody who that she's someone who should investigate the worst mayor in, in Chicago. She's got to answer or in, in, in the United States, she's got to answer for for all of the, the, the failing, the failures that she was responsible for before we take her advice on anything else. It's like taking a guy who's got a batting average under 100, like you said, and asking him, hey, uh, how do I hit? Yeah. yeah, how do I play baseball? The guy sucks. Right. Don't ask me. Don't ask me how to hit home. I'm not a good hitter. Right. I was a good center fielder. I could catch any ball hitting my zip code. And even in other zip codes, I'll get there. I'll get to the gap. I'll make the play. Don't ask me how to hit. Cause I, I, if you think I'm an expert at it, no, you're asking the wrong guy. She'll never say that. Hey, you're asking the wrong person. It's, it, it's a disgrace. And the biggest joke of all with Chicago and also some of these other cities is especially in Chicago is they were tired of Lightfoot in her far left progressive policies. So they elect Brandon Johnson. And I think he's actually further left. He's worse than Lightfoot he's worse. is. And his, his migrant tax, right? They were going to do the migrant. They got voted down. So I'm telling you, there's a shift going on. I don't know if it's going to be as pronounced as maybe that Wall Street Journal sample. Yep. But there's a big shift going on. People are in for a, a rude awakening. The Democrats are in for rude awakening. It's only a matter of time. All right. Coming up next, we will put a bow on the show. We'll get to today in music history and who won Twitter today. Kathy Barnett in for Dawn at the top of the hour. Back after this on Kale & Company. At California Psychics, we know that nagging doubts like, how much will a psychic cost? And how will I find the right one? Can stop you from getting the guidance you need. That's why we offer the best psychics at the best value. California Psychics have a wide range of psychics available 24-7, so you can find the one that meets your needs and your budget. If you can't decide, our dedicated customer service team are always available to guide you. Right now, new customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. And what do you know? Most of our customers get everything they need from a reading within that time. Our psychics may surprise you with their ability to offer unique insight on your life situation. In fact, we guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. So there's never been a better time to take the next step. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. I'm Bill, and I'm living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that causes scarring of the lungs and makes it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. So if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife, Bev, and I have walked every step of this journey together. I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. Hey, Philly. Jason Kelsey here. Even though I won't be playing on Sundays anymore, you can still find me at Lincoln Financial Field on Saturday, May 18th for the Eagles Autism Challenge, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. This event raises millions of dollars to support autism research and care and gives you the chance to walk, run, or ride your bike beside your favorite Eagles players. Together, we can transform the lives of individuals affected by autism. Register today at eaglesautismchallenge.org, and I'll see you there. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things, for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. During the spring and summer, make use of the warmer outdoor weather. Hang your clothes outside to dry instead of using the dryer. Not only will you save electricity and money, but your clothes will get that fresh outdoor scent. When we each share our one thing, it becomes a hundred things, a thousand things, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? Hi, Stephanie from Emmons. Are you not loving your bathroom? Is the King's Throne looking a little outdated and run down? Let Emmons Design Specials design a bathroom that you will love and one that Emmons will redo in as little as one day. An affordable, maintenance-free bathroom with little to no inconvenience to you and your family. With finance options available, there's really only one problem. Your bathroom will be so nice, your king may never want to come out. Call Emmons today at 856-885-6677 or visit us on our website at callemmons.com. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now.
855-839-1210 is how you jump in, Kale and Company, as we continue live here on a Friday morning. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us on YouTube. Another week in the books. Great stuff, Sean. Always enjoy working with you, pal. Always fun to be here, as you know. Uh, I always appreciate the opportunity. And it's, uh, it's, always, it's always a blast. These four hours, I feel like we just started. I don't know how four hours have gone by, but it, it did. And it's been, it's been a blast. Kathy Barnett coming up top of the hour. She's in for dawn. But let's get to a Friday installment of Today in Music History. What happened on this day in music history? Music history. history. On Kale and Company. Today, Friday, April 12th. We celebrate the birthdays of John Kay, frontman for Steppenwolf, David Cassidy, and Art Alexa Kiss from Everclear. And by the way, they were great last year at the Keswick. And yes, I like to go to a lot of rock shows. Albums include Twice Shy by Great White from 89, Bloodshot by Jay Giles in 73, Even Worse by Weird Al in 88 that includes Fat and Lasagna, as well as Wasting Light by the Foo Fighters from 2011, and Grace Under Pressure by Rush in 84. Also, in 1990, four asteroids were actually named after the Beatles, in 69, The Fifth Dimension topped the Hot 100 chart. In 54, Bill Haley and the Comets recorded Rock Around the Clock. And lastly, on this day in 2000, Metallica sued Napster, Yale, USC, and Indiana University for copyright infringement. And I remember this almost as much as I remember the O.J. Simpson trial since I was in my mid-20s then. For Kale & Company... I'm Phil Lopquist. Oh, it's great work out of you, Phil. I remember that, too. Sean, I mean, do you remember the Napster days and the downloading music? Oh, yeah. I remember days? that, too. I had li- oh. li- LimeWire. Was that? Gave oh, my Lime Wire, Viruses. Yeah. LimeWire, FrostWire, WinMX. Yep, yep, you name yep. it. The Torrent. All of it. It was... It was a now. I never the golden days of the internet. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. I never right the golden the age of the century. The golden age of internet piracy, right? People yeah, like Captain yeah. Jack Sparrow out there just stealing everything. <laughs> I never engage in that behavior, by the way. I'm an upstanding citizen, so I just want to say that clearly. None I'm, of us I would ever do that. that, yeah. Never. We would never do that, nor would we advocate for doing that, especially like with products that are overpriced like Microsoft Office. We'd never do that. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget the days back when you had dial-up internet, and yeah, we didn't we didn't switch over to DSL yet because we, uh, I don't know if we couldn't afford mm. it or my mom just didn't want to get it. And my sister would be on the phone, and I'm like, would you? get off the phone i want to download music because you couldn't go on the internet yep. if somebody was yep. using the landline yep. right yeah it was crazy I, I and then that, that noise the it would make yeah yeah right? remember that i miss like yeah. hearing other people's conversations and be like what are you talking about honey uh-huh. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. all right let's wrap it up today with uh who won twitter today oh no he doesn't have the sounder ready He's looking for who won Twitter. Who won Twitter today? Irk wins Twitter. He says Trump called and said, "This has been a phenomenal show. The great Sean Farash, great guy. Sounds like a real handsome fella. Even more oh, he's handsome. He's a great guy. Yeah, there you I've go. Heard you're, him. you're better at it than he's, I am. He's, he's a Bradley, tremendous he's person. Bradley Cooper. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Well, I'm a da- no, no. He's Dallas Store. I know this guy. He's Dallas Store. Bradley Cooper. He looks like Bradley Cooper. You found him at a Dollar General uh, discount. Bradley Cooper. Believe it or not, or clearance maybe. We want to say clearance. You got a great deal on that, Bradley Cooper. He does a tremendous job. I think the show was incredible. Ratings are in, and they're through the roof like a rocket ship. Well, <laughs> exactly. Me. All right. Good stuff as always, buddy. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much, Sean. Thanks, man. Have a great time. Thanks you for too. having me, and it uh, was, a, was a blast as always. All right. Everybody Thank have you. a great weekend. Good job out of Anthony and Phil. Stalker will be back on Monday. Dawn will be back on Thursday. Stay tuned. Kathy Barnett is coming up next at the top of the hour. And as Joe Biden would say as he wraps up another day of work. If I were smart. I'd say thank you and leave. Are you ready to take that big step towards owning your dream home? At American Heritage Credit Union, we've got your back every step of the way. Our team specializes in helping buyers navigate the exciting journey of home ownership. From finding the perfect place to securing the best mortgage rates, we've got you covered. Visit AmericanHeritageCU.org slash home connection today and turn that dream into reality. Insured by NCUA, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS 433838. Although you try